All right, guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to uh, tonight's tournament. It's going to be an FFA tournament, and we are doing uh, Mega Random Nomad. Grand Finals is going to be a different map. It's going to be a custom crafted map by uh, Nanny Yori, if I'm not mistaken. So shout out there. And uh, tonight, we're going to be having some fun. Hope you're all doing well. We're going to be starting in about two minutes. Uh, random sieves, which is good for me, because I'm not really that good at any one sieve. So if everybody else is thrown off their main sieves, <laughs> it certainly helps me. So, so yeah, man, should be good. All right, let's uh, get this beast all fired up. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share the stream. I just I love these kind of these kind of events, like the random shenanigans where like you know people are forced onto you know civs they don't know how to play, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be great. A basset would be fun. Yeah, the camels would feast a hundred percent. They would a hundred percent feast. I would uh, I would be happy. Honestly, there's um like what civ. Would I not want to play is the question. I'm like trying to think if there's anyone that I really just wouldn't want to play. I don't think so, to be fair. Like I, I feel like I have a very basic topical understanding of most of the civs. I'm not like super good at any one of them anymore, but <laughs> I kind of understand the basics of each one. Although I know Abbasid got some pretty substantial changes. That would probably be one I'm a little bit kind of uh, not super solid on. All right, so just sharing links, letting people know we're streaming. And I think we're good. All right, so we're just waiting for one player to come back, and then we're going to be starting the match here in just a second. So no teams are set. And uh, we have two rounds, so it's going to be the first FFA here. And then we have a grand finals with the winner of each pod. So you're good to start whenever. Thank you. Shout out to Leto the Duke, Ben and Chat for organizing tonight's tournament. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. And uh, your avid got Mongol, so did he? That's pretty OP. Yeah, yeah, he's already a very strong player and on the, on the Mongols, huh? Dude, I'm very excited for Chaos Torves. I know we were talking about that last night on the Total War stream, but uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very exciting stuff. I would actually love to get Delhi. I think Delhi is is not the not that like they can boom pretty good with their keep system. You get like the villages, and then just have your keeps going, and like you can just kind of play Wonder or Sacred. There, there's a couple ways they can win. They don't have any like great source of infinite gold. Obviously, Delhi would would like to get some trade going, get Sacreds, get relics. That's kind of their uh, their road to victory. Yeah, man. It's going to be good. So he's back. All right, show time. Let's get this party started and uh, let's see what everybody gets. Good luck. Have fun. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Give me something fun. Hey, I got the Roos. Okay, I've been playing the Roos a bit, so I, I feel comfortable. I don't think they're very strong in FFA unless you have a lot of trees, but um, yeah, who cares? I, I love the bounty system. The bounty system is so much fun. So we got myself on Roos, Ventus on French, Tron on Abbasid, Siberius on English, and... Uh, Nasty down here is going to be on Roos as well. All right. This should be interesting. So how do I want... Do I want to go for the dreaded Kremlin again? No, I'm not doing that. That literally lost me my last FFA I played in, the Kremlin just being useless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Kremlin's good if you think you're going to get all in by a couple of players. Um, we're on Nomad. Okay. So yeah, Nomad mode. So we got to wander our villagers. And here are all the civs. So no Chinese. Um, English is definitely the strongest of the remaining civs that we have here. 100%, but... Let the Bounty Wars commence. Yeah, you know, I don't get all the bounty to myself. That's true. I'm going to have to fight against this other Roost player, so. <laughs> Go Camels. Yeah, the Camels are here. Pretty good against my Roost Cav. You know, usually I like to do, like, a Streltsy Knight build when you get, like, late game. But, uh, yeah, against a Bastard, you're going to have to mix it up a little bit. All right. Let's go down here. Let's go down here. Let's go try and get ourselves a nice little corner spot. See what we can find. Don't want to be setting up in the middle, obviously. Okay, so let's keep exploring and see what we have. And what we come across. So berry bushes, stone. Looking around. Man, the vision is so bad on these guys. Okay, so we got someone here. Looks like it's going to be teal. And I would like to find some natural resources if possible. We see like sheep and whatnot. But we're overall not super comfortable here. I think that's the other roost player too. Should we just go into the, the dark corner of the map? Like the actual legitimate corner? Just have like no food, no resources. Yeah, you know what? Screw it, man. Let's have some fun. Let's uh, let's go in the corner. I want to find some gold though, like or something. This is just bare bones down here, man. Okay, at least we got some sheep. All right, I don't think I can mess around too much longer. We're gonna have to just go for this, and then you're gonna have to come over here and set up a uh, hunting cabin right here, which will be good because there's stealth forest back there, so that should be fine. I'm gonna have to just gather up sheep. Warpug, thank you. I, I don't know. Like, I have the corner position, but I don't have any good... Like, this guy has got gold right next to his base and berry bushes. So there's there's definitely a lot going. I need to get a hunting cabin up ASAP. Have fun. 
Yeah, ASAP. Good luck, have fun, you too. Good luck, have fun. Everybody's saying good luck, have fun, good you luck. too. Yes. Have fun. So this should give us a fair amount of gold. That looks like a pretty sweet hunting cabin. I almost want to build like two of them. Like two hunting cabins right away. Can we do another one up here? Yeah, we need to go find some deer like right out of the gates though. We should be able to get a house set up. This will give us 10 supply obviously, but we're not going to be able to produce that scout until we get this house. So we'll do that right away. Hey, you know what? We got the corner position. <laughs> we, we have that secured. 27 gold a minute. It's respectable. It's not amazing, but you know, it'll do pig. It'll do. That'll do donkey. <laughs> That'll do. All right, let's get you, get you out, man. Yeah, yeah. Roost is definitely good in a, in a famine environment. Yeah, it's a, it's a very apt way of putting it. All right, let's go finish this. So now we can get um, a couple scouts out. Food's going to be very, very scary here. So I need to go gather like sheep real quick. Like real, real quick. That's going to finish. They're going to get on wood. I would build a second one. All right, looks like we got a sheep, did we? Oh man, this this could be really bad. Okay, we found a sheep. So you go down there. <laughs> Wait, is that another GC right there? Oh god. No, somebody's taking all the sheep. Oh my god, are you serious? Oh guys, we might be in trouble. We might be in some serious trouble. We seriously have like everybody in this one corner here. I think I'm legit legitimately going to have to just go farms and hope nobody discovers me. Oh my god, are you guys seeing this start right now? Like, I'm in the corner? With <laughs> like, dude, someone else has got, like, uh, got the rest of the map. Okay, we're in big danger. We're going to have to go early Farmville with Roost, which is terrible. Which is absolutely terrible. Okay, so we have the one sheep. <laughs> yeah, GG, well played. Yeah, you're just like, <laughs> good game. Yeah, no, we're in trouble. I should have just like, you know, everybody always goes for the corners, but you assume that there's five people and they're going to go to the other corners and not just this one, but. All right, guys. I literally can't even afford to produce villagers. So let's do this. Let's set up some farms here. And uh, yeah, just, just hope for the best. It's going to be a really janky start. Like really, really janky. But the fact that we have to build farms in the Dark Age is really bad. But we are finding some sheep. There's like no bounty on this map either. I'm not seeing too much. Okay, we found some here, which is nice. Yeah, we're finding some sheep. Could be worse, I suppose. Um, all right, let's go here, 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 and here. They fixed it so you don't have to like manually do that anymore. Turn in. Dude, this is so bad. <laughs> this is so bad. I'm hoping that those two will fight each other and just nobody will notice me in my little rat corner. <laughs> oh my god. All right, let's get you guys back on lumber. All right, hey, at least we're finding bounty. We found some bounty, which is good. Got a couple farms rocking. All right, so we got a deer camp here. Now that we have the farms active, that should handle us for a while. You go on wood. Let's keep looking for bounty, which is going to be very important here. And uh, I could make a second scout. I don't think that's going to be that possible or good. Yeah, these these two need to mortal combat. That's what needs to happen for this to go well for me here. We'll bring back the sheep later, but no, we're, we're straight up playing like early Feudal Age farm build. Okay, so we found some more sheep. Keep exploring the map, keep looking for bounty. Probably, yeah, I don't know about the, the spawn patterns here. Okay, so we found, um, we found Ventus up top. <laughs> Setting up early farms is so bronze. Oh my God, with the, with the roos. All right, let's try and take these goodies back to the base. Yeah, all, all, all pods have started, yes. Okay, we found another bounty. We need the bounty over the course of a long game. I've been discovered, unfortunately, by one player. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably not in a strong shape this game. <laughs> you never know, though. We could, we could pull off miracle wins. I, I, you know, strangely, strange as it sounds, I do think a Kremlin in the corner might not be the worst. Just because um, it'll keep me from dying to like early aggression. Granted, like towers can also do something similar. Okay, so now we can get a wheelbarrow. Let's get that going. Pull these guys down and across. We got the farms going on full blast. That one sheep, which was our, our bastion of food. Okay, we found a couple more. So, you know, good scouting exploration paying off here. Looks like those guys can go jump on wood here. Found another deer camp. One, two, three, 
Am I gonna have to do some like haggard pro scout shit and like bring food back to the corner? I, I kind of feel like that that might need to happen, but the fact that we are getting early farm set up, obviously our feudal will be delayed, but yeah. Okay, looking great. Let's set up some more farms. We can do them um, down here. My spawn is so bad. Oh man, <laughs> it looks dire. Yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, that's gonna be fun. All right, so we got we got him looking for a bounty here. Look, we already have we already have six farms as the Roos in the in the old ages of darkness here. So we need to bring these back. Um, we have gotten two ten bounty and we have wheelbarrow. Oh my god, is this wait? Is this oh that's where he set up originally? Okay, I was like, am I gonna straight up be blocked from getting back to my base here? Could happen. Okay, so he got that one. Well played. Okay, I uh, I actually am leaning towards Kremlin right now. I'm uh, I'm thinking, okay, that we found his his landmark here. Him and the Roos are, are next door neighbors, though. So wheelbarrow's finished, and yeah, I mean, you know, we're about to get a bunch of food back at the old base here. So we can set this, and then we're just gonna drop all these sheep off, and uh, yeah, feudal age is being reached. Us little bandits in the corner here. So there's gonna be somebody with like full battlefield freedom, like elsewhere. Whereas, like, we're probably going to be Thunderdomed in the bottom, which usually is a pretty big disadvantage. All right, so let's grab you guys, you guys, and you guys. Turn in and get that sheep. We just try and survive here. On the bright side, I could just set up a little palisade here to keep myself from being raided. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to do ample scouting. Let's keep looking around, seeing what we can find. Um, set up another scout here. I'm honestly leaning towards pro scouts. I'm not even joking. I'm I'm like kind of feeling like that could. Although I already have a lot of farms set up, so maybe we're okay. I don't know why I stopped producing bills there for a second. That was weird. Okay, so yeah, two TC. Probably we have to play greed to have any chance. So, purple has topside all to themselves, while us peasants blobbed a bot. I have to I have to start sowing the seeds of discord and also you know raise a bit of a, a warning a warning beacon to my allies here my makeshift allies okay so we have to let them know um, we'll get we'll probably save this space for like some sort of a landmark or something all right let's get you guys do this and do the golden gate I'm so weak it's not an issue. Uh, it could be. Could be a little issue. We'll find out here. It looks like this uh, cabin never got finished. My bad. Uh, I don't think we need pro scouts with this many farms going. I think we're okay. So aging up very slowly, but you know, we have a, we have a, a good anchored uh, food economy, so that's something to consider. Villagers going to the top. So we see Ventus building a landmark in the corner. Try and take a mental note of that. I haven't, haven't had coffee, but hopefully I can still remember that. And let's go ahead and set up a tower here to get the extra wood and also make it a little bit harder to rush us and this is why we keep exploring find the old bounty all right so let's see what we can find in the middle yeah we're just trying to trying to survive in the trees 100 percent true i don't guys i don't even have a gold node near me i straight up just do not have a gold node which is wild so what i'm gonna do is probably take some villagers to the to the north and try and like set up a new colony we gotta do i mean i i do have really good bounty gold which is definitely going to be uh, a variable going forward. Let's go ahead and set up a hunting cabin here. And we can set up a hunting cabin. Oh, the roost have kind of got that one unlocked. We can do one right there. All right. So still looking around. We have our little pitiful existence in the corner. That will be finishing. And let's go gather some stone. These guys, I, I need to go set up a, like another base somewhere. Because this is not like... I could maybe like win some feudal 1v1s with these guys, but I feel like that's not the path to success. It's just going to put me behind. Purple is trading already. Wow, really? Okay, that's something to, something to take note of here. Look at Siberius calling him out, dude. Calling him out on the sweet trade, huh? All right, so those guys are going to get some stone. We got hunting cabins coming up. Let's keep looking for sheep where we can. You've done your job here, so let's go scout the rest of the map, get some vision where we can. And just in case we get, like, feudal pressured, I think having some, some stables would be good. So we can make some knights or something, you know. We don't want to be helpless. 
All right, so you go down here, you go up here. We do have the uh, the old trade house here. The wood should be pretty good. Uh, we can get the products. I think it's fine. And then these guys are going to go on like a big exodus across the map. I have to kind of play two bases. Oh, he actually is trading. Oh, shit. Okay. Is he... Well, I mean, it's only 46 gold, so it's not like a crazy good trade route, but yeah, that's... That's pretty mean. Oh, shit. He is. Yeah, so he actually... <laughs> he actually legitimately was trading there. All right. So we got that. Let's continue here. Set that up. Keep going down. And uh, how are we looking on stone? Pretty good. I would wager we could just buy some soon. And then we got English here too. Okay. So this is getting real spicy here. So you guys turn in. Like so. Head up to the top side. Go have some fun there. Please don't kill me. Here's our English player. I have no idea what's going on here. Look, someone's like, someone's jumped into my base here. It is, it is the dreaded straight nasty. All right. So let's make some roost knights just to defend our stuff. I don't know why he's harassing me here. This is very weird. I think he just has it on an attack move and he hasn't noticed. Yeah. That's, that's got to be my guess here. So he's going to be losing a scout. So these villagers hustling to the north. And uh, we took the scout down, which is good. We have a lot of wood. Could just start to set up more farms, to be honest. So we can do um, this, and then... Alright, great. Yeah, let's just set up farms here. We're about to get it. We get wood so quickly that we can, we can afford to be a little bit greedy with it. We can even buy some wood. But firstly, we buy some stone. Head up here. So the top side. We have to be scrappy. We have to be scrappy gremlins here. And then we take these knights and go exploring and um, seeing what we can find in the great beyond. I need to find some boar to try and get my bounty up. Yeah, so we'll go there and do that. All right. So you're just going to set up on gold, guys, because we have literally no one mining gold. So we, we're going to go for the 2TC here. And uh, we're, we're pulling a, a playbook out of Smeagol's book here. Okay, head up. Let's go get the boar. The top side, how are we looking? All right, great. All right, so TC, that should give us what we need. Um, we can also go ahead and set up a little a little wall system here, which will buy us some time if we do get all in. So we just need to survive. So the Roost Knight's going to go for the boar. Okay, it looks like there might have been a wall there from one of my opponents, I think. It's a little bit hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah, see, they, they walled. I'm trapped in the corner like a rat. <laughs> okay, so we need to get more military production for sure. Okay, so let's go get the other boar now. Important to max out our bounty if we can. We're going to be setting this up, and uh, we can get the food upgrade since we're, we have a lot of farm action going. You come over here and come back to the base. Walls are coming up, and you guys get here. Perfect. So now we have a TC. Oh my God! Are you seeing this? There's a, there's a there's a town center up on the top. Sneaky, sneaky. I'm not the only one, huh? All right. So unfortunately, my my elaborate ruse may have been discovered. Well, we might have to build a keep up here too, because that's uh it's pretty vulnerable. Let's uh let's go raid that with our knights. Yeah, I got most of the boar. I, I would just need one more boar to max out my bounty. I don't know where it would be. Okay, let's do this, and then you guys can come here and uh, here. Set up our little like corner empire here. And uh, basically, we're just preparing to go to the next stage now. Let's pull you guys off wood, switch you back to sheep. Go to a little bit here, and just in case we get raided, let's set up another uh, tower here. And let's go see what's truly going on up here on the top. All right, guys. It's all coming together. Do a little bit of raiding action. You know, purple is going to be very strong, so we need to uh, we need to try and claim uh, claim this top corner if we can, because that's where we're going to go. <laughs> He's probably wondering why wh where this attack's coming from, because I'm like so far away from him. Okay, so boars, boars, and uh, what do we have down here? Okay, these Roost knights can come back to the base here. I think we should be chilling. Oh, hello, Jesus. Okay, that's some, those are some angry French knights. So we're probably going to get raided here pretty hard, so we need to get like a couple um, towers with emplacements and whatnot. Castle Age being reached. We're not that far off ourselves. Buy a little bit of this. And then uh, we need to switch up our landmarks in case we get swarmed here. 
Let's do this. Let's do the uh, Abbey of the Trinity. And get ready to go. Okay, so we got this. Let's get some more stables. And we have archery ranges. And let's get one more archery range. And then also the the business here. All right, great. So that should basically be our what we need for Castle Age here. You guys do this. Set up here. We need to get a little bit of stone. And I'm going to have to fight my way out of this corner eventually. Yeah, he's running with these guys, but we're just we're just trying to get back to the base. We're not trying to, you know, create war with our uh, our neighbors for now. But obviously he's got the 2TC action going, and uh, we our war machine should be able to get going. We have the macro, we have we have a decent food economy. I think there's things that are going pretty well. All right, so yeah, we're grabbing some stone just so we can set up some towers here. Oh my God. Yeah, I, there's a boar over there. It's really far away. All right. Let's get you back here. Let's get you out. Start grabbing relics. And uh, we need to get more gold because we are just so hurting on gold. Oh, wow. Look at that. He set up he set up some barracks up here. That's pretty funny. All right. So we're going to get some spring golden placements. Like, I need to go protect my top corner investment, but it's so far away. Okay. So let's get that. A couple more of you guys. Let's just set up some more farms here. Uh-huh. So we have good food. Our food eco, like I said, it was always always destined to be very strong, but we need this top corner for the gold. All right, so we almost have enough stone here for another one. We could buy some. Do that. I'll grab this relic and come back. Like, the fact that I'm being blocked in by teal stuff here is a little bit of a Trixie Hobbitses. A little bit Trixie. Okay, so let's get you and you and bring it back. All right, gold is being taken. Let's jump you guys out. Go get on this, although we need to probably stay on gold. And then come and grab this. All right, so our little corner empire holds firm. Uh, we got a lot of farms going. Let's do that so we can have trade-offs here. So let's have you go grab this, my friend, and you can go grab this one. If it's still there, I highly doubt it, but you never know. Uh-huh, and uh, do we want to get any more, like, basic units here? I'm going to have to fight my way out. It's going to happen. Um, I actually don't even hate the idea of a defensive keep here. Our gold economy isn't that good yet, but hopefully it will be soon. Yeah, England's just cackling for 100%. They, they are going to be tyrannical. Okay, let's grab you guys. Do we even need more food eco? Not really. I mean, it's, it's pretty good right now. Let's get the food upgrade. Doesn't hurt. Castle age being reached. We got the Spring Alden placements. We got you, and uh, then we can also mix in some uh, barracks. All right. So we've grabbed relics. Let's take it back to the old uh, old church here. See if we can take some of those guys in the middle of the map. I'm gonna have to fight my way out though. I think like the other Roost player might have to get it, or uh, like attempt. Obviously, he could he could just smash me. I don't know how strong he is. Yeah, he's. It looks like uh, he's he's actually the only one who's not aged up yet. So yeah, it would be a good a good person to go after. A keep being built here. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, let's get get you guys set up here. Do this and get a siege workshop. Because I need to be able to go and deal with that. Yeah, it's gonna shoot the TC, but it shouldn't matter too much. Should be able to just get some some action for that. All right, so let's move up here. See if you can clear it out. Uh huh. And you, buddy, you keep doing this. I'm going to have to fight my way out here. Yeah, he can still reach some of them. Okay, so let's get right into this guy's base. Uh, let's see what his army looks like. Mostly horsemen and archers, which means we probably can beat them. Because the, um, yeah, cause the knights are just too heavily armored. Uh-oh, he caught me. Is Willa Lowe going to get him? I don't think so. That would be really funny. Not today, says the god of death. Not today. All right, so it looks like he's mustering an army. Make some men-at-arms. And, uh, yeah, we definitely just fight our way out here. Okay, let's see how this fighting goes. Looks like it's going pretty well. I think we got this one. Yeah, the, the Roost Knights are just absolute chads. They're really, really tough to bring down. Especially for like an archer based army comp, but he's doing a good job targeting my crossbows with his archers, so we just kind of pull back. 
let them overextend, and then the knights just continue to butcher. Uh, all right, looking good. So that army's been cleared out, so now we just got to try and finish them off and uh, clear some space out. And we have the Haggard Ram. So let's do that. Get you going. So he just now got Castle Age, but not before we um, really, really hammered his army down. I don't know what the Ambassador up to. I have no idea. Okay, let's get you back on the old wood here. We're going to need some like proper siege equipment. Alright, so let's go here and see if we can just kind of keep hammering the eco down. We have the ram working on the keep, which is pretty funny. Alright, so Boyar's Fortitude. You guys need to set up some more houses. It doesn't look like it actually. I think we're okay. Set up another TC here. I don't hate that idea. So let's just try and supply block him. Wear him down. And uh, we got two relics so far. Drop this. Grab you. Come back here and here. And now we just go through all the houses to try and supply block him if we can. Alright, so siege workshop. Let's get siege engineering also. You guys can jump on the wood. Can refresh that. It's one night trolling. Doing a good job. Okay, how are we looking up top here? Oh man, he's actually pushing me with men at arms. Are you serious? All right, so hopefully we can push those guys back, and then we can uh, we can make our way to the top. That that's the the juicy game plan here. Let's go repair this if we can. Looks like he's moving down with some troops. Okay, let's attack here. Fighting on a couple fronts, always a good time. Get onto the golds. Got men at arms on the way over. Got repairs at the ready. We did get that third relic. Nope, nope, we want you to stay here. And now let's go jump onto this. Although that does kind of make us a bit of a public enemy number one. You guys aren't nice, is what he says. You guys trapped me in the corner like a rat. Of course we have to be mean. Okay, he's got his siege stuff still going, but. All right, so now we need to start making some rams out of the out of the workshop here. GG. All right, so thankfully he spared us the um, the time of having to deal with that. All right, because we we were we were gonna have to deal with that. TC still getting there. Let's get another siege workshop. He didn't have any relics. I had no clue you were bottom corner. I thought it was just pink. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, the rat. I'm. I, have, I am the rat in the corner now. Alright. This up, and this. Hopefully he didn't... Oh, look at this, we're getting keep rushed. Are you serious? Okay. It's fine. So let's move. Look at that, a keep drop? Are you serious? With rams and shit? What is this? Okay, I mean, this is why we have another base up in the top, isn't it? So let's gather up, let's get you here, let's do this, and uh, we need to go ahead and start getting some siege workshops. Just dive this, pull back. We got rams coming in. Yeah, I could be, like, guys, I could be in serious danger right now, 100%. We almost have that keep, so I might have to pull back here. The timing of this attack for my opponent is pretty fortuitous. Okay. So we got knights. I have like no gold income whatsoever at the moment. So this is really bad. We need to just trade in our market and get a bunch of gold. Pretty pitch fight here. We got ram still working it. Let's get another ram in there to go take this down. I just basically need to survive this now and we're okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The problem is Ventus is Imperial. So like he's way ahead of us because we've just been obviously in these haggard duels in the corners. Okay. So yeah, people are reaching Imp and we're just like the corner rats basically. Uh -huh, uh -huh. God, I hate to have to be doing that. It sucks. All right, let's grab you guys, turn in here, uh, and then have you creep out the side of the map. Okay, how are we looking? Let's make some more rams. And we just need to be ready to defend against his ram sign that's coming. Okay, we'll, we'll do this. Um, I think we can afford to lose a couple of those buildings. I think we can afford to lose a couple of them. Okay, so we got our little corner emplacement. So even if we die here, which is, it's, it's, it could happen. Um, we still have the means to recover, which is good. Although it would really suck to lose all these farms I've set up here. 
Okay, let's start hitting that keep. Just buying time. Trying to get my good units. Uh, he is still Castle Age. All right, so it looks like we've we've successfully done well in that duel there. We got Siege coming. We're kind of poor. That's okay. Let's get you guys on the tree line. More upgrades. Let me get in there. Yeah, let's get their old rams in the keep. Our food economy is getting set back up. We do have triple relics, which is nice. We have won the, the, the top corner duel of fates. Okay, boys, let's go. So we just have to find a way to win this duel, and then we're in this game. Otherwise, it's going to be a tricky pickle. All right. Nice, we found some gold here. All right, so that keeps going to go down. Oh, man, it's, it was right off the back of another fight, too, you know? So it's like he caught us at a really good time. Okay, we're going to sell some of this. We have you. Let's repair that. We don't want to lose that shit, that's for sure. He did manage to kill the TC there. Okay, and uh, do we want to make more farms? Probably not a bad idea. Let's pull back to the base. We don't need to be too greedy here. Let's just, like, stabilize ourselves first. All right. So we could do some farms up in the top corner here. The dreaded trebuchet duels are still happening. I'd like to just be able to go Imperial somehow here. Delete these. Bronax. More farms, please. Yes. Then you can get in here. The good the good thing is this isn't a Bassid neighbor, which means he only has like one land or a couple landmarks, right? Um, we should have been doing hunting cabins as well. Alright, so hunting cabin and hunting cabin. Yeah, that's a it's a good start. How are we looking? Did we clear him out? Looks like we did. He's got some man at arms coming over there. These, because I well, I shouldn't have done that. I, I wanted to just create more supply. But I was like, I'm not even that close to being supply capped. It's just a bad habit I do sometimes. Okay. So how are we looking here? We dealt with that. Yeah, and to no surprise, those other players who are being left to their own devices are very strong. Set up that. And it looks like he's trying to wall me in here. I'm okay with that. That's fine. We have a couple little bases. Let's get upgrades. I mean, we have a boom in food economy. We have a lot of farms, guys. We have a lot of goodness here. Well, Ventus is probably busy fighting somebody else. He most likely has some other enemies here. Okay, let's get these rams over here. Go set up some towers here and here. I'm kind of just going to save for Imperial now and go Spaskaya Tower. So I can build some damn stone walls with the Bruce, which is quite nice. Yeah, it's fine. We can just get rams. you let's get another batch of units crossbows and we can just start making a bunch of rams he's trying to like cage me in okay so this is where we lose the top probably yeah he's got he's got what a cannon and some troopers might be able to survive it i don't know it's gonna be a pretty tall order here we'll try and repair it i need to get the relics out and take them back to the south yeah i don't have any uh of the relic characters left I could go top, but I'm like super hard pitched in a fight here, right? I need to I need to win this fight. Okay, how are we looking? Are we repairing through it? We need to just grab the relics and just like store them here for now. Just like down the side of the map. Okay, let's do that. Take the relics. You can delete some of this because he can just get in anyways. Okay. So we're just buying times for the relics. He's going to destroy that landmark. So we're basically not all in on being a corner bandit right now, but we're definitely like in that territory. Okay, so let's start bombarding these towers. Looking to age up here. How are we doing on eco? Pretty decent. Okay, did we get another guy out? We didn't. Yeah, so those villagers are basically done for. Do this and see if he can grab that last relic before he gets there. Okay, so yeah, we're being watched here. All right, let's move up. We'll try and deal with them. You guys get on wood here, here, and here. And it looks like we got away with most of the relics. 
Getting that last one's gonna be really tough. Might be able to get like a Wolo low or something, we'll see. See if you can sneak away. I probably should have built that further south, but I can always grab and take them all the way back to the main base. Okay, so we took those vills down. You guys come here, dodge that if possible. Pretty close to aging up here, but we do lose the top. So let's just fight here. Thankfully, we have the hunting cabins of doom. Looks like we uh, steamrolled his army, which is nice. He's got more here, though. And uh, we're just going to Ramstein him, dude. Yeah, he's going to get the Fury of the Ramstein. All right, so we got all three relics out, which is nice. We're going to keep you guys on standby, just to like be the keepers of the Sacred Flame here. And uh, I know I had some Siege Workshops. I needed to get busy. All right, see if we can win this fight. Uh, it seems to be going okay for us. Could have sworn I had some more siege stuff. We have some more knights coming in, which is good. Knights are being pretty chad. Okay, I don't know where I sent those things, but we'll get them back in a second. So we just need to fight our way out of the corner. And you guys can just kind of cruise up to get some gold here. Looks like we did get in and did enough damage to potentially get through here, which is nice. And now our, our own Rams will come in and start Ram signing him. So we're, we're going to try and give him the old do host here. We got you guys on standby. Hey, thanks for being a member for 16 months, Gnome. Thank you so much. Hopefully you're enjoying all these journeys together. We'll sell a little bit of food and try and get to where we're going. So thankfully a Bassett are some of the easier uh, civs to kill in terms of uh, landmarks and whatnot. So we can kind of cackle on that. Okay, so we're working on it. We got gold being gathered here. You guys are just hanging out. I don't want to grab sacreds because grabbing the sacreds will kind of make me public enemy number one. Oh, he actually has some guys over here. He's trying to set up a keep. You see, the keep there won't save him, though, because I know where his other landmark is here. So we just ram him one at a time. He's ramming He's ramming through my base, too. I love, I love how rams are just so popular nowadays. I was always a ram enjoyer, but not using rams. Oh, man, are you serious? Okay, well. All right. We'll go back to our corner. Okay, and then they can go down here. We need to kill him quickly. Looks like he's got some sort of siege there. That's pretty troll. Oh, uh, what kind of tower is that? Springald? Yeah, Springald it looks like. Mm -hmm. Go here. Looks like they've uh, he's got his little like entourage of units which have found me. How are we doing on numbers here? Um, we can just have you guys gather out. Get more dudes here. Get some more mounted arms. And uh, we can build some more farms here. All right, great. How are we looking? I think the last of his rams are down. Yeah, they are great. All right, so let's head here. We just got to make sure he doesn't repair his TC or anything. We're still in castle, though, so this is really bad. We're, there's a lot of Imperial players who are probably mass trading. 100%. All right, let's go get this. Looks like he's going to muster out a defense here. Just need to get that landmark. Man, look at the line of sight here. It's so Why is it so, like, narrow? Okay, so he's going to try and stop this, which we need to make sure he can't. And then we need to try and secure trade somehow. So I think the three horsemen, have, have they made it back? I think they did. Okay. Did they make it back? Or did I lose my relic somewhere on the map? Uh, Here they are. Okay, they're in the base, which is good. So let's just drop it here. Build some houses here. Looks like I lost some houses up in the north. And we can build the Chad Sky Tower. I, I do need to get that rebuilt up on the top, though. God damn, this is like, this is so hectic. All these attacks from different angles and whatnot. All right, have you guys do this. Seems like the Rams are getting it done, slowly but surely. Is this all the military we have? Okay, he's he's going getting there slowly. Hopefully the Rams will get it and we can just finish him. Ah, oh, I still had a lot of guys in his base. Okay, we need to move those guys that way. 
Yeah, it depends on how the fighting up in the north is going. We can just grab this for the gold now. Screw it. So he's trying to ram it down. He might be able to. This is the enemy. I think we might get him here. Let's see if we can get the knights to go finish the job. Oh, damn. Okay, so he got aggroed onto the keep there. He could be repairing his town center, which would be the, the MLG play from him. Come on. Oh my god, okay. So we've become the Dark Lords of the corner. Alright, so yeah, we can just leave the space for now. I don't think there's any Mongol players. Did you see me? I don't know if he's, he understands the, the, depths of, uh, the depths of wildness that we had. Alright. So let's gather up the boys. Now we just need to go Imperial and stabilize ourselves. God, man. He needs to calm down with this little like expeditionary force he's got here. Yeah, purple purple is definitely like looking to be the strongest here. Okay, so let's get you guys. Set up a bunch of archer ranges. I don't know if I can actually stop this force. Let's have them like scurry to the top. I mean, these are elite units. If you just kill the cannon, that would be nice. Okay, so is there any more wood we want to go after? There is. The dreaded castle age units come come for you in the night. I think we can win it, but let's just pull him back a little bit more just to be safe. And um, we got the two TCs here, which can keep producing. We're Imperial, which is nice. Let's go down here, do that, and build a tower here. Oop, wrong spot. Okay, I think we I think we can still overrun this. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, we got our three relics. Let's go see if Homeboy had any relics. I seriously doubt it. Okay, so trying to scheme this out. The trading posts are not in good areas for us, and they're they're heavily secured by the stronger players. The players who've had their resources for most of the game, I should say. Uh, our eco's at 86. We do drive back the attackers here. Grab some of you guys. We need to go get some resources from the middle. And then there were three. And then there were three. Okay, let's move here. We have a ram. Um, these villagers are there, so let's go rebuild this. Try and secure that. A couple random ass dudes moving into my base, but thankfully we have Chad Skaya, so he's going to be able to deal with that. And we need to get... Yeah, so what kind of upgrades do we want to get? Hmm, tricky. I mean, the knight upgrades are definitely worth. Bruce um, knights are very strong. Okay, so we got a lot of upgrades coming out to at least give us some good quality units. Yes, and we'll need to get biology upgrades as well. And our eco is now a little bit better. So let's go scout this base, see what else they had. Um, maybe a market or something. I might have destroyed it during the heat of combat. But, you know, we'll get to the bottom of it. Alright, so what does this old Abbasid Empire have? What scraps can I find? Oh, trust me, I'm thinking it. I'm thinking it. Oh, he actually built the Kremlin, aren't you? Okay, there we go. That's something. Okay. So we more or less know what we're going to be doing. Let's get you guys and do a little bit of this. Oh, is there some sort of walls over there or something? It okay, sure looks like it. Okay. Get the Imperial Age upgrades. We can mass produce Streltsy. Um, we definitely need some more of you. So we can produce those units. I'm trying to just see what it looks like over here. Farms are going strong. Let's take the warrior priest with the army. Abbey of the Trinity is being rebuilt in all of its former glory. And it looks like Orange has a little wall here too. Interesting. Okay. So where's where are we looking here? Okay. So it's right there. He just loves it. He's having so much fun here. I should go raid his base. Although that would just be a spite raid. I need to be I need to be practical about it. Okay, so we're we're just gonna we're just gonna delete these to make him think that we're not even thinking it, and then we'll just do like right here. Yeah, that'll be the play. So then we're just chilling out. Um, you guys can grab that. We still have the Rams, I think. 
Yeah, we do have the two rams. Okay. So let's send the rams over to kind of clear all this out. Okay, so he's going to be able to kind of keep tabs on that for now. And uh, we're going to kind of set up a new route here. Just trying to secure our land, basically. We have a decent position for like a corner wonder if we want to at any point. Getting all the upgrades that are pertinent. He's coming for this again. Homeboy's not gonna be not gonna be uh, you know messing around. Okay, let's see if we can do that. Let's go set up this direction, and we can also make some trail. See, need to get a uni for the sweet upgrades. Let's do that. All right, so the Rams are basically clearing out space, um, so I can build walls here and just kind of secure it all. Orange is orange and uh, and French. So we have an English player and we have a have a French player. Like literally two of the worst civs to run into. Like it's not not good. We're gonna keep our army over here to try and secure this. Okay, looking fine. The Rams are doing the work. We've got 16 wood villagers down to five. So let's go see if we can find some more. Orange taking the goodies. So, no one has been fighting English in corner. The good thing I have my army here. I think I can fight them off. Yeah, maybe it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough one. The Roost Knights are pretty upgraded, but he's got elite Royal Knights with more upgrades. Mm. It's a dodgy one. It's a dodgy one. Okay, we got to get that war machine pumping. We might actually lose this. I think we don't have enough. But yeah, no, he know he definitely is making a mistake attacking me. I'm Roos. You know, Roos are not super strong. Okay, so how are we looking here? We've cleared out the space. Versus who? Who's he been fighting all game? I don't believe it. Who's he been fighting all game? Okay, so we need to get more... Uh, I killed other two. So no. He hasn't been fighting, that's for sure. I can I can attest. I took care of the other two guys. He lies. He lies. Hey, it's all good though, you know. You got to you got to use politics wherever you can. Let's do this and we need to pull some uh, villagers over here to go help us secure this. And now are we being attacked elsewhere? Looks like there's a little bit of a strange raid going on in the base. Okay, do we have any knights coming out that can deal with this? We do and do. It's weird. Okay, so he is coming to attack me. It looks like. So securing that's going to be hard. Thankfully, we have Spaskaya. Um, we can make some Streltsy, but like, yeah, we, we are just really, really tight at the moment. He's over here. Looks like there's some raiding going down in the middle. I'm not sure. He's got his little English trade post here. So we can just go torch those down real quick. Well, uh, yeah, that's being guarded. He's guarding that. How much are they bringing back? 108? That's actually pretty respectable. Okay, so now we have you guys torch this down and we try and secure the top while uh, also dealing with raids all over the place. Yeah, we're getting raided all over our frontier. We could build a keep, but I don't know. I don't know what that, that really serves. His army's over here. All right, so we need to grab you guys, you guys, and you guys. Come over here with the traders. Come down here. We need to go north and fight them. We march north to war! All right, villagers. You guys, just, you guys can just MLG grab some of the stone here. How about we just don't attack random farms and we go defend our villagers instead, huh? How's that sound? Yeah, so you know if you're if you're Ventus, his best his best chance 100 percent is probably killing English or trying to help me kill English, and then him just building a wonder and a one v one versus me. That's how he wins this game, in my humble opinion. Let's get our spearmen upgraded. Hopefully those two will just Godzilla King Kong fight one another. Okay, I think we have some dudes here. You got our armies here. Okay, traders are on the way back over. Wanted to build some walls here. Looks like he's taking that stone. Yeah, it's kind of hard to like wall that one off. He might just destroy the market, which wouldn't be a terrible idea for him. I do think purple has half the map. Yeah, well, you know. 
I got my little rat's nest here. I was willing to have a truce if we attack orange. Yeah, see, that's, that's, that's good. I won't attack then. Okay, so we got a little bit going here, which is good. We have like a loose truce. The market is still very much there. For now, unless I screw it up. Managed to throw it away somehow. The English are coming. But we'll see if he actually helps, is the question. Yeah, getting a wall up here is going to be very tough. It's going to be a very, very tough one. Okay, is this like an actual wall piece? I can't tell. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And yes. And then we also want to set up some walls here. So let's just kind of wall up our old empire and be smart. And uh, you can go down here. We're trying to secure like our little piece of the pie here. Trying to secure it. We'll leave these guys on guard duty. He'll sit behind his walls is what he says. I love it. He'll tear down those walls. Oh man, okay. Let's out a little bit and then we need to go ahead and get some, uh, some upgrades so our armies are actually decent. Stone in the corner. All right, guys. We're trying to trying to get a little something something going. Yeah, we got the Streltsy. We do. Um, we could destroy some of this so I can actually build things here. Watch me accidentally click on the marketplace. That would be the ultimate turn play. Food economy is good. We need to get a big food surplus, obviously, for late game fighting and whatnot. Our gold is what sucks, like bad. We do have a lot of lumber, so let's uh, switch on to the gold here, I suppose. Okay, I think all the traders are uh, active at the moment. Need to deal with some of these annoying outposts in our base. So I'm just kind of like taking over my little my little corner of the map. It's the best I can do. All right, boys, keep clearing out all the ruins of the fallen empire. Are right, we looking? He is going to be chilling behind his bar uh, barriers there. Can we build walls here? Kind of can. You need to delete that farm. We got a little bit of that loving going. Can we fit through there? We can, we can. Nice. Outstanding. So the farm has been torched here. Can we fit through here? Oh, it's such an ugly, ugly little farm layout. Just trying to accumulate wealth, basically, guys. Just not be a, a haggard beggar. Uh, what are the upgrades we have? We need to get gunpowder. Gunpowder is obviously very good for the Rus. Army tactics is essential. Spearmen need to be upgraded. Archers need to be upgraded. There's going to come a time when I'm going to have to build them, so. Okay. All right, so we can do this. Let's set you up. Uh, is there any other good spots for hunting cabins in our lands? Yeah, there is. Looks like there is a, actually an opening back there in which they can get to my base. I don't think it's fully sealed here. And can we get it? Yeah, there we go. Cool. So hopefully that will get the job done. Let's build some walls here. Some Go and grab some stone. Help me out once the deer drops. Oh, they're talking about the, the wonder. Yeah, from the... It's going to happen for sure. I'm just trying to secure my future here. We are getting a fair amount of golds. Um, we need to build some gatehouses so I can run. Let's see if I can repair my landmark. Maybe take some uh, warrior monks up there. Not that it's like an essential landmark, but it could be the difference between living and dying here. All right. What are you guys up to? Let's just go purge some resources off the old map, shall we? Okay, let's get you. Looks like that keep back there doesn't like me setting up walls. So what we need to do is grab some... Um, is that really... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm at 135 eco. Yeah, it's because of the traders. Yeah, we need to move our army there to take the shots while we set up the rest of them. But yeah, we got like good trade going now. How many traders do I have? Uh, 32 traders is pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. So we're just like accumulating wealth right now. Trying to rebuild our landmarks. 
Sacreds are pretty heavily contested by the or controlled by these two. That so that makes that makes a wonder action like very very difficult here. Um, I don't have much lumber either, to be honest. Which probably should grab some and have you guys do this. Set up this and then jump here. Still have a couple trees. Looks like hunting cabins are being set up slowly but surely. Yeah, let's just be greedy. Oh, hold on. So we move this army up here. We let them absorb the uh, shots from the old. Uh, we gotta destroy all this. So these guys go, and now we can finish the walls. Perfect. Perfect. You guys just absorb those shots. You might think I'm attacking them, but I'm actually not. I'm just trying to allow my villagers to uh, get their wall set up. There's gonna be a French wonder soon. Um, but to avoid being 2v1, I have like a temporary alliance with him. I'm hoping I can accumulate wealth pretty quickly. Just buy a stone from the, uh, the, the, the Golden Gate. <laughs> you don't need to apologize, brother. All good. Okay. So Rams are still going like champs. Let's pull you guys back down. And uh, is there any stone? There's a stone up on the top. Oh, we almost got there. We almost got the old wall secured. Not quite. Not today. All right. So archers, spearmen, men-at-arms, horsemen. You know, all the, all the good stuff. We could get the Ramstein upgrade, but we'll wait on that until, uh, until it's go time. A couple English archers poking into my base here. We got our one landmark left. Yeah, our trade is pretty respectable. I would wager there's probably better trade, but this is a very, I would say, safe trade. Um, there is an opening there, so let's go clean this out. Take a couple of bills. Have you guys come over here. You need to check and, yeah, seal these breaches here to make it harder to get into the old empire. Obviously, you can still pour his entire army through here. But, yeah, let's, uh, let's punch this. Yeah, we'll have another Total War tournament this week. I don't know when, but we got, we'll get something planned. Don't you guys worry. So we found a little bit of stone, which is great. Looks like it's been uh, mined out, though. So let's take this gold here. Okay, the villagers should be here soon. The Chad villagers. And then we want to do this. I think this is an actual spot. Yeah, it is. Great. So our production isn't amazing. We need to get more infrastructure. In case there's a big mortal wombat, we're going to need it. We got an English neighbor, which makes it very, very tough to endure sieges because they can just immediately have trebuchets up at your stuff. Um, although, let's see what that looks like here. That actually is an idea, if you, if you catch my drift. I'm actually technically not allied against the English. I'm just trying to buy a reprieve because I didn't want to get 2v1 there. I felt like it was going to happen. Um, all right, so let's max out on our upgrades. I think Ventus is about to attack me. Lots of siege workshops north of my base. Oh, man, okay. Politics, politics. How do we play this? Villagers getting the wall set up, and uh, then we need to get a wall set up here also. And make sure we're all, all, all good. Ventus making good on the deal. So, yeah, I like that. All right. So, probably like right here is in a bad spot. It's like pretty close to our production infrastructure. Oh, wow, we have a huge stone node right here, too. I did not notice that. So grab some of you guys go and purge this stone. I did not notice that. That is a sweet deal if I've ever seen one. So Golden Gate, we're just going to keep buying stone. Working our way up towards some sort of a defense. Um, Roos, Roos can definitely defend wonders okay with their siege. They have decent siege equipment. Oh, I guess I didn't go with the landmark for it, so it's not going to be anything special. Okay. Let's go finish the walls. And uh, are we cackling? I think we're cackling. The cackling begins. So whose landmarks are these? This is a dead player, I think. Yeah, I think it is. So we're going to set this up here as just kind of a precaution. Keeping that sacred site kind of eyed, I think, is going to be good. Could always grab it, too. Um, do we have any warrior monks left? We do. This poor villager is just getting sent into the old uh, the old pits once more. Getting a decent bank here. About to get a bunch of this. Top side gold is getting taken. So gold is starting to disappear off the map. Trade is going to become the biggest variable. And it being English. Obviously. 
That's going to be quite strong. Okay, so let's delete these. Huh, this is tricky. This is a tricky one. Like, the corner is really good. It, it's definitely very good. But it's, like, the English can just beeline right down the side of the map, whereas if I'm, like, over here, but then it makes it easier for the French to get here. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky, it's a bit of a conundrum we're in here. Pretty sure that fit. Right. Yeah, we recovered pretty well. It was it was a rough start. You know, we were in the corner with like no resources, but I would say that we're in a, a relatively decent spot now. Okay, we can just like do annoying little towers here. Just to try and set it up. We're getting some stone, which is really nice. That's going down. And uh, how are we doing? Yeah, we need horsemen. Uh, we don't need crossbows. That's for horse archers. Shelty double time can be situationally useful. So we wanted to get that to deny the um, sacred side action, right? Just make it like hard for the um, the sacred side counterplay in case we go for a wonder. Yeah, the grand finals tonight is a, a custom map made by one of our community members. So it's going to be really fun. So got a lot of stone over there. Golden Gate, let's keep buying. The French are definitely going to be like prepping for some wonder action. Yeah, I have so much eco right now, guys. I have so much. We have tithe barns online. I don't think we got that. That was a big mistake. Should have gotten tithe barns like 10 years ago. Okay. Stables are all being augmented. Yep. Do we want to get the ram upgrades? Probably just spring and like the upgrades for our basic siege equipment is going to be the way. All's good, man. It's calm. It is calm. <laughs> Patty says it's turn winning for once. Hey, you know, I used to win these a lot when we first started. Then all you guys just got all good. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. FFA is a different beast. It really is. There's so many, like... Yeah, the playstyle is just so different. I mean, a lot of things, obviously, if you just want to squash them in quickly, there's a lot of variables that stay pretty consistent, but... Let's go finish that. And uh, looking around, we do have some stone. Just trying to use Golden Gate to, you know, be as efficient as possible. Top side, we do have this landmark. Okay. And we're just hanging, man. We're just hanging and trading a little bit. I don't know how good the trade is for the other players. I would imagine pretty good. Okay, so screw that up. Let's get you back to the market. The fact that there was this Abbasid market left here is good. Um, alright. So let's move up here. Grab this. Stone's going pretty good. Golden Gate's hammering along. I could improve the trade. I think I could. Alright, so let's get you guys out. Is there anything else I can really go after around here? There is. There's a gold node right here. Yeah. And, um, let's go ahead and get you guys and go set up a market. Although, it looks like there's, like, a tower there. Yeah, so it's kind of annoying. Let's go get that. See if we could like, take that tower down. Try and secure that. I, I wonder if they're fighting on the other side. I really do. I really wonder if there's some Mortal Wombat going on. Okay, so we can test the waters here. Oh, wow, that wasn't good enough. Okay, that sucks. Okay, so let's delete the mining camp. I don't know about the wonder spot. Like, I feel as if the corner would be... Yeah, there you go. Okay, that'll, that'll do, pig. That'll do. Whenever we're ready. All right, so we're, we're discovering vulnerabilities in our empire right now. <laughs> Ezra did the chop. He got a... What's, what civ did you guys all get in the random civs? Okay, trying to get rid of some of these northern towers. And uh, looks like we are all good. Yeah, that will work. Great. So we're just like sharing resources on the map. Everybody's enjoying themselves. This is the calm. You know, usually when you get into like three player situations, it becomes a little bit crazy, right? Okay, so we're gonna like try and improve that a little bit and squeeze every morsel. You got you got Mongols? Did you win? I assume you won if you got one of your mains, right? And you being you, of course. Um, okay, this is nothing. Yeah, it's fine. I'll just delete this for them. It's cool. 
if he wants to get real crunk there. Okay, so do this, do uh, this, and this. All right, looking pretty good. Can set you up here too, just to make it a little bit harder to shut down depending on how long the game goes. Yeah, I won in 30 minutes. I got French and I got humbled immediately, says Masso. Oh my God, that's funny. Hey, it happens, don't stress it. All right, that looks pretty good. Set up a little wall of doom there. This is going down now. Okay. It's not a huge difference, but it certainly certainly is not insignificant either. And I believe there is a gold node in the base here, which we can purge. All right, so just kind of building up resources. I'm sure they are. Uh, the English, the English usually the only one who really could potentially be getting. Um, I bet you there's a French wonder being like preemptively set up here. Like that would be 100% my guess. So we're gonna send a Chad, a Chad scout up there to go look, see if he can figure it out. 155 eco right now, just the casual 155. All right, looking great. Set you up here. There's a prelate sitting on that one. This resource is being shared. Just grabbing as much as I can. I'll cut the villagers eventually. Traders are going through a gate. Yeah, there's a gate for them. I don't know what you're what you're talking about. French trade isn't as good as us. That's a good sign. Look, look. Oh no. Oh, that's that's a, a definitely very suspicious. That is definitely very uh very scary. Okay, so let's uh, start setting you guys up. Like so. All right, so that's gonna be the start of it. Golden Gate's kind of like hurting now, so we're gonna have to do it the old-fashioned way, which sucks, but we'll trade our way, do a little bit of that, and then just kind of hang tight. We obviously have a bit of gold, so. Setting up a tower here. Yeah, the French French entrenchments are terrifying. He's he's building cannon entrenchments, right? So that's, that's pretty scary. Okay. How are we looking on everything else? What uni upgrades need doing? These guys will slowly set these up. He's trying to Mortal Kombat me here. Look at this. <laughs> the, vill the villager fight. It's pretty funny. All right, guys. Golden Gate, where are we at? Let's keep going. We got the sweet, sweet trade going, but that's going to get shut down super quickly. And it looks like there's a religious character coming for this. Yeah, see, he wants it. We'll send a guy to go decap this one. And then uh, we can pull some bills to go set up some towers near it. We gotta like delay that for as long as possible. Okay, there's literally nothing there. Oh, uh, we do have the, some gold scraps here. I'm just waiting for the French wonder. Is he attacking Siberius? Or all chill? I feel like it might be pretty relaxed here. Oh my god, these guys are uh, these guys are still building up here. Oh my god, I can't quite fit it. Yeah, it looks like they might be fighting. Okay. So let's delete this. I know these things got a, a buff to their building rates and all that. Yeah, I wonder if they're actually fighting. Could be. Many mangoes. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like there there is some fighting going on. I'm a little bit suspicious. I'm a little bit suspicious, but you know, it's the nature of the beast. Okay, so we can build a gatehouse right here. Get a little bit more efficient. Oh, look, he's he's swarming it with his villagers. Repair it, my minions. Repair it. Okay, let's even get that spring ult finished. Start picking those guys off. He wants this pretty bad here. Yeah, he definitely does. So I guess we just run. Let's take our knights up there and go clear that out. And our villagers can just set up another one. Ventus is building a wonder. Yeah, all right, here we go. So the die is cast. Here we go. 
Uh, Wonder Top. The time has come. All right, so I'm. I this is a pretty clear game plan for us. Like the French Wonder would. Um, he's he. It's hard to race it. I'll attack North. Sounds good. So we will just do this. You guys know what's coming, right? You guys need to start blasting the appropriate music out of your speakers. The Du Host, it cometh. I could also go for the Sacreds. Hmm, how many Sacreds do we have? Nah, the other one's already pretty contested in there. All right. Let's set all this up. And let's see if the French will uh, continue their reign of tyranny on, uh, on the old... Uh... Okay, so let's do you in seven. Get ready to move. Thankfully, we're somewhat ready for this. We're going to have to delete some bills, though. 100%. Yeah, a lot of French towers, but it's okay. Okay, set up some of this. Okay. We could also do... Let's see. Do I have any religious characters still? I do. Let's pull these guys up. So he's trying to entrench this. I could just go over there and push him off real quick. Probably not a bad idea in the meantime. You guys ready to see how overpowered Rams, Rams are? It's time. We're just gonna do knights and spears mostly. Okay, so the English need to basically just hug the top of the map here. And the Ramstein is, uh, is coming. It is. I'm very excited for this. So we can... Uh, Pressure him off Wonder with Sacreds, if you want. Because I can probably get this one before all is said and done here. Okay. Got 46 bills here, so we don't need them. So let's cut that down. Up to you. Okay, so the Rams are on the way. All right, he want he doesn't want to do the sacred pressure, so I would have to attack Orange. Yeah, it's fine. So w if he doesn't want to do that, then we'll just uh, we'll just focus on the epicenter here. Uh huh. And uh, let's just get Rams going. <laughs> the Du Hostening comes. <laughs> du Du Host. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be fun, dude. I, I I guess I could have built my Wonder a little bit sooner. That probably would have been smarter. But, you know, I, I wanted to give some respect to these players. You know, I didn't know what schemes they would have. It's time, dude. Let's just get those Rams going. Uh-huh. He's pretty entrenched here, but, I mean, this is his main base. You Do you know where all landmarks are? Oh, I actually do. I know where he hit him. Okay, so we can actually just landmark snipe him. Yeah, I think we, we know where all his landmarks are. Okay. I'm down. Dude, Rams are so good now. It's like so cost effective, especially as Roost, who's just like a super wood happy sieve. It's like you can just get so many of them, dude. Well, I feel like Rams aren't as overpowered in 1v1. In, in FFA, they seem very good. Okay, so we're getting attacked here by a bit of a defensive force, but no worries. Do. Do host. Okay, so uh, we see the town center. He might have hidden a landmark up top here. Okay, so it looks like the French Knights are being taken down. So let's knock this and this. Do that. Are you guys pouring out here. We're, our military is pretty balanced now. All right. So there we go. Keep his fallen. Let's get the Bombards to move up. Got a lot of Knights on the way. Got to keep our supplies going. Okay, so let's take that. That's his actual town center. He's got Red Palace, um, Chamber of Commerce, and, you know, if he's worth his salt, he for sure built his last landmark up on the top here. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to get that. But, yeah, we're, we're making progress. We still have 10 minutes, so we're not, like, in any huge rush. I did. I uh, Bam Rams. He needs to learn the way. The boy must learn. Okay, so let's get you guys moving up. Let's go um, see what this looks like here. Okay, let's go after the Red Palace. 
I mean, yeah, he's got his keeps here. Definitely just plowing his main base will hopefully buy time for our English ally to, uh, to do his job. Okay, Red Palace is dying. So the fact that the Red Palace is back there is good. We got 10 minutes left, so we're good on time. We are good on time. Yeah, Red Palace falling is pretty sweet. Okay, let's go Rams. Let's go. We got some decent forward infrastructure. We don't have any bills though, so we can't really build too much more. Okay, so we get his town center. We get this. Um, then we have that. So we're just pushing through the base. We're going to finish the TC because I feel as if um, sniping landmarks here is going to be worth just because there could be a chance that, you know, there's uh, there's some freebies around. Okay, so the Rams can move up. We can take our armies. Take our armies, take our armies, take our armies, and just kind of run around. Um, is there any way through the mountain? Most likely so. We're just going to run through some burning oil. It's always, always a good time. Let's pull the Rams. Pull the Rams. Uh, they can actually finish this keep, just to make our reinforcements a little bit more efficient. Outstanding. All right, so you guys just keep moving up through the city. You guys head this way, and wow, it looks like they're legit. is just an easy way to get over here. Okay, that's awesome. Go, my rams. Go forth, my pretties. Let's go see how entrenched he is. Okay, we have eight minutes left. Uh, okay, we see a ton of towers. Obviously, to be expected. So, we need to do this. Get you, and uh, get you guys. Did I not get the ram upgrade? I could have sworn I got the ram upgrade. Wow, I thought I had gotten it. Okay, so we need to go, like, just run through and see where his last landmark is. Because if it's just that one in the corner, then we're we're all good. Eight minutes left with an English ally. The English ally should be making some good progress. All right, so let's go get this landmark here. Um, I also need to do a little bit of scouting. So we'll go send you on the top of the map to see um, if he's hiding a landmark over there. Yeah, and then we're golden. All right, so the whole main base is plowed, more or less. And now we just move on and continue our war machine. All right, let's get some more knights. Do this. Oh, look at you. Clever, clever. You need to cut off his gold so we can stop producing units. How goes it? We're checking how it's going with our English pal. We ended up being the best of friends. Making steady progress. That's what I like to hear, man. For England, James. All right. Great, so the whole base is done. Yeah, we got through it. So now we just go straight do host. Seven Trebs doing work. Yeah, you ain't kidding, brother. You ain't kidding. Seven Trebs is pretty good. Okay, did we see any hidden landmarks over here? I, I seriously doubt it, but, you know, some pe you know, he might have made a mistake. All right, so let's move up. We got seven minutes left. It's going to be close. We don't need to deal with that. All right, so let's go. We do want to deal with this, though, so we'll have some guys stay and go for that. Let's go up here and just build siege workshops. Those are for the old uh, rams. So they can just come from closer. Let's gather up critical mass. We got a lot of bombards on the way. I would wager, wager he's pretty busy fighting the old English. There's got to be... Uh, if he hit another landmark over there, I'd be really shocked. All right, so we're in. Looks like we're meeting some horseman resistance, which is always a good sign. Hopefully we can just deal with it with um, some Roost Knights and uh, get some Spears coming. See if we can drag them down. Looks like the horsemen are getting crumped. We did take that landmark down. Oh, uh, I don't think the English will have enough stone for a Wanderer. It's something that, yeah, okay, that horseman dive did not go well for him. All right, let's move up. We destroyed Ventus's landmark, great. And uh, looks like he was not a fool of a chook. Okay, so let's just charge you guys to the corner. Have the, the bombards like start knocking down the cannon towers. Do that. And then some of them can go for the other side and do this. I would wager the English are nearby. All right, cool. And then this next wave of units, we need to make more rams. See, I don't have enough stone to, or wood to even build a wonder at the moment, which is unfortunate. Oh, well, we should probably just destroy all these buildings so we can't produce defenders, actually. 
I think that would be a smart idea. I'm, I'm actually starting to run out of wood, legit. Okay, we need to get the movement speed. Oh, what the hell is that? No, get out of here. That's some weird pop-up. Freaking Epic Games trying to ambush me with some, some business here. All right, let's go uh, grab these relics, too. So we're shutting this down so we can't produce defenders, and maybe that will allow the English to get in a little bit easier. Okay. Let's do that. And then uh, we got horsemen and rams coming. We got f only five minutes, but we're really close. We're, like, really, really close. And the rams are still doing work. Yeah, plowing infrastructure down. He's going to run out of horsemen here, but he does get our bombard, so well played there. All right, we're going to have to make some more. Okay, so most of the stables are gone. Okay. Let's move it and groove it. Get up here. You grab this. You grab this. Take it back to the old base here. Let's get it down here. Perfect. All right, we're almost there. He probably doesn't have the means to build units anymore. So he's just kind of all in on whatever he currently has. We got more bombards on the way in. I don't know what the hell this mess is. This is so weird here. It's like a couple horsemen. These cannons are having serious line of sight issues. <laughs> All right, English, we need you to be the hero. We go through the top. Go through the top. Do that. They're legit, like, stuck in the trees. Come on, guys. Get out of the tree line here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe there's, like, some update on the store or something. I don't even use Epic Games, really. All right. So we go up the top, just try and weasel our way through here. Okay, so let's just hit all these. Come on, Rams. A couple of you guys, go get these. And uh, now we can start mixing in trebuchets, actually. Because trebuchets are better at sniping from downtown, so we want to we wanna try that. Okay, three minutes left. Feeling pretty hopeful about it. If the English player does have enough for a wonder, he probably wins. Yeah, I think he probably wins if that's the case. Oh, it, it's bad back there, but I'm closing. Hey, man, we, we're, we're both doing our part. It's all, I can say, it, regardless of the outcome, it has been an honor to play with you, Siberius. Because you seem like a, a true sport. Let's get through some of this. Send the Rams down. It looks like he's got some Spring Alds mixed in there, so let's pop it in the face if we can. Rams, keep going through, keep going through. Let's go see what it looks like back here. we got two minutes left. Rams. Okay. Looks like the last defenders are here. So we need the Rams to just attack and start keep clearing here. Alright, so then we need to get some um, some units from here if we can. Alright, so we need more defenders. Or attackers, excuse me. I'm making good progress. Two minutes left, guys. We're really, really close. Oh, shit. There's his last landmark. Okay, we just go for that. Yeah, 100%. Okay, we have a game plan now. So we get our trebs and we just do that. We just get a keep here, knock down his last landmark here, and we're cackling. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm pretty sure his other landmarks have not been repaired. So let's go make sure. If he repaired them, that would have been super slick. You know, this wall actually, I might be able to reach this from downtown. Yeah, okay, he's in trouble. I'm going to just spam trebs now. Yep, trebs, trebs, trebs. We're hitting that last landmark. If he doesn't realize it's his last one, then we are golden. Okay, let's hit that. Have the Rams go for it. We got these and these, so they can defend this. We also have to keep coming up. One minute, 22 seconds, guys. It's gonna be real tight. It's got a lot of villagers repairing it. Okay, so let's get you guys. More Trebs, yes. And we need to get more of you guys and more of you guys. Yeah, we're getting some progress on it. Probably can't produce too much more. Man, we are getting some serious stopping power on that. That's probably stupid. Ah, he's going to get on top of the trebs. I don't have enough defenders. I mean, I have the, the rams and whatnot, but this is like the pathing. Yeah, I got to get the, uh, the pathing on this. Man, this is really close. Okay, so hopefully the English are close by. I don't know if they are. This is like kind of our last hurrah here. Okay, so let's make some of these. I don't know if we have time. We got 32 seconds, guys. We gotta just move on to it. 
Okay, Trebs, go. I think it's GG. I think it's GG. Wow, super well played. Really, really good hold. We were so close. This is uh, this is all we need to get. 14 seconds left. I don't think the English are close enough. We'll try this last landmark here, but it's not going to work out. I think he's going to repair it. Uh, we might get one more shot. Okay. No, it's not. It's going to be just short. GG. Well played. Holy shit, guys. We were like two seconds away. Look at that. Damn. That was close. Let's see how this looked. Yeah, I know. We were both right there. What a good hold. What a good hold he had. All right. So now, let's see. So, Leto, you need to let me know uh, who's going to be in the grand final so I can cast the lobby. He said, first time. Hey, you, you earned it. You played very well. The English were pretty damn close. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Holy shit. We almost got him on the blunder here. <laughs> almost on this being built uh, in front of it. <laughs> yeah. So the thing, the thing with him is, um, yeah, he was able to build up these defenses because of our Thunderdome. We had, we had three players spawn in the bottom. I've changed my mind. Let's do Sacreds. Yeah, we could have stopped him with Sacreds. If Siberius had agreed with me, we could have just, he could have just let me take this. But he keeps control of it. And then as soon as the Wonder's deleted, he just takes his Sacred Sight back. Yeah, two seconds away. One or two more volleys would have done it. Yeah, we had the traps coming in. Probably, yeah, I was out of wood also, guys. Check that out. Dude, he played, he defended really well, though. It was very, very smooth. Very, very smooth. Ezra and Uravity are in it. Sounds good. Okay, so I can spectate. How many uh, pods are still going, by the way? How many pods do we still have? But yeah, this is... He, he uh, nomaded very well. S settled up in the north, had nobody else near him. English to the southwest. This whole bottom side was an absolute mess. Yeah, looking at where you were, maybe a couple more minutes between both our pressures. Oh, uh, not even a couple more minutes. Another 30 seconds in these, uh, these trebs. Knocked on the wonder. He was completely out of defenders. He just had a couple spearmen. <laughs> you should have brought the monks. Yeah, the monks could have helped, I suppose. They were taking the relics back to the base. We, we stole the two relics from the Fallen Empire here. Man, what a fun game. That was really good. Okay, so let's go see where we're at. So, uh, Leto, shoot me a message and let me know how we're looking on the pods. I believe ours was last finished. Okay, great. So we're going to go right into the grand finals. Hell yeah, baby. Let's have some fun. Thank you guys all for joining tonight. Late night, Age of Empires. And I think we're, I think all eight pods are done. You know, yeah, ram upgrades being quicker would have made the difference. That's true. I did miss that. I did miss that. Yeah. Yeah. Those walls were actually helping my traps there at the end. I was like, oh, okay, they can't be dope anymore. Yeah, what a great game, dude. He played super well. So let's see how we're looking. Where are we at? Checking with the players here. One sec here, guys. Okay. Making sure no issues in the Discord. With organizing, and it looks like they're all hosting now. Perfect. So once they're done, we can uh, we can get in here. Have some fun. Oh, man. So, guys, we have a custom map for this one, too. That's going to be really, really fun. Uh, can you move the... Yeah, yeah, to the top right. Yeah, yeah, it depends on what game I'm playing. That's true. Sorry about that, guys. All right, there we are. It has been moved for you. Hey, well played, Siberius. You played super. You, you played great, my friend. A good consolidated effort on an entrenched French wonder. Always worthy. <laughs> Always worthy. I'm excited to see this one, man. Who's going to get the W here? I, I actually prefer the random sieves. I think it's way more fun when people get thrown off their mains. But then sometimes someone just gets their main and, it, <laughs> and they steamroll everyone, I guess. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Yep, they're setting up the lobby right now, so we have a little bit of time. Just going to hang out. If you guys are enjoying the stream, do drop a like. We have uh, one more FFA of the gods going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Make sure with the right idea. Just give turn 50 members so you can remove it permanently. Yeah, we'll get there. Oh, I would be sweating bullets if I were him. He, he, he had really good awareness, though. Like, a lot of people could have forgotten about their landmarks, but Ventus didn't. He, um, he saw that... His landmark was in danger, and he had like all of his, his vills repairing it. Yeah, he was able to save it, which was really smooth. He he did a great job, man. That was fun. I like I love how Uravity is this actual Uravity uses a gold icon, even though he's like Conqueror one or two. I think. Let's see, is this him? Maybe. Oh, maybe that's is that Westerly impersonating him? I think that's an impersonator. Yeah. Okay. It looks like is it lagging? 
I'm gonna restart my game real quick. I noticed that there's sometimes these, like when you click on people's profiles or like click on avatars, sometimes you can have like weird lag. So let me, uh, let me do this real quick. Um, all right, just gonna restart my game and we'll uh, get into the grand finals. The finals is stacked. It always is. It's always been stacked lately. Yeah, we have so many, so many great players in our community, man. So many great players, and we have like what we have in our Discord is FFA specialists. We have people who are just like, sure, they might, they might not be like a Dark Lord in one v one, but they're like in in the FFA games, they are like you know the equivalent of a Dark Lord. Yeah, it's it's really cool to see. I love it. That's you, okay. You just haven't, I haven't played much this season either. I, I was expecting to see like double conquer on your rankings there. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played 1v1 this season really either. I played a couple games, just my placement and a couple extras, but that was more or less it. All right, so we're just waiting for the lobby to get started. Good morning from uh, India says, Amit, hope you're doing well, man. Hope you're doing well. Just kind of craving some uh, Indian food myself. It's super good stuff. Uh, I'd have gone after Ventus harder, but I fear it turns English. No, no, no. Well, you see, I wasn't worried about the English that game because I had crazy trade. And I also knew there was like, you probably didn't have enough stone for a wonder. So I wasn't worried about that. Yeah. To be fair, FFA looks way more fun than 1v1. It is. It is. It is very fun. I don't know which one I prefer. <sighs> That's a tough call. I mean, in, in the current meta, I would say I probably prefer one uh, FFA. Because honestly, the um, the trade, yeah, the tra how like prevalent trading is, and just how obnoxious it is to start stop at a higher level. Yeah, you guys, you guys have loaded in. Okay, I'm just I'm just waiting. I'm I'm watching your avidity. Let's let's watch him roll Mongols again. That would be really funny. Yeah, I see. That's the thing. Like English don't have a way of getting a ton of stone. So like I wasn't worried about you counter wondering. I figured that. I figured that I was either going to throw down a wonder and try and survive, which would have been the game-winning play, probably. Because he I, he was so entrenched, but I didn't know how rich they were. And having English right on my borders with Trebs would have been really scary with French knights coming from the north. So I was like, part of me was like, let's wait for him to build a wonder, 2v1 him, and then and then I go for the wonder against you. Yeah, that that, that was kind of overall my, my thought process. Yeah, Trading is trading in one v one is is very prevalent. It's very prevalent. It's one of the reasons why I'm not like super interested in casting competitive at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm also covering so many games. There's been so many. <laughs> Yo, you lost the Smeagol in your pod. How did Smeagol win? Oh, I, w I would imagine. No worry, Leto. I'm sure they're just getting everyone together. And uh, yeah, it looks like they're starting right now. No worries. All right, perfect. And we'll be getting this going in a second once I load in. Yeah, the only thing I actually hate in this game is being tower rushed in 1v1. Like, or just cheesy shit like that. It just is not fun. Like, even if you win, it's just not fun. Yeah, that's the only thing I don't like. <laughs> I really don't mind, like, yeah. Late game English, though, and late game French need to be feared always in FFA. Either through infinite gold attrition or, um, or wonder spam. Because Guild Hall is just insane. He killed me and then won with the wonder. Yeah, sounds about right. Two and ten in these FFAs, that is not bad. That is not bad at all, my friend. Alright. Let's load in. Here we go, baby. We got Dark Hunter Ezra on the Malians. And Cole on the uh, Chinese. Uravity on the English. Book on the Rus. A. Crawford on the Delhi Sultanate, Nomad Mac on the English, Ventus on the Chinese, and Smeagol on the English. Wow. Triple English. Double Chinese. Talk about stacked civilizations as well. So this is a custom map made by Nanny Ort here in our community. This is, if I'm, I'm, I believe you made it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this is a, a custom map. It's going to be very fun. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. So this is the Emperor's Valley. So the middle obviously has a couple. Ooh, look at that. There's actually some deep water fish in the middle. And it's King of the Hill style. So there's one sacred site. I actually think this is really cool. And then you have these big bluffs. Oh, man. Oh, man. You guys see this? So we got this like this tree line that if you invest the time to cut through this, you're going to be able to um, build a wonder like up in a corner with a huge mountain pass protecting you. Granted, you can see the map designer set up some ways that so if you're on the other side, you can also get up here on the hills and maybe Trevor or something. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool. 
So as far as uh, sacred sites go, it's here in the middle. You know, it'd be really funny to see is like some uh, some navy, like Baochans or Baochans, however the hell you say that. And they're just kind of sitting in the middle, just like defending a wonder or something or defending the sacred. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's going down. Check it out. All right. English villagers with the bows. Oh, you better be careful. Ventus is already in trouble. We have Uravity here with the English and they're having a race for the TC, but I think the Chinese are going to be losing this. And if Ventus loses a Vil, oh my God. Oh, he's going to torch it. Oh no. That's brutal because by torching it, I'm pretty sure you don't get a full refund if it's damaged. Oh man, he might not even be able to afford to build a uh, town center. Oh no, guys. Oh, and he gets the cancel. Now, does Ventus have enough to rebuild? Oh my God, did he not get the refund? Oh, he did. Okay. Town center going up on the high ground. But remember, Chinese build faster. Uravity is privy to this. He's going to be pulling one of his villagers up to scout this out. And the Chinese trying to set up on the gold here. Villager moves up. He does have his bow and arrow out. And he's going to be uh, shooting at the Chinese villagers here. And he pulls the second one as well. Oh my god, the Haggard TC fight. But overall, I think Uravity is going to be the one laughing all the way to the bank here. We see the torches coming down. Is the Chinese player going to try and do this? No, he's not. He, he can't win this. He can't win this. He's going to have to just run up to the corner and be a gremlin like I, I was basically last game. So overall, Uravity definitely gets the last laugh there. This poor Chinese player is going to be really, really sent back to the Shadow Realm. Ventus is in huge, huge danger. Yeah, I mean, he's coming back in, but he's going to try and build it, maybe. But it's he needs to... If he starts losing villagers, it's basically just GG. You can't afford to lose a villager here early. So maybe these two healthy villagers can move in and do a little bit of action. Uh, the English TC is almost done. Villagers on the way back in. And the injured villager is going to be kind of dodging out on the outside. I do like that from Ventus. Oh, you better get back. One more shot's going to kill that villager. Okay, archers are on the way in. Here they come. Villager duel. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for Ventus. Spawning next to, like, the English villagers. That is so, so rough. So the daggers, um, they do do more damage than the bows. But the bows obviously have a massive range advantage, right? So, yeah, man. Ventus could get Shadow Realms here. He could get chased up into the corner of the map and actually lose two villagers right now. But thankfully for him, Uravity's not doing it. So on the south side, we have Nomad Mac, English player setting up. Up to the northeast, it is going to be uh, Cole, and he is going to be a Chinese player, setting up on kind of the central south of the map. To the far east, we have Smeagol. Smeagol uh, immediately going for the woods. Very, very happy to have English, I'm sure. To the west, we do have a Roos player. A uh, very rough position for the Roos. Granted, oh, they do have dock play. So maybe Book is going to be able to get some dock action, get some uh, food, and overwhelm his opponents early. And the Chinese are basically just in the pits of hell right now. They have gone to the top. Ventus uh, is going to get that TC set up, but we already see farms coming up here for Uravity. Um, but he's behind too. Uravity is going to be behind other players because of that exchange. So, um, But yeah, overall, his spot sucks really bad too. Like, I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe try and lumberjack through the trees and just escape to the top. That could be your best bet. You know, there's a gold node up here, and um, you could theoretically get some trade down the pipes. Uh, not really, though. I, I don't think there's any trade on this map, so... Kind of refreshing to see. The TC finishes. Look at that. Uh-oh. Scout could be going down here. We'll see. One more shot. It's very, very low. Looks like it's going to get away. That would suck pretty bad for Uravity to lose a scout, and he does. So it looks like Ventus gets the last laugh as that scout does fall there. But there's literally no food here, guys. There's none. So right now, he is just fanning out into the world, and he's going to be trying to get some food. But yeah, a scout going down does deny the English here some uh, hot sheep action. Dark Hunter Ezra going to be spawning in the west, and he is the Malians. Malians, uh, of course, do have the cattle system, so they can get nice, sustainable food economy. Malians don't even need to really be... Uh, they just need some, some gold, and they can really function, right? Um, so you could get the cattle ranches set up. You could be producing cattle as a constant food source. There's a lot that you can do, for sure. But your Uravity overall does have the better position, right? He's got the uh, farms with the mill. He's got gold here. He's got wood line going, and the Chinese are basically just trying to lumberjack their way through. I have a feeling they're going to try and get into the back, and set up a new base there, but they would need stone to do that also, so that is very, very scary. One trade node down center, says the map maker. Okay, so there's one trade in the middle. I kind of like that. You know, everyone's got to fight up, fight over this, and I think that's quite a bit of fun. Yes, this is random Civ. So every player here is on a random civilization. So, so far we have two players going for water. We do have uh, the pink player, Nomad Mac, who is going to be the English, and I believe we have the Roos on water as well with the Lodia fishing boat, which is going to be magically teleporting fish. And it's it's probably worth getting like three or four boats here. You know, this, these are deep, deep sea fish. So they do respawn over time, which is very, very nice. And now it looks like Ventus is going to be trying to get some fishing of his own. He does also discover a deer uh, camp here. So he could also go for that food if he wants to. But really, like, yeah, I think Chinese just going to have to set up Farmville. 
Not too many places to flee here. And uh, will the boats be coming out? Yep, China's going to start fishing. Perhaps they'll be begging the uh, the roost to allow them to fish in the river. Because the roost could easily just push them out by turning one of these into like a combat ship. And driving the Chinese back to the uh, the shore, which we'll have to see. Up in the top, a lot of sheep for the Malians. Really good stuff from Dark Hunter Ezra. He was able to get a ton of sheep, so that's a good haul. And yeah, it looks like a really, really clean start for the Malians. Uh, they get a full uh, pit mine here. And the pit mines, it does matter what size the gold node is. This is a bigger gold node, so it's going to be giving the bigger surplus of gold. It's really, really cost effective. So he's able to get that, and he's certainly living his best life. Over on the east side, more English Farmville. Very, very standard stuff as all the players kind of transition here to the uh, Feudal Age, or going to be getting to the Feudal Age soon. I would wager the Malians will probably be some of the first to get to the Feudal Age. They're looking pretty good with this gold, although maybe the aquatic civilizations, the ones who are playing the water, will. Rusa, of course, getting a ton of resources there. Um, they do have... Do the Rusa not have a trade house or a uh, hunting cabin? Hmm, that's a little bit strange. On this map, you can get some super, super sweet hunting cabins. Like up in these little alcoves, you see how there's like a U-shaped alcove right here? You could totally just tuck hunting cabins in there and just be feasting like the heathen kings of old. But um, down to the south side, probably going to have a Royal Rumble. Powder keg ready to explode down here as we have Cole facing off against uh, Nomad Mac. So those two could be doing a little bit of a duel between uh, between each other down there. And yeah, now it's all, it's all calm right now, guys. It's all the calm before the storm. I would imagine your Avity is going to be greedy. Go Farmville and uh, try and get Castle Age and just push the Chinese back to the, uh, back to the pits. That's a really, really rough start for Ventus. That is like, and he got a good sieve too. China is, is considered to be one of the best FFA sieves in the game. They're really good. Um, faster building is so good for wonder races. And they just have so many strong, you know, landmarks. Like what, how many landmarks can the Chinese get? Like an extra like three or four. Yeah, it's crazy. So um, extra three, I think. So yeah, China can just be so difficult to remove as well. A lot of room down here on the side of the map. Certainly could see some uh, Spiegel action. Smeagol, of course, of course, Smeagol has done this, of course. So, I believe he, yeah, look at this. So, Smeagol lumberjacked through the woods, and he's got villagers on the back side of the map. This was to be expected. Smeagol is going to be setting up landmarks back here. As a matter of fact, there will probably be a wonder here in the late game. And uh, am I going to be predicting a Smeagol, a Smeagol W already? Setting up the Council Hall in the back. Now, Council Hall being back here, a little bit risky. It does leave him slightly undefended. Obviously, his opponents could come through here, but he's going to be setting up wood. Oh, my God. I can't believe he's... I was wondering who would go back here first, but he legit lumberjacked his way through. But so did uh, Crawford. Okay, so Crawford on his Delhi Sultanate is uh, looking for some goodies here in the back. So he does get some villagers back here. So Smeagol is not alone. Smeagol's got some company on the uh, backside of the map. So, yeah, it's not going to be uh, just his goodies. That is for sure. Now, what is Delhi going to be doing? It looks like Delhi had to set up early farms, just like I did last game, because they didn't get any good food spawns near them. And there is going to be another moss coming out. Interesting choice. I guess they want to get some of those early techs in a tower. And looking in the middle, the roosts are going to be a big threat. The fact that they have four Lodia fishing boats just going ham here. And look how kind of a neighbor they are. Just like hanging with the Chinese in the water and just like, hey man, you know, we can share this. There's enough fish for everybody. But at the end of the day, the Chinese are going to drain the fish pretty quickly from the roosts' uh, reservoirs here. And then he might not be so generous once he starts to notice that he's running out of those fish there. Down to the south side, we got Nomad Mac. Mac holding it down with the English fishing fleet. And uh, Smeagol, what's he up to? Yep, building his council hall here. But there are going to be some Delhi villagers on the way over. Now looking over here at Red, he has got a hell of a lot of sheep. Oh my god, look at that. Saharan Trade Network, very much a 1v1 tactic. You set this up next to your uh, gold pits to kind of protect them from early uh, aggression. But also, for the sake of trade, it's, it's quite good. You get the Saharan Trade Network, you set up a uh, trade here, and you just trade to the middle, and you're going to be hitting the uh, Saharan Trade Network toll post and all that, and you'll be doing pretty well. Look at this. Oh, my God. Look at Nomad Mac. Not Nomad Mac. Excuse me, Crawford. So Crawford is setting up an outpost on Smeagol's gold, and uh, he's stealing it. Oh, my God. I love this haggardness in the back. This is so funny. This is so funny, dude. <laughs> All right, so here it comes. Dark Hunter Ezra reaching Feudal Age. Malian's looking extra jacked. I mean, they have the gold pits going. They have good fishing going. They have a good sheep economy. So if they need to fall back, they have all those sheep. I mean, the Malians are definitely looking to be tyrants for sure. And Dark Hunter Ezra is a very, very good player. So, I mean, pretty much everyone here in the final is a good player. So that should go without saying. And English Longbow is going to be on the way out. Oh, my God. We're going to get Longbow pressure on these villagers. They're probably going to want to set up another uh, outpost in the front to try and keep the Longbows at bay. But it looks like English Longbows are coming. And... Yeah, he's still got gold in his base. So it's not a huge deal for Smeagol. Smeagol has got his resources. You know, he's, he's, he's not like denied back here or anything. But 
Uh, this is actually super important for the uh, Delhi because Delhi guys does not have any gold. So this is Delhi's only gold right here, guys. That is really, really rough. That is rough. So Dark Hunter Ezra still setting up shop. Looks like he's going to be going for mass. Uh, I would assume he's going to be massing out the calf. Yeah, they're really, really good. He's going to make his opponent sit on the sofa. Give him a stern talking to. On the middle side, it looks like there is an outpost being set up. So uh, Dark Hunter Ezra setting up his trade uh, toll post, it would seem. And now, do we see a little bit of aging up from one of our Chinese enjoyers? I think we do. On the south side, English longbows coming out in numbers. Wow. We already have four longbows looking to put pressure on the Chinese here. So uh, Cole is going to be getting pressured pretty heavily by longbows, it would seem. On the top side, look at this. I think there's some weird unsung agreement here. I think that Crawford was like, hey, man, I basically have no gold. I, I won't kill your villagers here if you just let me mine. I think there's some sort of an alliance going down here. Anyways, we do have the uh, Imperial Academy and looking at the other side of the map. Do we see traders coming out yet? We do not see traders coming out for red. Looks like it's just going to be the sofa spam. The sofa. No, warrior scouts. Interesting. So he's going to be going for warrior scouts and setting up his second ore mining pit, which is going to be very, very good. On the top side, we do see Delhi setting up a wall to make sure they don't get flanked in their base. Obviously, they did lumberjack through themselves. So Smeagol could easily flank him with longbows and cause a lot of havoc. And we do get more villagers for the English coming out this way. Up in the north. Gravity setting up Farmville, playing very steady. Gre Greed English is pretty great. Like, setting up farms, because England is such a good defensive civ, they can really do their thing here. And we get a Barbican being set up. Look at that. So we get a Barbican of the Sun being set up by Ventus, who, with his every fighting breath, is basically trying to spite Gravity here, it looks like. So um, that's pretty annoying. Having a Barbican, like, right on the border of your base certainly can pop some units, as Gravity is going to be going 2TC English and just trying to get a big macro boom and just cackle all the way to the bank. Now, where are these longbows going to go? Yellow is really, really in serious danger. We get a landmark coming up here. The Tower of Victory. <laughs> Guys, oh my god. We get the Tower of Victory in the top corner. And that's coming in from Delhi, which I don't know where the, where are the villagers even going that are trying to build that. We have the scout here. Um, English longbows are hunting down Ventus's uh, villagers here, which is going to be pretty painful. China is obviously super far behind. And uh, I do not think Ventus, has he been able to age up yet? Yeah, he's got the obviously the Barbican. The longbows continuing to Hestus and Commende and chase these guys down, so they're uh, certainly shell boring all over their faces. Still just sharing in the middle. You know, this is a very harmonious game. We see the Chinese and the Bruce getting along in the water here. This water belongs completely to Nomad Mac, who is going to be building a Hulk to uh, control the middle a little bit. The Hulk is also good because it can camp the trade post, so if anybody tries to trade, naval, you know, is very pertinent here. You could have, like, some big warships if you have an excess of resources, and they could really, really dominate the uh, trade in the middle. It's pretty funny. On the top side, yeah, people are just hanging out, enjoying each other. I wonder who's gonna the first to fall is gonna be. You would think it would probably be yellow, considering how rough of a start he had. Looks like there's gonna be an outpost going up for Ventus, and he's gonna be trying to fend off the pressure from the English longbows. Two English longbows down here should get taken out pretty easily by these Chinese horsemen. But Uravity isn't really trying to aggress on him yet. He's basically just going 2TC and just macroing really, really uh, good stuff. Over here, looking at Dark Hunter Ezra, he is uh, he's definitely gonna get crunk. Whenever you see somebody going for Iron Undermesh, it's the ranged armor. It usually means that there's going to be some TC diving. So somebody is going to be going deep and trying to just get like 50 Sofa and just dive somebody's base. Um, so yeah, there's going to be some heavy Sofa aggression. Ezra, in my experience, I've played quite a few games with them. They're they're pretty pretty aggressive. Um, and we do see the Malian securing the middle. So Malian setting up a post here. And uh, yeah, it does control the Sacred, but obviously it doesn't wall off the trade post here. With a Hulk, it's going to be hard to kind of get that. So still chill sharing and caring over here. This this is so chaotic. This is so chaotic. The way that these players are playing and just like splitting things all over the map. This is absolute anarchy. Guys, and Crawford is just now getting to the feudal age. So Crawford's sitting here with the Tower of Victory. He hasn't had gold. I mean, he basically just had to come all the way across the map and, and share gold with Smeagol on the bottom, which is pretty hilarious. But yeah, he's getting his upgrades at least. He's got Scholars coming out and spending what gold he has. And obviously, he's going to be going for multiple TC. So we see Stone being gathered, which is smart, because Delhi is very, very far behind. And uh, Delhi is sandwiched between a very angry Roost player here who's spamming Knights. And we do get a Kremlin. Kremlin is much weaker late game. But if you are sandwiched by, like, four opponents, a Kremlin, I can completely understand the uh, the dynamics of that. Siberia, hey, take care, man. Yes. It was good playing with you. It was good playing. Uh-oh, we have some haggard spam in chat. Do I have to deal with that real quick? I don't think any mods are on right now. And uh, cool. There we go. Should deal with it. And uh, outstanding. That was weird. That was like, usually they're like advertising something, but <laughs> that guy was just guy was just like spamming r random letters and numbers. And yeah, who knows? Sorry about that, guys. All right. We're back in business. 
We are back in business, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue this duel of fates here. Looking around in the middle, looks like players just kind of scrapping. We do have the Hulk. The Hulk is blasting this dock from the other side as well. And up on the top, yeah, there's still another dock here, so they should be fine. I am really anticipating some heavy aggression, and almost everyone has gone 2TC. Like, greed is greed is good. Grand Fulani Corral, with uh, Cattle Ranch is being preemptively set up around it. So, look at that. Yeah, Grand Fulani is the way to go if you're going to be playing the Malian Zo in uh, FFA. Uh, obviously, if you're in a 1v1 Duel of Fates, like Survival for Your Life, you know, the, the, the infantry production landmark, it, it can be pretty good. But uh, I do think the cattle spamming is going to be the way to go in this uh, particular circumstance. Ezra's Castle Age. Sofa going to be getting the imported armor. So that's going to be one of the first upgrades we see coming out here. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if he's got it. Uh, he doesn't have it producing yet, but getting him up to a veteran and getting the imported armor. And uh, yeah, that is when you get a really, really powerful timing with those guys. Now, wow, look at this. Book, the rooster, he's trying to uproot Smeagol. So Smeagol gets uh, kind of steamrolled here. The Roos even come in with some militia. I'm going to be lasting another 52 seconds. But uh, Smeagol, obviously being the gremlin he is, going to be fleeing back to his uh, little rat's nest empire back here. Setting up more farms on the back of the map. And the Roos, the Roos are coming for it. Oh my god, guys. The Roos are coming for blood. And look at this. Smeagol setting up a stone wall. He had a little bit of stone. And he's setting up a stone wall to keep the Roos knights. Now, will he get it up in time? It's going to be close. It looks like he is. He pulled villagers. This man just has survival instincts for days. Oh my god. So he gets the stone wall up. The roost were able to push him back into the gremlin corners of the map. And now we see the king's palace being set up on the other side as well. Dude, he is just... He is just so tough to kill. He is so tough to kill. Now the roost will come out, probably torch down this TC and finish off the base. Smeagol does reach Castle Age. And now he has officially become a gremlin in the corner. As he retreated all of his villagers. He's setting up farms back here. He's got his council hall. And uh, him and the Delhi are just kind of exchanging back here. But the Roos easily going to be able to take down this TC. Now, do we have any other aggression coming down? Looking around the map, we do see multiple TCs here for Nomad Mac. So one, two, and three. And he's also getting Ram. So Nomad Mac is still age two. Obviously, he invested very heavily in town center. So he's going to be slow to age up. But um, he does look like he's going to be getting aggressive here against the uh, Chinese who are building a Barbican to try and survive against his pressure here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be very strange. And it looks like... There's some barracks coming up. Is Smeagol going to be trying to like raid into somebody's base? I don't think the Roos are going to have any desire to get back here. It looks like Smeagol... Did he delete this wall to let his friend leave? No, I think him and the Delhi are just like haggard allies here. I think they are. So looking on the middle, guys. Looks like it's still uh, anyone's game. Nobody's trading yet. Nobody's trying to trade yet. I would imagine the Malians would be one of the first to try. Moss coming up, another TC. So that's going to put them on three TCs. The Grand Fulani Corral is currently being stocked up, so we see the cattle being distributed around the uh, cattle ranch, which is going to give the Malians a really, really nice bank of food as they progress into the later stages of the game. And Delhi's also got two TC, so Delhi and um, and Crawford are really, really just playing gremlin, going full goblin mode here on the back of the map, and uh, yeah, just 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 spamming these bad boys out, and uh, they both want to survive. I mean, Delhi's position is awful here, they, but they can always retreat into the to the recesses of the map to try and survive, right? They have that going. So enemy destroyed Chris's back landmark. So this is going to set Smeagol back. Losing a TC, losing a bunch of houses, you know, forcing him to become a nomadic creature is, uh, is yeah, it's perfect. Somebody in chat asking, why is the name Smeagol so fitting for him? Well, because Smeagol is like the, the, the ultimate survivor. You know, if you look at Smeagol in Lord of the Rings, he gets... He gets, uh, you know, he literally gets cr perpetually corrupted by, you know, this the, the one ring. Yet he still kind of manages to eat his fish and survive in a cave. Um, you know, he gets tortured by Sauron. Uh, I mean, and he just keeps coming back. You know, Smeagol is decrepit. He's malnutritioned, but he just keeps going strong. You know, so yeah, you got you got to put some respect on Smeagol's name here. I can't believe he's letting vent his fish here too. That's really funny that the roosters are doing that. But yeah. He's going to be pushed back, and it looks like, look, there's going to be a wooden fortress. There's going to be a wooden fortress set up here by Book. So basically, he, he's going to, like, keep an eye. <laughs> he's going to keep an eye on, on Mordor's bo barrier here and make sure that, uh, you know, no Uryx or anything like that is going to be kind of flowing through here. Yep, so farms here for Smeagol. Smeagol setting up his new empire on the south side, and it's honestly not bad. He does have the King's Palace, so at least he can produce villagers, but it's obviously going to be pretty weak but you know if he's left alone and left to his own devices he might be able to kind of thrive back here we'll have to see i was agreeing it's crazy how it, it, he is ratting every game oh no nim no for sure yeah enemy destroyed cole's line mark as well so it looks like cole's in trouble getting aggressed here by nomad mac so nomad mac coming in with the uh, the dew host of his own or the english breakfast host 
as the battering rams move in take down the imperial academy he did go castle age cole tried to go castle age and does have an s to beast but english feudals is, is pretty good they can even fight against these uh, palace guard the palace guard uh are not the tankiest they give up a little bit of tankiness for speed as an s to beast is being chased taking a look and assessing the landmark situation we have clock tower we have tc and we have Imperial Academy, and that looks to be it. So if those landmarks do go down, we do see the TC getting hammered here. England going to be continuing the pressure with more and more rams. And it looks like this is going to be the um, the first to fall. I think that we are going to see the end of the Chinese here. I don't know about their eco. If China could survive this, they'd certainly be quite strong. But the rams are putting that heavy, heavy pressure on. Looks like there is a combination of men-at-arms, spears, as well as longbows. This ram never got finished, but you need to finish off that TC. We do see the Nesta Bees shooting in. If a second Nesta Bees was able to get out here for the Chinese, that could turn the tide of this fight in tandem with the Palace Guard. But Palace Guard still kind of getting wrecked by these upgraded longbows. Although, do the longbows have damage upgrades? They do. So they actually do 7 damage. So they do 4 damage to pop against Palace Guard, which in numbers isn't uh, insignificant. So the Ramstein getting on here. Another ram needs to be built right now. Palace Guard able to drive them back. Oh man, could the Chinese survive this? And they have that nice economy going back here as well. They have the granary, but yeah, they're going to be losing another landmark here, which means that all you need to do is, uh, you know, lose this last landmark here, this TC, and that's going to be game blouses. So down goes the astronomical clock tower. Nobody's repairing the Barbican with the sun right now. We see Nomad Mac trying to push this. Now, is Nomad Mac going to be going and aging up himself? It doesn't look like it. It looks like he's rather aggressive on this push here. Still picking off more Palace Guard, looking at the Chinese reserves. China is very, very tight on resources. They're basically spending everything they possibly can here. But the double nest of bees probably will salvage this and help them survive. But yeah, that's two landmarks down, ladies and gentlemen. This is very, very tight. So looking at Delhi up here, Delhi has just all sorts of stuff on the top of the map. Smeagol setting up another outpost up here. So Smeagol is literally going to have a, a landmark in every single corner of the map. Dude, that is, except the north. That's so annoying to play against. <laughs> it's probably going to be, it's, it's going to be like a Berkshire Palace down here too. Just like super hard to deal with. Look at this, we get a white tower rush. Wow, if that gets up, that's going to be brutal. It looks like the Chinese are trying to push this back. Double nest of bees. They need to get onto the villagers. The nest of bees need to move up and just get right on top of that big blob of villagers because if they finish this white tower, that could be sealing doom. Villagers going to be microing back and then moving back on. He needs to individually like fan them out in a circle, but is this white tower rush going to work? One ram is going for the TC. Villagers take a big shot right here, and I do not know if the white tower is going to finish, guys. That was a very, very aggressive play, but with the two Nesta Bees here, uh, he's probably going to pay the troll toll and have to pull back. Oh my god, yeah, he pulls it back, he starts setting up more archery ranges. Does he have enough to rebuild that? So Nomad Mac does. Uh, I would wager he's going to build the White Tower like a little bit further back in his base, but he needs to get that Castle Age quick. Because he could still be overwhelmed by the Chinese as well. Right? We could see all these uh, these Clock Tower Nesta Bees just really start to move up with that Palace Guard spam. I don't know why he's not building uh, his next landmark. Okay, it looks like a little bit of a scrap here. We do see the Imam. And he comes and steals the landmark right from under the nose of the English. Dark Hunter Ezra is looking to be a big threat too. He is just stonewalling his part of the map. He is probably going to be able to secure trade soon. And Ezra kind of has this whole portion to himself. But, you know, the rats are in the walls, guys. Isn't that, is that Edgar Allan Poe with the rats in the walls? Or is that is that H.P. Lovecraft? I always, I always get them, that confused. No, because Edgar Allan Poe has... Edgar Allan Poe, I think, has, like, something else in the walls. And I think H.P. Lovecraft has the... No, H.P. Lovecraft does the rats in the walls. Yeah, that's... He's 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 that guy. I could be backwards, but some of you guys in chat will have to let me know. My wife isn't here, so... Okay, very unfortunate for Nomad Mac, guys. He's getting rushed by Dark Hunter Ezra. So Ezra coming in with a combination of Sofa and Warrior Scouts. And uh, this could be sealing the end here for Nomad Mac. He didn't get the White Tower up quick enough. And at the end of the day... He might have to just go full goblin mode, and uh, he's going to have to run and try and set up somewhere else. I would probably grab all these villagers right here and just straight up build the white tower right there and try and survive because he could die right now. China's coming in. Ezra just out of nowhere with the steel chair. Yeah, it's different. Thank you, guys. I think we got it. Rats in the walls was left guard. That's what I thought. Yeah, the telltale heart. Yeah, we're, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. So book is imperial age, guys. This Roost player, who the one who pushed back Smeagol. Dude, look, he's coming for Smeagol. He got through. So some of the Roost Knights have gotten through. He did build the Trebuchet. And he's going to be trying to uproot the Skaven infestation in his backfield here. And he does discover some Delhi workers as well. Look at Delhi setting up on the, the Great Empire here. They have their keeps and uh, just, oh my god. This is, <laughs> this is so ridiculous. This is so ridiculous, man. On the south side, we do see a keep coming up. But that is a Malian keep. And overall, it looks like the English are not going to be enjoying their English breakfast for much longer. No more... Angers and mash and uh, we do see the old palace guard coming in and yeah the chinese are probably stoked he's probably like oh this is great like what a what a divine intervention we've received 
Killing the market here, you might want to leave that, um, if you could. Leaving that market could be quite strong. And looking at the age up here, Mac could still go Castle Age. I don't know what he's doing with his villagers. He's running, but they're being hunted down, so I don't think he's going to be able to get away. Usually if you want to Smeagol it, you know, and be a gremlin, you got to plan ahead a little bit. But um, in this case, it looks like he was just all in on killing the Chinese. He failed, just barely, mind you, and then was uh, attacked here by the, the dreaded Sofa of uh, Dark Hunter Ezra. GG, man. GG for him. I don't see any comeback. China's coming in to finish the job. We got one, two, and he is still in the second age. So Nomad Mac, maybe going to be fleeing with his villagers and trying to build the White Tower somewhere. Yeah, it's down here. There's a hell of a lot of Palace Guard down there, and they're going to be chopping through these villagers like butter. Yep, looks like Sofa collapsing from the other side as well. Up on the top side, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like Gravity finally claiming revenge. So obviously it was a pretty one-sided fight, so that's partially why I didn't focus on it. It's just because it was just Gravity basically sieging and pushing. I don't think Yellow even had a standing army. So we are going to be seeing Ventus uh, dying here. He does manage to get some Lancers out, but the English men-at-arms and those kind of numbers will be able to probably drag them down. And uh, yeah, so multiple players are getting karate chopped here, guys. We do see the end of the road for Ventus. We also see the English Nomad Mac going down. Nomad Mac getting 2v1 super hard. I think in a 1v1, Nomad Mac would have been fine against the Chinese. Um, but yeah, he would have gotten Castle and it would have been a, a perpetual fight. It would have kept Royal Rumbling here, but... Now it is time for the Council Hall to go down, and uh, the dreaded Malians, man, looking very, very scary. Now what are the Rus up to? The Rus have discovered the Under Empire, but you can see Smeagol is going to have constant walls on the back side of the map, so he's not going to be easy to take down. He's got his little rat sense back here with some uh, spearmen and archers. It's going to suck for him when gold runs out, but if he can get to Imperial Age, which it looks like he has with Wingard Palace, he can uh, then get gold from his farms. So if anybody can survive on like the rat's nest of a map, it's going to be the English, 100%. So, uh, a salute to those who have fallen. Good night to uh, Nomad Mac. And now it looks like the Sofa Legion. You know, the Chinese thought they had allies. You know, it was, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like in, in, in 40K, one of the more common situations is, is you'll have like some, or not common situations, but something you'll often see is like the Chaos Space Marines will show up and kill some Tyranids or Eldar and like the Imperial Guardsmen will like think that they're allies. And then they just roll up on you like this. And uh, basically that's that. Nomad, yeah, yeah, you got 2v1 pretty hard, brother. You kind of got caught in a sandwich here. But if it makes you feel any better, Ezra was just on the warpath. He wasn't, like, trying to 2v1 you. It looks as if he's just sweeping that direction and trying to take all the foes out. While well, Uravity in the north um, has finished off the Chinese player. Not yet. Okay, so there still is the TC. Pretty much going to be the last Bastion. And the power dynamics of this uh, map are starting to show. They're starting to show. We're going to be seeing who the survivors are. And once we know who's left here after the next couple minutes of fighting, I will do a poll and you guys can vote on who you think is going to live. A Desperation Keep, it might save the day if it comes up. China does build really quickly, but it looks like Dark Hunter Ezra is going to be all over that. He's got all of his sofa, and he's making those Chinese villagers sit on the sofa, that's for sure. Oh, it's very, very close, but the economic damage that China is taking would pretty much guarantee their death. They do get the keep up, which is nice, but it's not going to be enough. There's there's just far too much eco damage. Pretty much all the, um, all the economy is idled here. These are Dark Age Spearmen being made. They're not even upgraded, so the Dark Age Spearmen are going to be just absolute trash here. They do eh, plus 17 damage still, so not insignificant, but... Not going to be enough. Landmark's going down. Um, China still does have its TC. It's got its Imperial Academy. And Ezra does have a lot of idle units over here that he could send into combat. Uravity coming for the killing blow here. And look at that. As soon as Uravity kills the Chinese neighbor, he sets up a million farms in their base. The Bad Manor Farms. It's not actually Bad Manor. But, you know, the, the farm flex. The Rams heading up to the north. Looks like uh, Ventus is such a scrapper, man. Look at Ventus holding on to the bitter end here. He's like torching rams just uh, just until the last moments of his life as we do see the Wingard Palace coming out. Wingard's pretty cool. You can make some badass units. Very, very fun stuff. And it looks like he's making the Wingard Army, which is a combination of different units here. So it comes with trebuchets. What's not to love? So are the Roos going and trying to uproot Smeagol? They are. Not going to be easy. But I mean, Smeagol could die here. Although, does he have a landmark on the far side? No, they're all down here, actually. So yeah, if, if Smeagol continues getting hunted by the Roos and the Roos are able to break through this and run down the side of the map, nah, but no, Smeagol's got a lot of spearmen. He'll be able to fight off a cavalry-based army. The rats are in the walls, man. The rats are indeed in the walls. Nobody's trading yet. Nobody's trying to get that center trade. Nobody's being super greedy here. Landmark's being slow, slowly taken down. Um, the Chinese eco is just being absolutely punished. It looks like he was trying to lumber back into the tree line here, but the Sofa and Warrior Scout Legion is going to be able to take those bad boys down. So, uh, yeah, man, what a great match. It's been a wild FFA game so far. I just want to thank you guys all for joining tonight. Shout out to our uh, host, Lado the Duke, for uh, putting this together. So, uh, yeah, man, good times, good times. Villagers are down for the count. China currently sitting on 39 eco. 
It's pretty bleak, and uh, yep, that landmark does fall. The Imperial Academy is here. A couple Chinese villagers coming out to try and repair. And you know, this is good. What what Cole is doing is very smart. Like, even if you're losing and getting wrecked horribly in FFA, it's generally always worth it to fight for as long as you can, because you never know. Somebody could attack Ezra, and suddenly the pressure is gone, and you're still alive, and you can have a chance of coming back. I've seen people get completely crushed and come back from games. You know, it's uh, it's it's pretty crazy. So, did Smeagol lose another landmark? He did! How did he lose this? What the hell killed this thing? Is it the Roost Cavalry? It looks like the Roost were able to find a way up and take that landmark down, but they didn't opt to check the rest of the map here. They could have gone down this way and rode all the way down the side of the map, but Smeagol does have his veteran spearmen, and um, let's look at his eco. He's got 90 eco. He's English, so he doesn't really need to farm gold, but he, he's still going to be behind. You know, obviously England can get free gold, but it's not like enough to replace like a full... If everybody else is mining, you're going to be hurting a little bit. Dude, look at the Delhi shop. Holy shit. Delhi's got this unholy mountain empire here. Look at this. They got keeps saturated everywhere. Keeps, of course, can produce villagers for the Delhi Sultanate, which is pretty cool. And man, look at that. That is that is some seriously crazy shit. So the middle empire's still around. It looks like two have fallen. And I, I don't know if YouTube can do a poll for this many people. So we'll, we'll wait till it's down to four players and then we'll do a poll for you guys so you can vote on who you think is going to be winning. But um, yeah, 100% the Chinese player here is going to die. Rams have been brought in by Dark Hunter Ezra. It looks like the villagers moving back into the old keep, and we do get some spearmen coming out. Spearmen are finally Castle Age, and more Chinese villagers coming up for the repair. And uh, does China have any eco left? Not really at all. Keith, thank you for the 20 bucks. Really appreciate it, Keith. Hope you're doing well, my friends, and enjoying this glorious, glorious Age of Empires. And tomorrow, we're going to have another stream as well. We're going to have some seriously fun times. Jaren says, I'm rooting for Crawford now. Yeah, I mean, Crawford, if he won with like a weird deli, like corner wonder, like up here. That would be some bonkers stuff, man. That would be really crazy. Uravity is going to be a, an unholy tyrant soon. Like, England is hands down one of the strongest civs in the game in FFA, just because of the infinite gold. And you also have probably our highest ranked, like, 1v1 player. Um, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think what Uravity has attained. I, I, I don't know if he ended up Conqueror 1 or 2, but still, he's a Conqueror level player um, playing on a very strong civ, right? Like, and he's got, like, Roos are not that strong in FFA. They're not. Um, straight up. They're, they can certainly have, they have some gimmicks, like, you know, putting some hunting cabins, like, in the woods here would be very strong. But overall, Roost cannot hold the candle to the English in, a, in an FFA situation, in my opinion. England literally gets, like, the, just crazy, crazy amounts of gold, and the Roost get, like, their haggard hunting cabins. But, you know, they try. So, Smeagol's getting hunted once again. It looks like the Roost are coming through the woods. They don't want any of this. Smeagol does have his legion down here, setting up some outposts. And uh, this would be pretty epic, like, this bowling alley fight here, where the knights charge down and the English spears are kind of waiting for him. Yeah, Ezra is certainly painting the map. He is doing a good job of it. The Chinese have fallen. So how many players do we have left? We have Smeagol. We have Uravity. We have Dark Hunter, Ezra, Book, and Crawford. Oh, my God. And good. who wants to deal with this shit? Who wants to get up here and try and take this down? Like, are these Sultan Elephants? No, they're just Tower War Elephants. But that's just a nightmare to try and get over there, man. So the Rus have swept this, but they've discovered the wall. Uh, it looks like they're going to bring their trebuchets in. I think he wants in, but the Rus army would actually lose to the English army here. And is Smeagol going to emerge? It's like Sauron being banished and then just re-emerging from Mordor and just like being ready to kind of steamroll. But yeah, he needs to he needs to get out of his rat's nest and claim some of these resources on the map. And he doesn't have access to trade either. Somebody eventually is going to get that trade. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the Malians try and set up some trade right now. It looks like they are. They set up toll posts. Um, we do have the Fortress of the Hunt, which is obviously a decent landmark. It's, it's just a fortress. It's it, The ability it provides is kind of crappy, but... Um, the Griot Barra is probably the better landmark, but yeah, if you're just looking to be harder to snipe, I understand the Fortress of the Hunt. So Ezra clearing out the old base here, just attacking, torching the farms, maybe looking to uh, just kind of clear some ground. Some, some people like to do that just to have a little bit of a zen landscape so they don't have to, you know, work through the ruins of an enemy base or they can build there freely if they so choose. And uh, yeah, England just chilling, man. Smeagol's probably just watching Netflix right now. Looks like he's trying to lumberjack his way through. So Smeagol's trying to re-emerge like Palpatine and just uh, and just start zapping all these guys. Markets being set up by the Malians. A hell of a lot of markets. And where are they going to be trading? Um, is there a neutral something or other? Did I miss a neutral market here? Yep. So he is doing the, uh, the trade. Yeah, he's going to go here and then trade back here. Wow. That's going to be so strong. The fact that the Chinese have, a, uh, have this is just nuts. Absolutely nuts. So Delhi is um, also in the walls. Ezra has like two gremlins like appearing near him. Ezra is going to be setting up archery ranges, taking a look at Ezra's vision. Is he aware? Okay. Ezra knows. He must know. Ezra is a very aware player. 
And you can see the Delhi villagers, and he, he even built a wall here, but I think Ezra's going to be preparing to try and uproot the Delhi, which is not going to be an easy fight. Okay, he knows. Ezra's here with his sofa, guys. The, the Delhi, the, the elephants in the wall, getting ready to battle the mass horses. We will see. They're going to need more than just sofa, though. They're going to need Muso Fatty. They're going to need Donso. Donso would be really good here also. Um, so yeah, you're going to need some more of that. Smeagol's almost out of the bushes, and uh, the Roos, in the meantime, they're just setting up little outpost towers to try and keep Smeagol from getting too crazy. And now the Roos player is going to be unleashing his full strength. So he's going to be setting up hunting cabins all over the map. And uh, yeah, hunting cabins are coming up. I was wondering when the hunting cabins would come, but they're, they're pretty close together, so he might not be uh, getting the proper angle there. Man, this, this game, this is anyone's game. There's so many people who are just so powerful right now. But yeah, I, I would definitely favor the English over Roos any day of the week in like a straight up fight, especially since it's your avity on the Roos, or excuse me, on the English. Um, and yeah, this this is going to happen here. Delhi dug too greedily and too deeply and unleashed Ezra. I know. Ezra also just prepared some really, really good, uh, you know, production for this. Well, I think some of his army is still down here. He's going to have to relocate that army. It looks like his trade will be coming online relatively soon. Smeagol has emerged and uh, the gremlin is out of the trees. And so now he's going to be setting up and, you know, he's he's a contender. Smeagol is 100% a contender. Ezra is probably just like pound for pound the strongest at the moment, but Ezra could get 2v1 here. If Uravity puts his full weight of his English firepower into Ezra and the Delhi also fl uh, flank from the bushes, then we're going to be we're going to be in a very wild situation here. So trying to set up a... Wait a second. Wait a second. Is he giving a market to Delhi to ally against the English? There's got to be some crazy politics going on right now. By the way, uh, if any of you guys stayed in the game after you died, if you could be our political correspondent, that would be great. Guys, he is giving Delhi a market to trade. He must have some alliance to backstab your avity. Oh my God, I think he does. Wow, this is, this is wild. So Ezra pulling some big political machinations. That's very risky giving Delhi gold though, especially when they're right at your gates. I think that... He's giving Delhi gold because he knows he's going to be dragged into a war with Uravity in the north. And he wants Delhi to not attack him. What are you doing? What are those rams doing? Oh my god, I thought the rams were going to go for it. He's giving him a market, dude. He's giving him a market. And traders are on the way. Look at that. Immediately, like, 500 traders are queued up. That is a great trade route for Crawford. Okay, guys. This is, this is some serious politicking here. It is. Oh, wait. Did he delete the market? <laughs> Oh, was that a bad manner delete or did he accidentally destroy it? Holy shit. I think he deleted the market. That might have uh that might have been that might have been a bad manner or he might have accidentally d destroyed it. I didn't see. I think Ezra might have deleted the market just to tr just to troll the Delhi player in the woods. I thought there would be some like, yeah, look, he's setting up more walls now. He's like, yeah, or no, Delhi's setting up walls. <laughs> Oh my god, it was Ezra telling him to leave it alone in exchange for a market, as Crawford said he had no gold. Well, what's go what, Nomad, what, what's going on with this, though? We need to know. So your avidity's coming for blood, and Ezra's gonna have to fight this. Nobody wants to be dragged into a war of attrition against the English. It's the worst. It's literally the worst thing in the game. What is this giant haggard wall going down here for Smeagol? Oh my god, what is he doing? So he's got markets, and he's trading here. <laughs> Smeagol's trying to get that sweet trade going. I think Cannon Towers killed it. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Nonetheless, the Sofa going to be piling into fight. Sofa will definitely run down the Men at Arms relatively well. Men at Arms typically struggle against Elite Cavalry. And uh, the Crossbows, though, will be pretty good. Sofa, I believe, are considered heavy. One of the few heavy things on the Malian roster. And uh, the Crossbows probably will be able to do some work against him. But your Avidy looks like he's he's out for blood. He's coming to, he's coming to trade. He does have this Roost player to his south as well. I wonder if there's any political machinations. The market was destroyed by uh, Delhi Cannon Towers. Yeah, that's what I thought. But we'll see. Maybe maybe Ezra will place another market. We'll have to see if that's going to happen. In the middle, the Roos look to be trying to secure some trade. So the Roos come in. They uh, push out some of the uh, towers and emplacements. And uh, I would wager they, they are going to want to trade. So Vaskaya is hidden in the back of the base. So the Roos can now build uh, stone towers. Or stone walls, excuse me. So we see that and some towers. But yeah, Ezra does not want any of this, man. And he's building Donso against archers? Oh, I guess they're crossbows. So crossbows aren't going to get any bonus against him. Yeah, this is this is getting real crazy. I mean, I strangely enough, like I almost feel as if one of these gremlins in the edge of the map is going to find a way to win. Smeagol does not really have a good bank, though, of stone. Um, the Delhi does not have a good bank either. 
So though they both are safe, they don't have any resources, right? Like all the resources are on the center of the map, like all those gold, all that. So sitting as like a little goblin on the outside is not going to get it for you. So these are just veteran Donso. He's sending in veteran quality units to fight Imperial units of the English. English should be able to win this pretty easily if they just turn and fight. Like a single Manganel shot is just going to blast this army. And is Ezra upgrading those units right now? He's not. He's getting emplacements. Um, Ezra looks pretty rich though. What is Ezra up to? Where's the rest of his army? What is he doing? Well, the Rus take control of the middle of the map. A little bit of deep sea fishing still going down from the Fallen Empires. The Musa of Hadi Gunners able to put a lot of herd in, but they're going to get wrecked pretty hardcore by these Mangonels. So the Mangonels just brutal, brutal damage. And obviously they're going to be smashing these uh, these squishy gunner units. And obviously English Longbows trade super well into uh, Musa of Hadi and those type of units. So something to consider, ladies and gentlemen. Elite Knights bumping and grinding, taking what they can down in the middle. Smeagol still alive. Two of his landmarks are toast, though. So if Smeagol, if Smeagol got rushed here, he could die pretty easily. Although I'm, this like whole wall network he's doing is just, is just so absurd. Is and he's got the wall. I think is he trying to like guide his units? Huh. Interesting. Well, now we see warrior scouts being gathered. Dark Hunter Ezra are going to start making good quality armies. I would imagine, yeah, Sofa and Musa Fatty is, is a good army composition here. Very gold intensive, and it looks like Ezra is not mining gold at the moment. He's got this big gold pit that's full. I mean, he's getting passive gold from his six relics, but overall, he's not mining gold, and like, Uravity is just going to keep pedal to the metal, man. He is uh, going to be bringing outposts, getting those attack speed buffs, and could we see Ezra in danger here? Warrior scouts do get a bonus for his ranged. And also a bonus for Siege, so not bad against his composition, which is mostly ranged and mostly sieged. I do like that. So Ezra's going to be diving in, trying to snipe the artillery if he can. Gravity's saying if you kill me extra, uh, Ezra gets cross-map trade. Okay. And Nomad also saying, Gravity's saying I could build you a market for an alliance with Crawford. Okay. So Gravity's trying to make some alliances now with Crawford. And uh, maybe he will. Maybe he will. I don't know. The Elephant Legion looks to be coming, guys. Could Dumbo come for blood? It kind of looks as if there's going to be uh, some scariness here. We get battering ramps, we get mass elephants. If Ezra were to get backstabbed by the Elephant Legion, oh, I love this. It kind of reminds me of playing Company of Heroes 3 a little bit when you like set up entrenchments for your troops, and it looks like that's going to be getting set up right here. But yeah, I think England just wins this grind eventually, right? Like, Dark Hunter Ezra's down to 3,000 gold. Uh, he's making Muso Fatty Warriors, which they're okay. They, they have decent damage, but generally they're designed against heavy, which uh, there's not a whole lot of that in this English army. Oh, there's some men at arms coming in, so I suppose it's pertinent. Ezra being pushed back by the uh, the by the Smeagol as well. So Smeagol's hitting him from the other side. Ezra is really in a lot of danger right now. I feel as if Ezra is a good enough player to fight off gravity for a while, but England will always win these grinds because you'll just run out of gold and England won't. So that's the problem. Uh, gravity's sitting on a pretty low gold bank, but again, he doesn't need to worry too much. He can keep producing. Delhi looking like they're going to be coming and uh, making their opponent eat some Delhi meat here, guys. We got battering rams and uh, gatehouses coming up. We got a shit ton of elephants, and this would just be the ultimate backstab on Ezra. Granted, uh, Ezra did offer him a market, and he 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 you know it, it depends on how that market situation went down. Like if Ezra bad manner bad bad manner deleted the market after trying to make a deal, I can understand Delhi wanting blood, but otherwise uh, it's a, it's a tricky situation. Yeah, Delhi wants those six relics, and they can see them too. They're literally right at the gates. All right, guys. The Dumbo Legion is coming. Smeagol has officially pushed back Ezra's forces here. And Ezra is going to be setting up a wall to kind of protect uh, further aggression from Smeagol as the forces of Dark Hunter Ezra continue to fight against Uravity's army. But Uravity's army does have the siege advantage, a pretty heavy one. Six Mangonels is going to be crushing armies on stop. If you don't have anything to get back there, whether it be mass cavalry dive or spring elves of your own, they are just going to be absolutely buttering some bread. And look at this. Oh, Delhi coming for the relics. I love it. Now, where are the scholars at? Do we have any scholars here? They need to get the scholars. He needs to go get those relics. He needs to get those relics, dude. I would imagine that uh, Crawford's going to be on top of that. The Delhi fonts have emerged. And Ezra, you know, being taken down by the gremlins in the walls. And yeah, obviously his elite warrior scout army does get a bonus for his range, which is a lot of these elephants, actually. It looks like a couple of bombards coming in. Ezra, of course, very aware that the bombards are a pretty substantial threat and also are expensive, so he's going to be diving those. But the elephants are no mere elephants. He's got Sultan's Tower elephants, the ones with the hand cannon ears on top. And where are his scholars? Oh my god, guys. Look who's coming. Look who's coming from the hills. We have the Delhi scholars coming to grab those relics. A couple of the elephants do go down here. Oh my god. This is a god tier Wololo, potentially. He gets the Wololo, and the elephants are kind of trapped. 
Oh my god, he's gonna get all those elephants. Oh, but he sniped the scholar. He sniped the imam right before it got the Wololo -lo off. That would have been a god tier Wololo. -lo -lo. So Ram's on the way in. Your Avity is getting heavy pushing now. Because obviously uh, Ezra had to move over here to deal with this. Ezra has got to... Um, He's got to try and get some diplomacy going with some people and just, like, try and find a way to get mercy from at least one of them. Because Ezra is going to be out of gold now, straight up. He still has 4,000, I guess, which is pretty good. But all his relics are out of buildings now. Delhi coming with more rams and also spamming out elite horsemen. So they're going to be coming for those goodies. They're going to be coming for them. And um, as soon as Ezra moves north to fight the English, uh, the Delhi could come in and just jack these relics, which I think they should. So Scholar's on the way in, and now we do see the English of uh, Smeagol hanging out and the Roos up in the north. Look at this. The Roos getting big trade on the top, it looks like. 152 a pop. Okay, the Roos are going to be a contender with that kind of trade. Yeah, the Roos got the center trade, guys. They got the center trade. Look at that. One Scholar gets away. Another one with the relics. The Warrior Scouts are hunting, but these guys... Oh, the defensive Wololo. I love it. And he protects his homies as they escape with two relics. So Delhi gets two relics out of that, which is a, a pretty sweet deal. I would imagine they're going to go bank those up now. And dude, when you're a gremlin in the wall, you got to do whatever you can. You got to do whatever you can. Ezra is asking Chris for uh, and book for aid. All right. So he, Gondor calls for aid. Looking at the sacred site. This is a King of the Hill style map, guys. So there's only one sacred site here, which I love. I actually really like this map. I think it's really funny. It makes for a really cool situation with like the sacreds and uh, trade as well as like the mid the outside of the map it's really quite quite hilarious so big fight here Delhi going in and attacking dark hunter ezra being piled on by gravity as well as uh, the Delhi sultanate and crawford oh man I, i'm pretty impressed by this hold i mean ezra is getting hit pretty hard by two players and he's he's holding it like a champ but now he's getting ram sign pretty hard the rams are quite annoying but the Warrior Scouts will get a bonus for a Siege, so they will take down uh, Battering Rams very quickly. And now Ezra has to fight off Yravity. Yravity's English forces just kind of purging through, and Ezra is really, really starting to run out of real estate. I think the Roos are completely chill here. The Roos are just kind of like, let them fight, you know, in Godzilla. Remember that scene? It's kind of just like that. Just let the, let the big guys knock each other out, and then we'll just kind of, you know, come back later in the game as needed. The Roos coming to hunt down Smeagol, it looks like. So the Roos moving in with some horsemen and some trebuchet. Smeagol going to be losing a couple villagers here, but nothing that really matters. As uh, the English preparing to uh, defend their new frontiers. They do have towers set up, and they have this little kind of gate with which they can bring reinforcements out. Is Smeagol trading? He is. Wow, 216 to pop. Oh my god. So Smeagol is trading up through here into the fallen base. Guys, Smeagol's getting 216 trade to pop. He's, he's back in the game. He's officially back in the game. If he can maintain that trade and not die to the Roost player here, then he is good. Oh man, that neutral market. If the neutral market goes down, that's going to feel so bad. So the Roost Knights move up, and it uh, looks like they will be engaging, but the English should be able to kind of fend them off with the hand cannoneers, but the rest of the Roost army comes in, and they ne he needs to kill this trade post. If he kills this trade post, it's going to be sending Smeagol back to the Shadow Age. Yeah, we'll see. Back to the Shadow Age? Back to the Dark Age? Shadow Age, Shadow Realm, getting things confused. I haven't had dinner yet, I'm pretty hungry, so we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. No, I'm good, darling. Thank you. The wife coming in the clutch there. Now, more trade for Spiegel, still just flowing like the salmon of Capistrano. As the elite knights continue to get a big surround and grind down this English army, England going to be mustering out reinforcements. But will the market be taken down? Will it be taken down? It definitely should. He's going to see the traders now. He's going to see the traders. Book is going to see this. And that is going to be a big, big warning sign. And immediately you see some Roost Knights pulling back. And they're going to be torching the market. He saw that. Oh, clever girl. Look at that. He gets it. And now Smeagol's gravy train is going to be cut down. So Smeagol is no longer going to have that big gravy train. Gravity still pushing. Dark Hunter Ezra fighting like an absolute champion. He rebuilds a stone wall against Delhi. Delhi, of course, is very gold starved. So they're going to have problems breaking it down. And uh, yeah, man. I am very impressed with this. He definitely needs to get his uh, his relics back online if he can. Hey, Gunhound! You've been a member for nine months, dude. Thanks to Dan Yori for this map. Later to uh, Duke for the tournament and turn for the stream. Everyone make sure to drop a like now. Off to bed. Hey, get some rest, man. Hope you're uh, having a good time on your vacation, brother. Appreciate you and uh, we eagerly await your return, my friend. Up on the top side, the battle continues on. We see a lot of the Muso Fatty Gunners fighting shoulder to shoulder with the Spearmen. And this is a heavy, heavy war of attrition, but somehow, somehow Ezra has returned. Ezra's kind of pushing the English back a little bit. What the hell? gravity has got a good bank too. So maybe Yravity just kind of took his pedal off the metal once he realized that um, he wasn't getting help from the deli anymore. Smeagol's trade is gone though, and it looks like Book is coming for the kill. Yeah, the Roos are pouring in units. We see forward infrastructure being set up by the Roos. 
That is really, really money. And um, now Smeagol's going to be in a fight for his life. Because if Smeagol loses this, he's going to potentially be getting pushed back to his last couple landmarks and just getting killed. Because up here, um, he's not going to get this landmark back. This Roost player is very, very keen on his tactics and is uh, is setting up outposts to make sure he doesn't get repairs on his old landmarks. Smeagol pushing him back a little bit. A lot of brave English spearmen with the network of Citadel. So their attack speed is going to be increased here by... Uh, oh, it's only castles by 15%. So they're going to be uh, getting those faster spear attacks. And Dark Hunter Ezra surviving. He survives. And we see Uravity coming out with a, a pretty big Dread Legion once again. Uh, looking at landmarks, um, we see the, the main town center is a little bit beat up. We see the Fulani Corral is in good shape. And I think for the most part, he's okay. Setting up another wall here. Obviously going to have to figure out his trade situation. Delhi coming back for round two, man. And, you know, for Delhi, this makes a lot of sense. Like, if you can get these relics with Delhi, you suddenly have a game plan, right? Okay, relics are being taken back into the base. So Delhi doesn't have too much time to grab these relics. And look at the rams! Look at the rams! Will your avidy follow up and help here? Because obviously this Delhi army is going to get overwhelmed. Um, the siege equipment and the mangonels alone will counter these archers. And then the elephants, eh, they'll just be dragged down. But the rams are going landmark hunting, dude. They're going straight for the landmarks! Straight for the landmarks. And it looks like the English are actually pushing back the, uh, the roost, which, no surprise. Late game English is exponentially better than the Roost. You're going to be getting attack speed upgrades in all your units. And your men at arms are better. You have better archers. I mean, yeah, the Roost. The only advantage Roost would have late game would be Streltsy. Um, but even still, Streltsy kind of get wrecked by Longbow. So. so the battle is on. England grinding. Really, really nice dive by Spiegel. He's got a couple of his knights back here and is uh, taking down the siege equipment of the Roost. Book. Book was like... I, I feel like Book was like... Uh, you know, trying to hunt some predator while it was weak and then it grew strong and has come back, you know. Like the alien escaped when it was in its like early form and then it came back and it has like grown stronger. Like the xenomorph is at its final form. As Smeagol is now pushing out and causing serious havoc. So Landmark goes down here and the Delhi are once again pushed back to the shadows. You know, they did do a little bit of damage though. The Grand Fulani Corral got beat up as well. Somebody in chat saying, I bet Red is so salty. It could be. I, I would be I would be a little bit bummed out if I were in Red, Red's position. But especially, like, because this Delhi player is so hard to kill because he's just, like, such a gremlin here. And you couldn't even kill him without getting to his main base over here and killing that last line mark. But I'm very impressed with, with Ezra's hold. I mean, he's doing a great job. And somehow Ezra is just accumulating even more gold, which is super impressive. Smeagol, I think, is going to be in Mortal Kombat with the Roos here. Yeah, it looks like it is. Smeagol's got his uh, trebuchets. Hitting the Roost infrastructure. The Roost are setting up uh, Bombards as well as Mangonels. And it looks to be Streltsy now. Streltsy can do it, man. They are pretty darn good. But again, weak against range focus fire from Longbows. Grand Fulani Corral going down. It looks like you're Avity going for a little bit of landmark sniping. Trying to head these off. Um, but there still would be the Fortress of the Hunt back here. And obviously Ezra is pretty privy to this. And is going to be setting up uh, walls around it to make it hard to finish him off. We also have the Court Arch Architects coming out to give them a little bit of durability. But... Once again, Ezra is able to hold. We do see the Muso Fadi and the Warrior Scouts holding it down. And uh, your Avity, you know, classic English player, round 10, fight. Bringing out wave after wave of his, uh, you know, units trying to starve his opponent out. But your Avity's gold is uh, starting to get a decent surplus as well from all of his farm infrastructure. But your Avity's basically classic English. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this, guys. We see the Delhi moving through. Could, could there be a reverse sweep where the Delhi then backstabs the English? That would be hilarious. I actually don't think Uravity could endure the backstab if Ezra was hitting him from the front in the same way that um, Ezra has been. Ezra seems to have a pretty good macro uh, layout here and just has a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of gold in the bank. And Delhi coming in for round five, man. Round five. Yeah, that's, that's some impressive stuff. Big Roost Farms. Roost just farming away. Smeagol in the meantime. I wonder how this fight's going. Is he still attacking? Um, looking around. Okay, Smeagol's kind of chilling out now. I think him and the Roost have kind of had a, a little bit of a... A peaceful alliance that has been formed. Now, a wonder up here would be crazy good. With, like, all these layers of walls, you know how long it's going to take to get through all those? My god, that'd be super obnoxious. So Ezra pulling back as he's going to be getting pushed here by the Mangonels. And uh, what else is it going to be here? Yep, mainly just Mangonels. On the center, nobody's going for Sacred. Who has control over the center? The Roost do have center control, which is really big. Um, not only are the Roost getting just super sweet trade of 152 a pop, but... If it becomes a very tight game, the Roos have the opportunity to play the uh, Sacred Site, and they can just kind of cackle on that. And also, you could even upgrade Roos Navy and get a bunch of these ships and just, like, yeah, actually get some decent defensive capabilities out of that. Although, I guess, like, Springalds and, uh, you know, Culverins and things like that could maybe take those boats down. So, 
Something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. The fight continues here. The English trying to starve out the uh, forces of Dark Hunter Ezra. Ezra getting attacked. Elephants trying to work their way through the wall. It's only one elephant, handful of spearmen and archers. So very low quality army, but yeah, you know, your avidity, your avidity is not going to be uh, playing nice here. Trying to set up forward infrastructure. Really, really wants to finish this. But Ezra just perpetually pushing him back. Look at this. Ezra just matching him, dude. The power, the power duel of fates. I'm pretty sure um, Ezra is also a conqueror level player. So, um, so yeah, these guys are basically just having a super sweaty 1v1, which honestly, if there's no interference, it kind of looks like uh, Ezra might have the edge. I mean, he's just producing so many units, but being backstabbed by Delhi again is going to be a tricky one for sure. Like Delhi just constantly coming in with their elephants here. Granted, the Delhi army does get steamrolled pretty quickly every time it tries to come out. Um, Fulani Corral still producing a little bit of food. Looks like some of these Musa Fatty gunners going to be going and taking out the villagers up here to try and deny uh, the forward infrastructure here for gravity. And some of them do get forced back, and Ezra once again just holding very, very well against this uh, onslaught. On the bottom side, it looks like Duel of Fates as the Roost do come down from the north. The ancient blood feud is reignited once more between these two players. And uh, will Smeagol be able to hold this? Smeagol does have all of his traders sitting here. He's got a lot of knights coming through. Does he have a king riding with them? I don't know if he has a king. He's got elite knights, and he's got more elite knights. Okay. I don't know if we saw a king there. Is this a king? This might be a king. Do they have the aura? No, that's not work of castles. Brutal engagement for Smeagol. Smeagol gets back there and just crushes like four bombard cannons, all this artillery, and that really is going to be setting setting the roost back because their army quality was actually rather poor, but Smeagol seems to be getting the better engagements hardcore. Yeah, you can see it. Smeagol moving up, going to be using his battle traders, and that dive with the knights was super clutch. Mainly horsemen. We do have some roost knights coming out. Roost knights are pretty superior to the English knights. They do more damage um, and, you know, have more HP. But the English Knights do have the advantage of having a 15% attack speed buff. So, you know, that can kind of equalize the duel between those units if the network of castles is indeed upgraded. So, how's it looking for everybody here? Is Ezra still trading? I don't think so. It looks like uh, he's mainly just continuing this fight here. We got Rams being spammed out by the English. English obviously have a huge wood economy. And uh, look at this. Oh, my God. Look at this, guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's something. Yeah, I mean, Delhi can't can't really muster much because they don't have any gold, guys. They're just, and like, they're just, they probably don't have wood either. I mean, they have a little bit of wood action going here, but once that's gone, they're not going to have too many of their primary resources. That's the problem with being a corner rat is you can run out of resources. But um, Smeagol has managed to escape his little corner rat situation. So now he has plenty of lumber that he can work with here. Looks like the Roost with sheer brute force able to push him back using the uh, attrition tactics. They do push the English back here, and the English going to be falling back to their little nest in the corner. Uh, still not seeing landmarks being repaired for Smeagol. He does have some farmers nearby who maybe could make their way up there, but they'd have to get past his tower's vision, which would probably warrant a response. Now the battle is on as Dark Hunter Ezra continues to fight and does uh, making good momentum against the English. Unfortunately, Ezra does not have any rams of his own. If he had some rams, he might be able to actually uh, push back this infrastructure. But yeah, I honestly think that Ezra might actually be able to win this 1v1 if it just were to go on indefinitely. Um, he is getting so much gold from his pit mines. And also, I think he still has four relics. Um, I see two here and two here. So he still does have four relics, which is a pretty good count. The Delhi only managed to kind of take two of those. Now, looking on the back, do we see any trade going down? What is this? Where are these rams going? Are they going to kill Smeagol's stuff? What are these rams doing? Smeagol lost his trade. So there's no trade for the Smeagol. Here we do see the elite archers and the uh, Malian forces. The good surplus of gold. And you know, kind of the thing is, like, English have infinite gold, but so do Malians to an extent. I mean, Malians with four relics plus pit mines, like, their gold is going to be pretty similar to the English in terms of, like, infinite, right? Now, do we see any trade going on? I'm looking, trying to spot weird trade routes. Um, the Roos are doing middle trade for 156 a pop or 152, which is quite good. Um, Smeagol kind of getting pushed back a little bit, forced back into his little gremlin cave here. The Smeagol could be wood-starved here, too. Let's look at his resources and see. Ah, he's, he's got a fair amount. Not a ton. A little bit of gold kind of in surplus here, but the Roos have been able to kind of uh, finally win these fights and push Smeagol back. It was not easy pushing him back to the mountains, but, you know, it happens. The fight continues. Dark Hunter Ezra here. Probably going to keep pushing back this infrastructure. Delhi's base is actually kind of open now. It looks like it's been lumberjacked through, so Ezra could bum-rush that if he wants to. The Delhi army mustering what it can, pulling the rams in. So it looks like the rams came all the way around the map, and now they're here. And uh, he wants to trade with Smeagol's market. Is that actually what's going down? I think there might be some. So we got markets, and it looks like Smeagol rebuilt his walls here to make sure that he's safe. And Uravity, once again, going to be coming down from the north side and uh, looking to try and finish off Dark Hunter Ezra, which is not going to be easy. Ezra's been winning most of these fights, 
But if Deli, if the Deli comes in, whoa, what, oh, the Rams got it. I thought he deleted his own walls for a second. This uh, timing is going to be tough. Ezra is really, really caught in a hard place. Thankfully, Ravity doesn't have a ton of siege equipment, so he has time to deal with Delhi and then bounce north. So Delhi comes through with a very small army. So here they come. It's going to be elephants and spears, but the warrior scouts, the Donso, the Muso Fatty, all those units should be able to trade. Good micro there. The Star Country Ezra does pull back his elite warrior scouts and continues a very impressive hold 2v1. A very, very impressive hold. So the Rooster's holding it down in the middle and trying to clean out Smeagol's rat's nest, but Smeagol has got a lot of random stuff all over the map. And Gollum has been forced back here. Where is Gollum's army? Um, does he have one in his base? I'm trying to look around to see if we can find one. Okay, it looks like Gollum is going north. So I think he's going to be trying to get his landmarks back. He's going to be trying to repair them so he's a little bit harder to kill and maybe trying to shut down Roost trade. I'm not sure. We'll have to keep an eye on that. You know, trying to break through this one gatehouse, the Roost could totally get in there right now and do a ton of damage against Smeagol, considering his army is like all on the other side. So looking back here, it looks like Delhi is driven back to the shadows, but you know, every time he has to fight Delhi, your Avity is able to kind of push. So they're obviously coordinating their attacks. I wonder, I feel as if you're at, why would your Avity not just kill the Delhi after this though? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. I mean, both Ezra and your Avity are big threats. So really for the Delhi player, for Crawford, he's kind of like stuck in a tricky position. He's got two major, you know, villains near him who are both very, very strong. Oh, look at that. He's trying to trade. He had 35 traders trying to trade with Smeagol's market. But Smeagol, guys, walled him out. Oh, my God. So Ezra's saying, fine, have a market, Crawford. If you leave now, Crawford said he's leaving. So Crawford's going to get a market. Look at that. He's getting a market. Oh, my God. And look, the traders are going. That was uh, Ezra's peace offering. So Ezra builds a market. That's going to be giving Crawford, uh, you know, a way to make money and a, a bit of a reprieve, allowing Dark Hunter Ezra to try and fight Gravity one-on-one -on -one and draw some sort of a conclusion. Gravity saying, I'll give you a market if you keep attacking. Oh, my God. Who can offer the more lucrative market? They have to start bidding on this. I love the haggard politics in this. Nomad, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the uh, news correspondent as well, man. I greatly appreciate that. So how are the banks at this point? Well, let's take a look. So looking here at Crawford, 3,000. Although we can just look at the current resources. I'll pop that open for you guys. And you, can, you guys can gander at that. We see Book with the biggest bank. The Roos the Roos could straight up win this game just with that gold bank. Like if they if the Roos build a wonder and go for Sacred Side at the same time and like entrench this a little bit like they have been with these keeps, they could for sure win the game. But not until a couple more players have fallen. There's still too many good players on the map. Um, you know, Smeagol would be clawing at your back. You would have the the English from the north. You'd have you know Dark Hunter Ezra with his really really good macro and aggression. It's too early to go for anything like that. I mean, there are some corner positions, maybe. Like, I wonder, like, if you know it would be really crazy. If you lumberjacked back into this corner here and just, like, went for a wonder right in that corner, that'd be pretty sweet. Smeagol, in the meantime, looks to be sieging, so he's pushing back the Bruce entrenchments. Going to be trying to get his council hall back, maybe shut down the trade here. And it looks like Book is going to be going for his main base. I'm not sure what Book is doing yet. It looks like the Bruce are going to be heading into the woods. Trying to find a way. Well, Dark Hunter Ezra starts to get momentum. You know, as soon as the Delhi stop attacking, he's able to muster a good attack. And uh, Ezra's bank is just nuts. Like, he's he's just, despite this pressure, he still has 20,000 gold. He is just cackling in gold. That is super impressive. So are we going to be seeing any sort of uh, sort of wonder action? Who has the most stone? Nomad Mac had 3,000. Yeah, he had a nice little stone bank there. Nobody else really has a ton of stone. Don't see any wonders on the horizon at this point. It's really just going to be some brutal attrition here. I, I, would, I feel as if this is going to be like a two and a half hour game. So let me just have a sip of water. Let's fasten them seatbelts. Hmm. And get going, man. And get going. Dude, look at just this absolute anarchy on the top side. This is just this is nuts. So now, good trade for Delhi. Delhi is... Wait, is Delhi allying against Uravity now? So he's got the trade post here. Oh my god, are the Rams going to accidentally kill it? Delhi's army is moving up, I think, to attack Uravity. Which is hilarious. Looks like Uravity is going to go in. <laughs> oh man, Delhi, you better get those spears in position. Spring ults pull back. And uh, Dark Hunter Ezra amasses his forces. The Warrior Scouts and company getting ready to party. As Delhi, I, I can't tell if they were going to be attacking Gravity or if they were going to be moving north. Oh my god, this is nuts. Yeah, Red's food count is a, a little bit on the lower end. It's a little bit on the lower end, but still, I mean, 11,000 food isn't the worst. Not as much as some of the other players who have like 60,000, but he's been producing... I think he's mainly been fighting with war Warrior Scouts, and that's been one of the big kind of reasons for success, which is pretty cool. 
I'm not sure what Delhi is doing here. They're kind of like sitting as if they want to do a little bit of a backstab. If Delhi really wanted to backstab, uh, Uravity, they would come from up here. They would just like attack here and get right into his base and just start raiding and killing villagers and causing a ton of havoc. Poison arrows are also really good too. So the Malian archers do have poison arrows, which when they they actually do stack too. So it's pretty insane the kind of damage they can get. But you know they are going to have some problems with manganels and various other siege equipment. So Gravity's bank is he's only got two thousand gold. His food is eighty one thousand. English typically don't run out of uh, food very easily. It's uh, it's going to take a ton to kind of deal with that. On the other side, we see the Rus trying to get in. The Rus have found a way into Smeagol's empire. But they're going to be headed off, and uh, we'll see if they can win this fight. I don't think so. I think the English will have the supply lines to win this. We see English spears coming across, and the Rus have found a way in and are going to be trying to take down Smeagol. Although Smeagol's army here is kind of getting folded like a piece of paper a little bit. That's pretty nice here for you old Rus. Up on the top side, we do see Trebuchet. Smeagol, Smeagol trebbing the fast guy at tower, dude. He's so troll. Oh my god, he's so troll. And he killed the market, so the Rus trade is offline. Fast guy at tower is dying. Just all sorts of uh, daggers in the night, man. Just just appearing from the woods, ambushing. It's uh, it's absolutely nuts. And this is crazy. I chose this map to hopefully not have a three-hour game. No, this map is definitely more inclined to have long games because it has these corner elements where people can hide. Which I'm down for it, dude. I'm down. Let's let's party. We're having fun tonight, man. Some more horsemen on the way in. They're swarming from all angles. And now we do see a massive amount of Streltsy heading down this way. So the Rus are really, really pedal to the metal on this. They want to end Smeagol, but their supply lines aren't super close by, so they're having to run from a pretty epic distance. And here we just have this never-ending battle. I mean, I feel like we could let these guys fight for like two hours and we wouldn't have a resolution. I feel like they would just keep, you know, pounding into one another. And uh, yeah, it, it's getting real sweaty here. I mean, is Yuravity going to be running out of gold? Doesn't look like it. He's still getting about seven, 800 a minute. Trebuchet going down to the Warrior Scouts. Like in order to beat English in a grind like this, you have to like raid into their base. But his base is so entrenched in the nature of the uh, the kind of the forest here, it's hard to get around and get into his actual base. So Dark Hunter Ezra forces him back, and Delhi is just loving life now, guys. Crawford is starting to bank gold. You know, he's got a super sweet trade route. Um, and that was a really good play by Crawford. You know, get, like, bullying until he got the trade that he wanted was pretty MLG. Now, what are these Delhi guys doing right here? What are they doing? Hmm, hard to say. Elite Warrior Scouts on the way up. Going to be trying to dive on top of the Mangonels. Shut down artillery where they can. They only cost food, so it's always worth it to dive them onto artillery if you can get a couple kills here and there. The battle in the mountains continues as the Rus uh, seem to have pushed Smeagol back a little bit. Smeagol is gathering his forces, which is mostly a low-quality Spearman Horseman army, but decent enough to fight against Rus. The uh, Spears will be very good against, the uh, obviously, the Rus Knights and whatnot. So, Yeah, Smeagol has got to be careful, though. I don't think he's in any too much danger, though. The supply lines are just far too long for the Rus. The Rus would need to set up some keeps. Like, if the Rus really wanted to finish them, I think setting up aggressive keeps with um, infrastructure, siege infrastructure, to make, like, battering rams and tools like that behind them would be uh, would be pretty good. So one landmark is destroyed. Book actually lost his Pascaya Tower. That is really, really annoying. Looks like the trade is back online. So he's got trade here. It's not as good as the other route that he had, but nonetheless, it still tries. Rus army moving to the north, taking down outposts. Going to be torching the farms, I would imagine, and uh, trying to get on top of the trebuchets here. Meanwhile, in the south, the Rus army getting through the gates, but a flank from Smeagol. Smeagol coming around the top. Oh my god, Smeagol so cunning. And now he's going to be coming and uh, hammering these uh, treps, which is going to be great. It'll really, really slow down the progress. Yeah, having to kill walls with mangonels is never a very cost-effective uh, thing, that's for sure. Topside, Rus knight's doing it, but the Smeagol walls, these little like stone gatehouses, make all the difference. Keeping the Rus from being able to kind of maneuver in his little under empire here. In the meantime, Dual Fates continues. It's funny, I've had the same situation with both these players before. Like, I've been in FFAs where it's me versus Ezra, and we just, like, have stalemates for, like, an hour. And the same thing with Gravity. It's just, like, just these brutal grinds. Brutal, brutal grinds, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Delhi just, just straight up hanging out here, guys. Gravity's bank is only 900, and Ezra is sitting on 10,000 gold. So Ezra could maybe outmuscle him with gold. And just make good quality units and just win the fight that way. We'll have to see. But he's mainly, mainly making warrior scouts. You know, he's trying to kind of minimize, minimize the uh, tax on his uh, economy there. And now we do see the Rus army chased back by a big Smeagol force. So Smeagol bringing his forces and he's able to push them back to the uh, frozen north from whence they came. The Rus trying to gather, uh, gather some units where they can. And now there is going to be a big raiding force coming in. And do these walls are just such a pain. I think the Rus need to research siege engineering and just start making rams in the field in order to get through. Otherwise, if they keep relying on siege equipment to get through Smeagol's defenses, 
it's uh, it's not going to work out at all. Smeagol's just gonna he's just gonna do his do his thing and just continuously snipe your artillery with his good horseman micro. How's this fight looking? Yep, same old same old grind. Mangan Ellis will be back online. We got English Trebuchets. I actually legitimately think Gravity could uh, die here if he's not careful. Depends. Depends. Yeah, more and more units coming in. Are we going to get more quality units? I suppose it depends if Dark Hunter Ezra wants to invest in good units or if he just wants to kind of keep spamming chaffy, like trash units and just like kind of maintaining an even status quo trade. Mangan Fire doing some okay damage. Not too much. Men at Arms going to be diving them. Mangan going to be forced back. And both players are just kind of uh, kind of spamming all the uh, all the siege action. So let's take a look at the bank here of Crawford. Crawford just spent a ton of gold on something. Um, is he going to go for a wonder in the top? I'm trying to see what he maybe spent his gold on. His military is sitting at 99. Uh, does he have any upgrades coming out? Is there anything going on down here? No, it looks like... Yeah, and Smeagol deleted these markets. So Smeagol deleted the markets here, it looks like, to take away the trade option here for uh, purple. So now he's going down here. Maybe a, this would be a decent spot for a wonder, considering... Look at this, like, insanity we're seeing here, guys. Absolute lunacy, man. Yeah, it's crazy. So the English, once again, pulling back to the south. Just a lot of wars of attrition here with, like, these X-Factor players, right? So you have, like, two kind of equal duels. And then you just have the fifth person who, who's just... I don't know what they're doing with all that gold. Maybe making more elephants. We got more towers. Oh, I think he might have bought stone. I think he might have bought some stone to set up um, maybe cannon towers or something. I'm not sure. Delhi could for sure try and win. And we're kind of getting into that territory, guys, where it's like iron bladder territory. Like somebody is going to have to go to the restroom. I don't know. Or have like some real life event come up. You know, whether they have work the next day. And this is this is where the true metal of uh, our players is tested. That's that's like, that's the most hilarious way to win, right? Your opponent just just, just can't hold it anymore. They lose. They lose a big battle. Okay, Delhi's moving in, I think, to attack the English. It's a little bit hard to tell. Ezra with a million mangonels. Nobody's really making spring alts. And if the Delhi really wanted to help, they could just punch through these gates and then go north. So we'll see if they're going to. But Delhi kind of looking like they want to get aggressive here. We do have six spring alts here. Spring alts could help. And uh, Delhi just kind of hanging out. I wonder if the Delhi and Ezra alliance is going to crumble. I mean, okay. What's kind of interesting is Ezra can always delete his market. If Delhi backstabs him, he just deletes the market and then starves him again. Oh, that's some interesting stuff. But, you know, eventually he will break free from his chains I would, and, and probably backstab. Once again, the English able to muster a good force. And, uh, you know, the problem is if you don't keep the pressure on your Abity, he can get a gold bank again, and it's going to take so much longer to push him back. You'd easily call in sick to win this game. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. Yeah, you know, I thought that Smeagol would be more friends with his brother in the walls. Yeah, I really did. But it, it was not the case. They, uh, they, have, a, they have a tenuous alliance. But guys, if Smeagol defeats the Roost player, which is possible, um, that's gonna Smeagol's gonna take the game probably, which would be absolutely insane considering his start. The Roost player probably shaking his fist angrily that he didn't finish off Smeagol earlier when he had a chance. I mean, he didn't have a really good chance. Smeagol really fled super far around the corner of the map and made it not easy at all. But a very pitched fight here, both sides fighting at the gates. Smeagol does have his reinforcements on the way in, and Book up in the north uh, is mustering troops. So it looks like he's got some horsemen going to the top side. But yeah, you're not going to get through these walls super easily. I guess that's why there's a, a trebuchet coming down here. Looks like a little bit of a peace agreement here. Both sides decided to take in a, a peace on the, on holiday here. So no fighting is going down. Mm. We can't check the kills everybody has until the end of the game. That would be in the post-game post, uh, post -game stats. 100%. This game will be decided by uh, whose mom kicks off the computer first. Yeah. Yeah, mom, I can't pause the game. It's an how many of you, uh, how many of you '90s and early 2000s kids in chat remember the uh, your parents telling you it's time to do something else, and they, they didn't they didn't understand that it was an online game and you can't pause, and you're like, mom, I can't pause the game. <laughs> yeah, classic, classic stuff. Smeagol's the biggest FFA troll. He really is. He really is. But it works. It's not even like he's trolling. It's a viable strategy. Like it's he just he just spreads himself out. To the point where people don't think he's a threat. He just like hides in the shadows and then he just pops out in the fourth quarter with like a wonder or uh, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. We see the Rams going here and attacking the walls. So what is Delhi doing? Is Delhi trying to kill Smeagol? I think he is. What? Yeah, all of you guys remember that. Oh man, so many WoW dungeons. Yeah, exactly. It's always that, right? It's always the 
Like I wonder, I you know, my neighbors have uh, their my neighbors are a little bit old. I'm 34, but my neighbors are 40 years old, and they have kids who are like eight, uh, 11 years old. Like, and but they grew up with like you know early internet. Like I wonder how they like. Yeah, they yeah, it's it's interesting, the paradigm of that. Like, do they they know the games can't be paused now? So how is the enforcement done? Probably Destrictor, I would imagine. But yes, the Skaven are in the walls. Smeagol, maybe a little bit nervous because Delhi's Delhi's coming to get you, dude. Look at this. So he's on his way down. And the Rams, the old Rams are pushing. Can we actually check the player kills? How are you checking that? Would it be in military? Oh, here you go. Holy shit. Wow, look at Dark Hunter Ezra. So we can check that. I forgot you could check the stat. Sorry about that. So Ezra is sitting at 651. Man, your avidity as well. Brutal war of attrition. You can see uh, Crawford is the most uh, most peaceful of the bunch. A lot of troopers lining up here. The battle is going to continue. <laughs> My dad was notorious for chiming in on the Molten Core raids. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. That's a classic one right there. But Spiegel's falling back. I think he's expecting aggression from Delhi. I'm not sure. Delhi doesn't have like a good army. Like It would get folded by Spiegel's army. But The Roos are also attacking here. We do see some one of the walls going down. The Roos should replace the walls if they can. Like, as the roosts take ground, they should build their own walls to make it so Smeagol can't, like, retake this ground. That's really what he needs to be doing. Now, looking at the bank of all the players here, guys, let's look at the uh, current resources. Uh, Ezra looking a little bit stone happy. He's got almost 5,000 stone. But I don't see a good place for him to place a wonder. Okay, maybe he's, like, planning right here. It, it, that would be too dicey, though. There's no way it would work. The Smeagol would emerge from the bushes back here and would just start, like, trapping you and, uh, you know, get pretty ugly. There needs to be a couple a couple more people to fall before that. Yeah, this is a wild game, man. This is wild as hell. This is one of the weirdest, most very entertaining FFAs we've had in quite some time. Looks like you're Avity trying to wall the Deli in. And Deli is just pushing on the south side. I'm not sure what they're up to, but just trying to uproot the rat's nest here. As the Roost, with a little bit of a raiding force in the north, do push down Smeagol's uh, entrenchments. Meagle's setting up multiple layers of walls, trying to be as annoying as possible. And the English army is going to go meet the Delhi army, it would look like. Is Delhi actually approaching with an army? They are. It's it's not a great army. It's definitely not a great army. An enemy has destroyed a landmark, so it looks like a landmark has fallen to your avidity. Was it the TC? That was strange. It looks like, uh, I don't know what that could have been. More keeps coming up. Ezra just looking super entrenched. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to win this. Nobody's like going hard enough for the kill. Like, they all kind of pull back and are getting political and, and, you know, super cautious about things. Yeah, dude, this is going to be an Iron Bladder game. I think this is going to be an Iron Bladder match. I can foresee this one going, like, another two hours. That's maybe a bit of a stretch, like an hour and a half. Like, maybe another hour and a half, would and, and we'll be there. Up on the top side, we got the Mangonels and Archers all blasted away. Big, big army, big battle. Got to keep those mangonels alive. There's multiple keeps back here, so you can just kind of pull back and have them screen a little bit. Your Avity going for the kill, though. I mean, he's he's getting aggressive. Wants to end this, but we see a ton of keeps coming up here from Dark Hunter Ezra. He has a big stone bank. He must have bought some stone, or or maybe he's got he doesn't have Mansa Quarry. You know, he has the he has the trade landmark, so he's not going to be getting stone from that. Perhaps there was a couple nodes that we did miss. Enemy attacking landmark. Okay, it's not enemy destroyed. It's a big battle here. The gremlins in the walls fighting. They're like this is this is my uh, my my area here. You will not you will not thrive in my rat's nest. As the English army most likely going to be claiming victory, Springald's not going to be super useful against this force. Although I don't know, those elephants are tanking it like champs. They do have 14 ranged armor, so English longbows are going to be doing literally one damage against them. So yeah, the Tower of War elephants are really raid boss. And look at that, Delhi actually kind of wins. In the meantime, the Roos are also at the gates. All right, it's getting a little bit spicy. Are the Roos coming down with any siege equipment? It's hard to say. Taking the wood in the corner of the map. They do have their trebuchets sieging down all these annoying walls. And it looks like towers coming up for the Roos to try and deny Smeagol's um, entrenchments there. And trebuchets are here, guys. All right, so Smeagol's army uh, was able to win just barely. And now they're on their way back. But the Roos army is going to be very, very close to getting in here. And now we have a fight at the gates. It's going to go down here, ladies and gentlemen. War of Attrition still going here. We got Manganels moving on up. And... Uh, Dark Hunter Ezra once again pushing back the forces of Uravity with his critical mass of Manganels that he has. Obviously, mass archers uh, probably going to need some spring alts or something to deal with this. This is a lot of stuff. And he's also keep pushing, which I really like. But what is Delhi doing? Delhi is like mustering in the south. Oh man, Delhi's probably going to go for a corner wonder. This is kind of what it looks like here. See? They got like keeps being set up. He, he purposefully lumberjacked this. Is Delhi going to try it? 
Crawford only has 1,300 stone, so it's going to be a ways off. But I mean, he, he's got a lot of wood and uh, food, so he could, certainly could trade up to that point. Certainly could. And the tug of war continues, guys, as we get more units on the way out. It's going to be Muso Fadi, a bunch of units. Big Meg and L-Shots crump that army. Nice scoot and shoot right there. You're going to need more than one villager to build this keep in an expeditious time, so you can actually deal with this. But yeah, Malians are making progress, guys. Gravity, not in, like imminent danger, but it's kind of like that light pressure, you know? Or you know it's coming for you. It's a big blast right there, guys. Now the keep is going to be on its way up. That one dreaded villager doing its best. Your Abadie's army is being folded back. In, in late game Age of Empires, so like typically siege critical mass if you're in like a very linear fight without flanking and, and openings in the bases, uh, siege critical mass is hands down uh, one of the biggest variables to take into account. The Rooster is still pushing up. Look at that Rooster getting some working on Smeagol, guys. Smeagol's trying to muster over here, but if the Delhi keep attacking him, we'll have to see. Yeah, Delhi, Delhi's going for it, and this is going to be a nightmarish position. Getting entrenchments up on the high ground here. I love it, man. So we'll keep tabs on that. If Crawford ended up winning with being the Delhi, Delhi's also not like the strongest FFA Civ. If he managed to pull a win with that and also his horrific start that he had, having to flee into the shadows, that would be very impressive. Either him or Smeagol, right? They both had very tough starts. Smeagol got rushed. If it weren't a map with like a woodland escape, I think the Roost player might have been able to kill Smeagol. But um, yeah, now he's got his entrenchments here. He's got a, a decent standing English army. Which should be able to fight off the roost, but he is losing uh, losing infrastructure, which isn't insignificant, especially when you only have 2,000 wood. So that's the problem with being a, a corner gremlin, although there's a big patch of wood right here that you can definitely go for. So it's not like he's without options. How's this fight looking? English slowly being pushed back. We do get the offensive keeps coming out here for Dark Hunter Ezra. Ezra's sitting on 6,000 stone, so he's clearly getting some good stone from somewhere. He's either finding the remnants of nodes or he's just trading for it progressively. Roost still trading in the middle, 120 a pop. Pretty good Roost trade. They could re-secure uh, re their trade route here to get a slightly more uh, more efficient gold route. It looks like the Roost is going to be turning and fighting. And Spiegel's going to be in trouble soon. Um, when he runs out of wood, yeah, he's got to get that back. It looks like he's got it here. So he did get some wood production back online, so he should be okay. Yeah, man. Delhi with the corner wonder. It's it's on the table. And the fact that Ezra gave him trade is, is allowing him to get back in the game. If Delhi wonders, Roost would insta sacred. That's true. That's that's a very good observation, and um, I do think that would be the case. Yeah, the Roost player is ready to pull the trigger. He's sitting here, and uh, that would that would force that would be an interesting paradigm, though, because you know Delhi could say, "Screw you, I'm not going to stop the wonder." Okay, and then what happens is everybody in the game has to like make a decision if they want to like like call his bluff or if they just want to like let the Roost player win. So I've seen players not give in to that kind of pressure before where they're like, screw you, like, and then everybody else in the game has to make a hard decision, which, you know, something to consider, guys, something to consider. Roost got another army heading down and Delhi looks like their uh, time of being aggressive is over. They're just going to be entrenching in the corner. Looking at Delhi's resources, they do not have much stone. So Delhi has just basically spent all of its stone on keeps. So they're going to have to build it up the old fashioned way. He's just kind of like planning ahead for much, much later in the game. Now, as far as this fight goes, looks like Spring Alt Spam here, which is smart to deal with the mass mangonels. The mangonels look to have all been destroyed, and now Ezra is going to be getting rams? Yeah, it could be some ram sign. Could be a little bit of do hosting. Could be a little bit of do hosting. Over on the far side, Smeagol's army pushing north. Going to be trying to uproot the roost who are setting up aggressive infrastructure here. Uh, Smeagol's army should be able to do it. We'll see. He's going to kind of stop at these towers. There are some Streltsy coming in. Streltsy fully upgraded. They do have the static deployment, so they gain 30% attack speed after they're stationary for a period of time. It's pretty cool. In long grindy fights, it can definitely pay off. But yeah, this fight's gonna keep going, man. We have our like two little microcosms of fights, and then we have this like this position. Okay, so he's setting up farms here, and uh, you might be wondering why he's setting up farms. Well, it's because obviously it gives his villagers something to do. But secondly, as soon as he's ready for the wonder, he just deletes all of them, and he already has villagers there ready to build it. So that's kind of the school of thought for that. Up on the top side, we see a lot of these scouts being uh, mowed down as they do dive the spring alts. Looks like several of the spring alts did pay the price. Many of them did get away, and uh, yeah, just this grinding war of attrition continues as uh, this infrastructure here was never built. Delhi just kind of minding its own business, trading happily. Delhi really, really not in bad shape here, guys. They are, they're looking like they could be somewhat of a contender now as we do progress into the later stages of this game. Somebody in chat asks, how do we join FFAs? All you have to do is join our Discord. We have a very, very active Age of Empires community in our Discord who play FFAs almost every single day. Um, you just need to join and ask... Uh, Get the Age of Empires role with the role selection section, and then from there you uh, 
just ask to be given a raider role, which means you'll be paying for all the FFA games and things like that. So, yeah, Royal Rumbling, man. On the bottom side, it looks like Smeagol and the Roos are going to be getting into Mortal Kombat. The Roos player wants blood, and, um, you know, Smeagol, he's still got wood, which is nice. And, of course, him being English, English uh, is going to give him plenty of gold, as we do get into the later stages of the game. Smeagol actually has 7,000 gold banks, which is pretty damn good, guys. It's pretty darn good. Delhi with their keeps. It looks like they've upgraded cannon towers. Yeah, they've upgraded. They did not actually have village fortresses. Interesting. But, um, yeah, they're going to be getting cannons on all these and probably looking to play Wonder. But not until somebody else dies. So if you're the Delhi player here, guys, you kind of just, just take it easy. You're just chilling in the corner, man. That's that's what you do. Looks like this keep's going to be coming up, shooting at the, uh, the remnants of Smeagol's entrenchments down here. Gollum gathering his forces. The Roos is here, though, and the Roos are building a lot of infrastructure here. So clearly they are looking for blood, and they mean business. The Green has had a blood feud against Smeagol the entire game. He's been trying to kill him perpetually, and I can tell you I've been in that situation where I've killed Smeagol's initial base, and he just, like, retreats, and you're know, just hunting him for the next two hours of your game. It's very, very fun. <laughs> All jokes aside, it is actually fun. It's, it's, it's a great time. Good Roos trade going, and uh, yeah, we still see the battles going on here, but it looks like a little bit of a calm as both players kind of re-entrench and set up more infrastructure. The Malians trying to get more uh, production buildings to maybe just pour the pressure on. Delhi playing their win con here in the corner, going to be uh, getting ready for a wonder. And uh, Delhi should destroy these walls if they can, and then build like like 500 layers of their own wooden walls here. That that will slow down a wonder push just massively, absolutely massively. <laughs> Delhi buying himself some time to go to the restroom. I think so. I think he is. I think he is. All's calm now, though. English trebuchets being super annoying. English traps can basically just um, snipe enemy trebuchets. Looks like this gatehouse in a little bit of danger, but the English fighting in a choke point is what they want. For any of you guys who've ever played like Total War, like the um, you know the dwarves are a faction in Total War Warhammer that if they just got to fight in a narrow choke point every time, they would just be like the most unstoppable faction, right? But, like, English is kind of the same in this game. Like, if you can just get them fighting in a choke point where they can't be flanked and they can just set up their trebs and network of castles and longbows and shit, it's, uh, it's just an unholy nightmare to go in for these. Uh, Kevin says he might buy this. Uh, who are all the factions in this match? So, as far as the remaining factions that we have left, we have Book on the Roos. We have Smeagol, or Chris is back on the uh, English. He might, he, I don't know why he hasn't changed his name to Gollum or Smeagol yet. I don't know why. Dark Hunter Ezra is on the Malians, and then we do also have another English player up to the north, and the Delhi Sultanate with the big elephants is up in the hills here, just kind of uh, trading like the heathen kings of old. So, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, no, Delhi is not messing around, guys. Crawford currently has, uh, let's see how many traders he has. We can check at his trade post here. He is sitting at, oh my god, oh my god, he's got the blessed number. He had 69 traders for a second, guys. Did, oh, Ezra deleted the market! Oh my god. Dude, he deleted the market. Oh my god. Is Delhi gonna come for blood now or what? That's a dangerous one. Deleting the market like that? You might incur the wrath of Delhi. They might they might actually come and help. The English now. Guys, he deleted the market. So Ezra took the gravy train away from his uh, minion here. But will Crawford strike back with all the rage of a scorned uh, a scorned emperor? We'll find out. Now, on the south side, it looks like the Roos continuing their aggression, but England just kind of chilling. I mean, they're just they're just good to go, man. They, they're ready. The Roos with the slow push. Smeagol only has two landmarks left. He's got the Windguard Palace, as well as the King's Palace here. Looking at Smeagol's bank, he's pretty pretty well off here. I mean, he did spend a lot of gold to just fight that war, but um, yeah, he's got enough food and, food and wood to make like longbows for quite some time. Yeah, that's a risky delete, because like Delhi could start backstabbing you now. I wonder if Ezra would give him the market back. If it started to go south again, he's like, here, you can have it back. So what are the traders doing? Yeah, it looks like the last couple traders are bringing their goodies back. Also on that same note, you know, uh, Crawford might not notice that for a while. Sometimes things like that you can you can certainly miss. Do you think units in AoE should rank up? Like, No, I'm happy with how things work in Age of Empires. Honestly, I, I really enjoy this game. Despite all the trade, he still is the rat in the cage, I know. He's the Skaven. He's the, he's not, he's not like a rat that you want to underestimate. They uh, they have they have their warp stone and other trickery on the table here. Elite warrior scouts hunting going to be sniping some of the artillery once again, but it looks like the Manganel's coming in, going to be forcing both players back. Rams being used by Dark Hunter Ezra. 
as it looks like he's secured most of his empire. Does he have any opportunities for trade? It looks like he does have some trade going. Now, where is he trading? Okay, so trader's coming back. We're bringing back 58 a pop, so it's not insignificant, but also not amazing. The Rus continue their war of attrition with the English. English mostly men-at-arms, um, probably because wood is starting to become a little bit sparse, so he's trying to... Oh, yeah, but a lot of his resources are, man. How does his wood look? Yeah, he's got a lot of wood to mine here, so... Smeagol should be okay for a while. Like, And when this eventually runs out, that's when things could get... A little bit nasty, because he won't be able to build siege equipment. Although, counterweight trebuchets can be built out of the Windguard Palace, so... No, he's, he's got options. Alright, trebuchet is trying to knock down the gatehouse. We have a little bit of a royal rumble here. Streltsy and Spearman. Spearmen are a decent meat shield. They can just kind of take them out at arms beatings while the Streltsy mow them down. And as the Streltsy fight for periods of time, they're going to be getting their static deployment buff. And uh, that is really nice. It's a 30% attack speed buff. Mangonels on the way in. Smeagol with the flank! He came up and around the top with his knights, and he gets right on top of all those artillery pieces. And the Rus army, once again, is going to be folded like a piece of paper. So, where is the Delhi Sultanate? Okay, Delhi's had enough. Delhi is coming to uh, exact its revenge for the market being uh, deleted, because now the gravy train is over. Delhi is no longer going to be making any gold. So, they're back down to zero gold production. And I wonder if Ezra is going to renegotiate his, his deal once he sees this doom stack of elephants moving into his base. I think that he is, uh, I think he might want to renegotiate that, like Len Delisi had there. So we do see a lot of these scouts coming in, but Delhi has the uh, anti-cavalry elephants now. It's going to be very nasty. And the Delhi shop, who would have thought that Delhi would be the one that would break the camel's back? And Uravity probably very grateful for this. It looks like he was being pressured very, very hard. And now Dark Hunter Ezra is going to have to deal with this. This is a hell of a lot of elephants, guys. And they're able to kind of steamroll. And plus, he's got a lot of Scholars in here healing. Now, Scholars were recently nerfed so that they heal 50% less in combat. But, you know, it's still very, very good. I mean, combat healing, especially with these big high HP elephants, is incredibly cost-effective. So, Delhi needs to consolidate their elephants. They have them kind of overextended here where they're being isolated and picked apart. Granted, they still have this good critical mass. Ezra going in, trying to snipe the artillery pieces. That's certainly a very, very good veteran FFA play and just a good play in general, not just FFA. A couple of these Sultan Elephants need to get back with the main army, and Ezra is now forced into another grinding war of attrition. But somehow, he's got 31,000 gold. I mean, he can do this for a while, but not if um, Uravity comes and helps. If Uravity comes and they 2v1 Ezra, he's probably going to probably gonna pay the price. He's probably going to go down. Although he's macroing really well. He's got a ton of production buildings, but he's going to dig through his food pretty quickly, producing all these guys. Archers and Scholars still fighting for the Delhi Sultanate. We do have the Counterweight Trebuchets. Slowly knocking down the keeps. It looks like more of these scout units are moving around the top. And they are going to be flanking on top of the counterweight trebuchets. Ezra is such a scrappy player, man. He is uh, he is certainly very, very, very skilled. Yeah, this is this is very impressive. The way he's holding these two armies and, you know, blunting their pushes while getting 2v1 is tough. Yeah, that is 100% the case. Yeah, I wonder if there was some chat in game, like, about the market being deleted. Like, if there was some sort of a discussion about it. I don't really know. Be curious. They may not have even talked about it. But the Malian's holding on like champs, man. But now we do see the momentum starting to really get to them. As the elephant push continues, uh, we see Uravity coming up. But Uravity needs to get more aggressive. He needs to move up here and start hammering this. I don't know if he... He must know Delhi's attacking. He must be privy to this. So now Ezra going to be getting Mass Manganels. This is how he dealt with them before. Um, the Mass Manganels with the Warrior Scout buffering and Donso should be a pretty good army composition. And it looks like the English are, are indeed on their way up. So... The pressure is on. Ezra sitting at about 10,000 food. He is starting to bleed a little bit of gold, but not too badly. Those relics in that tithe barn certainly doing very, very well for him. Meanwhile, on the other side, just basically a, 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 just a haggard war of attrition. They're literally just having a lane fight, playing some sort of a mini game of their own. But the Delhi army is going to get folded up. More elephants coming in, so they should be able to re-macro. Um, looking at the bank of Crawford, he's got no gold, so that elephant legion that he made, that is not going to be uh, something that he can do again. Gravity moving in with the Manganels and the Trebuchets. And Dark Hunter Ezra once again forcing these guys back, dude. Yeah, the, the pit mines are quite good. They give you, I think the bigger ones give you, let's see. So 140 gold a minute. So it's basically the every one of them, if you get all big ones, is like the equivalent of having like almost two relics. Because relics are 80 gold a piece, so it'd be 160. So it's a little bit less than two relics, which is quite good. You get four of them, right? So um, yeah, they can do work. In the meantime, look at that. Dark Hunter Ezra taking down the siege equipment, trying to slow the push. And it looks like the Delhi shop has been pushed back. But Delhi is uh, really, really keeping the pressure on. They're coming in with rams and elephants. And uh, yeah, they have been trying to get rid of Ezra all game. If Ezra wins this game, I'm going to be so impressed. I feel like it's going to be such a tall feat, though. Such a tall feat. 
So elephants and trebuchets and battering rams are out. He might as well delete these walls because the walls are kind of screwing up his elephants pathing. And Anglin trying to fend off the warrior scouts and looking at the bank of Dark Hunter Ezra. He's starting to run a little bit low on food, guys. He's down to 7,000. You know, he had about 12 when this fighting started, so we can see it's starting to take its toll on him. The Grand Fulani Corral doing good. More keeps being set up deeper in the base. And Dark Hunter Ezra is uh, stuck in another 2v1 situation, so... And he can't really flee anywhere. Can't really flee anywhere. The so archers on their way in. Yeah, I would not have expected Malians to hold this well. Yeah, he's got four relics as well. Uh, he does have a little bit of trade. It's not good. It's only like 58 trade, but the cool thing about Malian trade is it also gives you food with the uh, landmark. So Malians are getting, that's that's how they're able to kind of survive this, I would say. On the bottom side, yeah, just Smeagol versus the Roos, and the Roos have their supply line set up. So they have forward uh, production infrastructure to continue this fight, but Smeagol uh, can do this all day. The English are just the kings of like turtling and just and defending here. So good, good luck getting through all this. That, it's not going to be fun. English trebuchets with the shattering projectiles too will also snipe your own trebuchets, which is super, super annoying. But like the dynamic of this game will actually change if Ezra dies. Like it's been very much like status quo, but ooh, that is a lot of Ramstein. That is a lot of sweet do hosting guys. And that's going to do some brutal damage. The Fulani Corral going down is going to hurt. This keep is going to fall, and also all these rams are going to push in. Dark Hunter Ezra with a very, very valiant hold, but man, getting 2v1 like this for so long is um, it's a big problem. It's a big problem, man. I wonder if he had left the market, how that would have gone. Like, his Delhi was just, would probably have just stayed back and prepared for a wonder, but they were able to get a ton of gold from that trading, and then, uh, you know. Now the fight is on. Looks like Ezra is officially in danger now. Like, for the first time in the game, I would say he's in serious danger of dying here. Uh, assuming... Gravity keeps the pressure on. There's a small chance that Ezra could be able to fight back the Delhi army here with his really, really good macro and scrappy micro here, but um, those rams are doing some nasty damage too. Starting to kill infrastructure, which uh, is going to be slowing down his unit production. Uh, and yeah, the pressure is going to be continuing from the English. So the English are going to keep it on, but Gravity needs to take advantage of this and attack. If Gravity doesn't attack and just lets Ezra fight off the Delhi until Delhi is gold starved again, then it's it's it could just go back to how it was before. So we see the pit mine being taken out. That's going to be setting gold back a little bit. Granted, you can always rebuild those if I'm not mistaken. Although, no, now that the gold's gone, I don't think you can rebuild these pit mines. So that's going to be a permanent gold loss here for the uh, for the Malians, which hurts pretty bad. Longbow's on their way in. Ezra holding like an absolute chad against these two players. On the other side, we see a little bit of an English Knight raid trying to raid into the Roos Empire. But the Roos seem to be able to kind of intercept them with some Streltsian units of their own. Spiegel, uh, no crazy trade. Delhi definitely could do a wonder. I mean, if they're... I, how will Delhi fight against the English, though, once Ezra's dead? Landmark's going down in droves. So the TC is down. We see this landmark potentially going down. The Fulani Corral is in trouble. And the Fortress of the Hunt is back here safe. So Ezra with the uh, kind of prescience to uh, put that back there and make sure he isn't getting kind of caught. Yeah, Delhi could get the relics. If Delhi's able to get their paws on these four relics here, that is going to be massive. Delhi with just a potato quality army. It's basically just spearmen and archers moving out. And uh, I would wager the scholars will come up. But Ezra looking to really, really be on the back rope right now. As for the first time in this game, his uh, front line has been broken and his uh, frontal infrastructure has been advanced upon. A lot of cattle here. A lot of food going down. Delhi has a huge bank, if I'm not mistaken, looking at the current resources of uh, food and wood. So Crawford, yeah, 34,000, 32,000, and 24,000. Dark Hunter Ezra is just bare bones right now. 4.7 and 31. He's got a lot of gold, uh, but that's pretty much it. So are we going to see Delhi Scholars come in? Muso Fatty Gunners, obviously a good unit, but they're not going to trade super well into just basic archers. Uh, so yeah, Malians are in massive danger here. And it looks like the, uh, the Alliance has been able to take down Dark Hunter Ezra. I can imagine the, the frustration playing very well, but you know, it, it happens. This is FFA. It's happened to me uh, hundreds of times. Just getting, uh, getting, you know, circle beaten here. As the Rams continue in, more trebuchets being forced in the back. I wonder if Ezra is going to make some last desperate political ploy. Are we going to see Delhi scholars coming in? Uh, I do not see any scholars at the moment. So an assault and elephant also sitting a little bit idle back here. So that's where the control on military hockey would come into play. But he's going to see the relics in these buildings and he's going to get it. Yeah, Delhi, I think if they can get these relics and put themselves up to six relics, that's going to be a pretty good amount of gold. Um, you know, it's going to be like four or five hundred gold a uh, minute. And on top of that with Tithe Barns, it's going to give you the stone you need to win with the wonder in the corner of the map. So here they come. Elite horsemen on their way in. John, got to go to bed. Work in the morning. I will have to watch this VOD tomorrow. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Take care, my friend. And uh, it'll be here waiting for you in the morning. Don't you worry. 
This fight over here is wild too. Just this like massive duel of fates. Are the roots just gonna be like, screw this shit, I'm building a wonder? When Dark Hunter Ezra dies? Like, I don't think anybody has enough stone. Let's see. So the most stone is owned by Dark Hunter Ezra. Yeah, who's gonna be probably dying here. Ezra valiantly fighting back. His keeps are holding, but the rams are encroaching on them. Sacred Sites, uh, say, ooh, the Sacred Site, yeah, I keep forgetting about that. The Roost do have the Sacred Site, but the Roost wouldn't be able to hold the Sacred Site against the English and the, the Delhi. No way. Absolutely no way. Hey, John, appreciate you being a member for that long, man. Thank you so much. And uh, looking around, ladies and gentlemen, the fighting continues. The fighting continues, but the Malians, despite some very valiant efforts to fight off the 2v1, are not going to be able to do it. And this is a, a big win for your Gravity because the English uh, are certainly going to be favored against Delhi in a grind. Uh, although, unless Delhi gets the relics, maybe it'll be a little bit more even. But um, so the fact that your Gravity was able to kind of politic this situation, where Ezra is going to be getting two v one, is um, pretty substantial. What is Smeagol up to? Smeagol's just battling the Rus up here. They're just kind of duking it out. A good political angle for Smeagol would be to say, like, "Hey, the Rus have the sacred site in the middle, guys." There's a little bit of danger at hand here. Hey! Uh, Ke Man, the name's a little bit tricky there. Kevlonium. Thank you so much, Kevlonium, for becoming a member. Greatly appreciated, my friend. Welcome to the Dukes of Haggard. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in some of these battles. Hey, I appreciate that, man. Favorite RTS YouTuber? Well, that's what we're here for, man. I, I appreciate that. Very kind words. Welcome to the Dukes of Haggard. The scholars have assembled. The Avengers, they're here. That would actually be a pretty funny soundboard clip to like play the Haggard Avengers Assemble music every time like some army rolls up. I'm pretty sure Disney would like karate chop me into another dimension. Thank you again for becoming a member, my friend. And uh, Scholar's going to be heading down to the south. We got four relics. That is some. That is some some good good farming right there. Dark Hunter Ezra fighting tooth and nail, but you know you got to feel bad for him because there's no help coming. There's no help coming. There's not going to be anyone coming. There's not going to be any other players kind of inter intercepting. The game's been going for an hour and 41 minutes. If you look where my mouse is right now, you can see there's a timer there. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to miss, or not hard to miss, but yeah, you can definitely miss it in the heat of all the action. Scholars grabbing relics across the board. Here they come. Yes, yes, flee my minions. And he immediately gets three relics. And now Delhi is looking like they might be ready to party a little bit. Rams going in after the Fortress of the Hunt. The dreaded Rams with their uh, attack speed upgrade. They do not mess around. Usually our FFA tournaments are only two matches on stream, but they, they go long because it's, you know, an eight-person FFA. All the relics have been taken by Jelly, so the English get none of the relics. And uh, Dark Hunter Ezra, you know, maybe Dark Hunter Ezra could start saying something like, Hey, you know, if you kill me, you're going to have to fight the English with their infinite gold. You have my relics already? Like, let's just say, let's call it some peace. You attack the English right now, and I'll start to help you, you know. I don't know, man. Yeah, diplomacy is pretty normal in FFA. Like, full-on truces. Truces are very tenuous. I've never seen, like... We, we would discourage, like, obviously... Like, if you join an FFA with one of your friends and we're teaming up with just because it's your friend, that would be very frowned upon. But if it's, like, because it think, you think it gives you the best chance of winning and it's just, like, kind of a, a neutral one, you know, you get what I'm saying. All right, guys. Ezra has fallen. Well played. That was some super, super impressive, impressive play by Ezra, holding off the 2v1 for as long as he did. He was able to hold it off when Delhi didn't have gold, but when Delhi got gold, it got a little bit messy. And now, is Delhi going to go s straight to the base here? <laughs> hey, no worries, Ezra. I see you in chat. Hold your head up high. You fought very well. Everybody was very... We were all very impressed with you. But um, you were perceived as quite the threat, and uh, it looked like they went after you. Now, Ezra, while we have you in chat, what, uh, what was the causation for deleting the market and bringing on the wrath of the Delhi? Did you feel as if they were getting too fat off the gold and that they would... They would backstab you? I'd be curious about that. Yeah, organic diplomacy is fun, 100%. So yeah, this horrific war of attrition between the English as well as the Roost continues on. And we do see uh, yeah, both sides just kind of pouring units into one another. The Roost still own that sacred, man. They still own that sweet, sweet sacred in the middle. And now it looks like uh, the old alliances have fallen pretty damn quickly, guys. As the Delhi is going to be battling the English, the two armies do collide. And honestly, Delhi might be able to put some uh, pressure on them, but Yravity does have really, really good control in micro. Oh my god, the do hosting is coming. It's coming, guys. Oh man, look at that. That is a lot of rams. I'm going to start hitting some of these towers down. I love it, man. 
Delhi literally wasted no time getting in here. I saw too many traders take like 150 gold. I got you. I got you, man. That might have been the only thing that was keeping you alive, though, right? It's hard. It's 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 a really tough situation. It's a really tough situation. I suspected that he was just milking me for what it's worth. Yeah, he was for sure. If you look, if you look in the corner of the map, um, Ezra, you can see he was preparing a, a wonder with all that gold. He was like buying stone and, and was like slowly preparing. Yeah, that was his game plan. But now Delhi, Delhi can actually do some wild backstabbing on the English. They could they could attack from multiple sides. And now the elephants and men at arms and archers are moving up. Those archers need to move up with the main army and start shooting at the spearmen and longbows if they can. These Sultan Tower elephants are here and Ram's on their way in to start taking down some of the towers. And Delhi actually might be able to put some serious pressure on the English. Because the English are very battered from that fight. Looking at Ravity's bank though, he's got 12,000 gold. So he's chilling. And he's got 89 villagers on, uh, on gold right now. Or on food, which is also uh, returning gold. So Ravity playing the walls very, very well here. So he's hanging out. Yeah, absolutely great performance, Ezra. You played super well. Hope to see you back in the next one, man. Battergram still rolling, rolling, blasting some limp biscuit from those speakers. As some of the Delhi soldiers do get on the wall. How good is the macro going to be here from uh, Crawford? Looks pretty good. Yeah, he's got rams coming out. He's got basic troopers. And now we basically just have two hellish wars of attrition. So it really, really is going to become an iron bladder game. Like, hardcore. Like, I feel like neither of these fights are going to be easily resolved without like having an odd number of players teaming up on somebody. The only reason Ezra fell is because he got 2v1. If it was like 1v1 between him and Eravity, it kind of looked like Ezra was winning those 1v1s um, over time. But yeah, obviously the threat of the backstab was pretty serious. So here they come. We've got a lot of elite longbowmen. What would, can you actually, it'd be interesting if you could trade resources in FFA, right? Like have diplomatic trades. Like, hey, I'll give you like 5,000 stone if you stop attacking me. That's kind of an interesting idea. All right, so let's put a poll up to see who you guys think is going to win as we get into the end game of this game here. We're going to start a poll. Who shall win? Is it going to be the English? Euravity? English of Gollum? Or is it going to be... Let's get this. Delhi, Crawford. And then the last option, of course, is going to be uh, Roos a Book. So we'll leave this one running for quite some time. There you go. And the battle continues on as uh, units are just being spammed. Battering ram spam seems like it's very, very viable. I mean, it's been very effective. I actually like that battering rams are better now. It kind of like, uh, I feel it kind of helps counter wonder spam in FFAs a little bit. Yeah, this is a grand final, Saro. You have, you have missed out on some absolutely crazy action. This has been a nuts game. And look at Delhi, like keeping the momentum on the English, like breaking through their walls, like getting into the base. I mean, if he can keep this going, but guys, Euravity has 100,000 food. <laughs> He's getting 5,000 food a minute with those English farms. That is nuts. So literally England is just never going to run out of units to produce. Like with the gold they're getting and this, they could just spam men at arms all day. But Delhi getting a little bit of ramp sign action. So Euravity is being pushed. He's being pushed. Does Delhi have any bank of their own to match this? Yeah, they have a pretty good bank, but it looks like most of their village, their eco was tied up in trade. Are they trading again? Okay, is Delhi trading? Because Delhi's going to lose this eventually if they're not trading or something. I don't think they are. So Delhi might have deleted their traders. Yeah, no, look at this. 143 military here for the Delhi Sultanate. They're kind of going all in to try and win this. I mean, if Delhi can manage to win it, I don't think they're going to. Your Avity's too good of a player. And he's English, so it's, it's going to be tough. You want it to be Gollum so bad? Yeah. Well, Gollum has good chances. He's in this game. The Roos, though, are the only ones still trading. So the Roos are still trading. They also have Sacred Sight Control. And uh, the Iron Bladder, it's it's the time. I might have to get a snack or something. Jeez. I didn't expect this one to go so long. All right, guys. Hang tight for one second. I'm going to go refill my water. I'll literally be back in like a minute. So um, we will just let the, uh, let the game keep going. Be right back. Да, 
All right, guys, my throat was getting a little bit dry. I had to go grab some water real quick, and uh, we're going to continue. Uh, Arena Emperor says, two things I find hilarious. I thought the wood on this map was not infinite, and is so much is gone now. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. There's still a lot of patches of wood, but there certainly are some big barren spaces. So the Delhi army, army is down here doing a little bit of raiding. Interesting. Interesting. So what are they up to? Are they just torching buildings? It's, oh, they're... Are they going after Spiegel? Do they have a weird alliance to go after Gollum? Look at this. So Gollum... The rams are coming down this way. The ramstein cometh. Smeagol could perhaps be in a little bit of danger if he gets 2 v one Granted, he is so hard to kill back here. He is so hard to kill. It looks like Smeagol's army is going to be marching to intercept the Delhi army. Perhaps anticipating some sort of aggression. I think the Roost player is just sick of like this grinding war. You know, the Roost player is just kind of chilling here and he's just like, yeah, he's just going to be starting to entrench. Maybe play for a wonder. Looking at the current resources, nobody has a lot of stone, guys. Like, there's not a wonder on the horizon. Crawford is maybe the closest. Um, does Delhi still just have a huge erect army and like no eco? Yeah, Delhi's got 143, guys. They have, I think they deleted all their traders they had earlier, and uh, I don't know where their trade's gonna go. Man, I have no idea. <laughs> I leave us. <laughs> He's trying to find a market. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I feel like uh, Ezra might have deleted a market if he had one. Yeah, oh look, Ezra deleted his market. It's like, screw you guys. He deletes the market before he goes out into the night as the dreaded Ram Legion of Delhi. The goat. They continue moving and looking for different uh, different goodies to trade with, but they are not going to find anything. They're definitely not going to find anything. So yeah, we got a little bit of calm reprieve. Uh, some fighting up in the north. Okay, wow, okay. So the Rus are attacking the English now. Now there are four. We got four players left, guys. We got four left. And Delhi is going after the English down here? Now, I don't think there's any communication because I think if it was known that the Rus are going after Uravity, I think we would see the Delhi Ramstein go north and just go for it. And Delhi's still getting plenty of wood here, so villagers just kind of chopping through the tree line. Not able to find anything here, so it looks like Ezra probably de deleted it, I would wager. Up on the top side, what do we got? Uh, yeah, just, just a bit of a standoff. Honestly, these... These players are all so difficult to kill because of their base layouts. Uravity probably has the most vulnerable base layout. Just because, like, everything's really consolidated. He doesn't have any landmarks, like, hidden around. Hey, Daniel, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much, brother. Elite Knight's still chopping away, but England can do all this all day. Hand Cannoneers on walls with attack speed increase. It's pretty gross. But, yeah, the Roos are kind of, like, committing to this. They're bringing in, like, actual siege equipment, like mangonels and... Certainly getting some nice flash attacks up on the wall, but um, I, I, I don't know why we wouldn't see the Rams go to the north. And look at Smeagol, such a, such a gremlin. He's using his elite horsemen to snipe the Rams, and now they're going south? The way that they're trading. Very interesting. I'm surprised the one sacred site didn't shorten this game. Well, it's like the one sacred site is exposed enough that like, if you take it, you're going to get the wrath of the entire map on you, right? Yeah, so you're you're gonna feel the pain, but obviously having the exposed outer ring has made this game way longer. Cause like if the outer ring didn't exist, Delhi would probably be dead and Smeagol would probably be dead. Um, they would have died earlier to that aggression that they were facing. But they were both able to kind of survive, so it gave like two players like an extra life essentially, which is fun. I think it's made for a great game, so don't worry about it. We're we're all good here. So a lot of Manganel fire, huge siege advantage for the Roos as they do knock down the gates. Could the Roos actually kill Uravity? I mean, maybe if they just drown them in gold units, like Mass Siege. Uravity, of course, making whatever he can. He's got spearmen, longbows, just wood-based units mainly. Looking at the bank here. Wait, what? Oh, he's going for it. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because what's going to happen is the ram signs are just going to absolutely hammer that position. Now, this is where the Iron Bladder situations come into play, okay? Because the Roost player is probably just getting tired, and he's like, screw it, I'm going to go for it. You know, I, I've seen this happen so many times in FFA games. I'm actually, like, secretly happy I didn't make it into this final, so, like, my hand would be hurting so bad right now. <laughs> so I'm glad it worked out like this, but, yeah, the Roost guys have the Sacred Site. They took it. Um, so literally, like, 9 minutes and 30 seconds now until he wins. 
and he's going to keep the pressure on your Avity, but how is the Roost going to be stopping the Delhi Ramstein? All right, so the Rams could easily just move up to the middle and plow through all of this, probably. And the Keeps, they have cannon placements. The Roost have any villagers nearby. They do have villagers to repair the Keeps. And the English trebuchets are under pressure. The Roost is putting up a good fight here. I mean, trading blow for blow, for blow with England, but... England is better at doing that than the Bruce, 100%. So, do we see a Wonder being built at the same time? We don't, but we do see the Sacred Site with five keeps on it. Um, do we see any sort of navy here to protect it? Doesn't look like it. And Delhi is on its way north, and the Rams are also coming, so they now see it. Hey, uh, Nani Yori, we love the map. You did a great job. And you're getting your haggard backdoor plays. You, you sure are. <laughs> you just had to know Smeagol would enjoy this map. Look at this, the Roost actually getting momentum, pushing back the English Siege equipment. Diving a couple of them, several of them will go down here. More Roost Knights coming out. And the Boyar's Fortitude, Chef Boy RD, actually does buff your Horsemen as well. It gives them HP, so Roost Horsemen in general are also very good. And it uh, looks like the English are being forced back. You know, if this was a normal War of Attrition, maybe the Roost would be able to kind of break through the English lines and get into the Farm Eco and whatnot, but... Yeah, how is Delhi, Delhi getting into the Roost here? The Roost are going to have to deal with these Rams. I don't think the Roost were expecting all this Ramstein here. If I'm the Roost player, guys, I'm all in on the middle right now. I would probably just pull back from your Avity, or maybe let the last of these units fight, and just go try and fight off the Delhi here, because these Rams give no shits. These Keeps are not going to be able to do anything here. Um, they're just going to get knocked down. Keeps, like, the Cannons do some okay damage, but overall, I mean, those Rams are going to have their way. And where is Smeagol, by the way? Smeagol, I think, doesn't care. I think he's... I think he's letting the other players handle it while he accumulates wealth and takes advantage on the map. So Roost infrastructure is broken here, and it looks like they're going to be falling back. So you see their additional units being routed. They did have a good fight versus the English, but obviously, since they stopped pouring in reinforcements, the English defenders are going to have the home field advantage, and they're going to be in good shape here. But now if you're the Roost, just Helm's Deep on the middle. Like, every single unit, you need to be spamming Spring Alts here in the middle. Spring Alts kill Rams very quickly, so you need to be doing that. Now we actually get some Horsemen in here. Horsemen are going to be trying to dive some of the, the uh, Rams, but uh, are going to be intercepted. But you need to mass siege equipment. Spring Alts, Mangonels, just everything you can in the middle, and pour every ounce of your fiber, because this is actually very, very winnable for the Roost if they play it correctly. Um, you know, Smeagol isn't here yet, although, uh, he's coming. Okay. That... that probably gets rid of the chances of winning this although there is a there is an option that Smeagol and the uh, the other player here uh Crawford could fight each other on accident <laughs> they could certainly have a little bit of an encounter so the Roost getting pushed it looks like gravity is coming in from the north side Roost player uh Izzy Helms deeping he does have some horsemen in the middle but he needs siege equipment you need spring alts you need mangoes all that stuff just kind of camping on the middle and uh that's going to be the way you win it so the English army being fought here. We do get some springs on the way. So uh, the English army is going to be uh, caught in enemy lines here. There's also keeps. Uh, I do not believe they all have cannon upgrades. Okay, about most of them actually do have cannon upgrades. But dude, the do hostening is just so nasty. Like all these, all these. Oh, but that mango shot into that bunch of units is so good. The rams are just so effective as they uh, do have the banded beam. So they become viable in Imperial Age, which I think is good. Because it kind of sucked how like you just couldn't build any sort of siege if you're out of gold other than field engineering. And now that you can build rams out of siege workshops, I think that was a really good change from Relic. I, uh, I like that quite a bit. So the English army driven back, and Smeagol's forces are coming up and under. But, like, they're in a bit of a traffic jam with this Ramstein army, right? So they're just going to kind of take turns fighting here. We got Roost villagers being pulled. So the Roost player is going all in. Um, I actually don't know what the timing is on the Sacreds. Yeah, but the Roost player could die here. They could they could all go for the Roost. That is five keeps. Five keeps here holding firm. Roost coming in with a lot of units. Reavity's forces kind of running out of steam. They're going to have to stop two full armies here. Smeagol's army's now moving. Um, he's got five trebs, but he is kind of being blocked by Delhi. But Delhi, that's it. Like, Delhi does not get anything else here. Like, that army was, came from all the way across the map. He's mustering forces, but by the time he could get reinforcements, it'd be too late. So Roos basically just have to hold 2v1 here, um, which is not going to be easy. If they can somehow snipe the English trebuchets, though, that would be huge. Like, if they had a navy here... That would have been the biggest MLG play. Like, just a bunch of cannon ships, and then, like, they could just snipe the Trebs at the peninsula. That would have been pretty hilarious for sure. But, you know, how do you know which side your opponent's coming from, right? So the English army being held back. Nobody has good supply lines here, guys. The Roost might be able to hold this. And nice. He gets the Mangonels in there. He's preparing for the Helm's Deep. I love it. This is great play for here from Book. He, this would be his last revenge against Smeagol if he could finally, finally just end the game with him. A lot of keeps here. It's going to take those Mangonels quite some time. Does anybody have the timer, by the way? I was so caught up in the heat of action. He needs to go get out there and kill those Trebs, though. If he can kill those Trebs, Yravity's going to take a long time to get through. 
like all these keeps and that like narrow choke point. You have your reinforcements coming here. The Rus need to win this battle right now. They need to crush the English trebuchets and uh, smash the Rebel Alliance once and for all. Mangan Elfire coming out and looks like the trebuchets are getting nuked. The Rus are diving pretty hard. Trebs trying to get in range, but if the trebuchets of Smeagol go down, that is going to be brutal. And it looks like the trebuchets are starting to fall. At least one of them did. The Rebalquin also doing good damage. But Smeagol does have some reinforcements, but really, like, guys, nobody has supply lines here. Nobody has supply lines. So let's go ahead and take down the pole right now and end it. So it looks like uh, the underdog might have a good chance. Only 17% of you guys who voted thought that the Roos would win this. So they are in there and they are going strong. Holding back Euravity's push to the north with mass horsemen and obviously Smeagol did not have supply lines. Like the players were not ready for this. We do get some more uh, Delhi coming from this direction with a couple trebuchets. Oh, hold up. This is not that entrenched here. Although Manganels might be able to stop it. The Bruce army able to break the back here of uh, Smeagol's push. So Smeagol is not going to be uh, probably able to muster another good attack. We'll see. The Roos army probably has to watch out for this now. Because there's only a wall here and then a stone wall. And they might be able to get the decap here. A lot of the Roos army is busy fighting the English. But are they not going to notice the Delhi? He's got to see this. Oh wait, these aren't his walls. So they're not giving him an attack notification most likely. Oh shit, okay. Delhi might come in. I mean, there are four mangonels and a lot of keeps and burning oil, so it's gonna be nasty, but he needs bodies to hold that um, sacred cap. He 100% needs it. And that could be the straw that breaks his back here if he does not notice this. So this wall is about to go down. He is gonna get a notification. He's got these guys and uh, these guys are now pulling back. They should go sit on the sacred site, 100%. Honestly, if I'm the Roost player at this point, I'm pulling every villager I have. I'm control A. Oh, it looks like he already did it. Okay, well played. So he deleted them to get bigger armies, which is similar in functionality. Um, but looking at the stats here, Book, his army is currently 140, and he's sending a lot to fight off the English. But this pressure is coming in, guys. He's got some troopers here, but not much. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is tense. He needs to notice this. I don't know if he does. He's, he's juggling a lot right now. Sacred Sight's being decapped. Sacred Sight's being decapped, and the Manganels aren't paying attention. He notices. He's got troopers moving in, so he is going to be able to get some troops on. And I think that's going to be enough. With the Mangadels and all the keeps, If as long as he gets some bodies on the objective here, it will make it contested. And the Mangadel fire doing big work. He does have some dudes on it. He's going to need to muster down there. And that's going to give Uravity a little bit of time. All the reinforcements are coming over to the site now. And on the bottom, Smeagol gets a reinforcement force. The Sacred Site's being held onto. But now it is being decapped, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, he was so close. If he had just reacted a little bit quicker to that. Is he going to get any guys on the point? He's rushing everyone he has onto the point. These are all just spearmen, a couple horsemen as well. And he does get onto it. Sacred Sight's being held, but Smeagol's got a chungus army there. The Burning Oil is certainly going to add up. But he needs to basically just keep some bodies alive on the point. Um, keep rallying in troops. But it looks like Gravity has cut off the reinforcements. Oh, wow. Smeagol pulling back could be a big mistake. That could allow Green to resaturate the point. This is so close. This is so close. He needs to hold. It's being delayed right now. It looks like he's going to lose it. Wow. Dude, he was so close to getting it. If he had just noticed this, the siege from the north, I think he gets it. Smeagol pulling in with some reinforcements. Sacred Sight's going to be burned down. And the Roos are probably going to get pushed back. Although they might not be dead, honestly. Sacred Sight's taken, guys. Oh, I was so close to getting to eat dinner. I was so close to it. And now everybody pulls back. Interesting. But the Roos might be able to just grab it again, depending on the circumstances. Although, yeah, they deleted all their eco. They were all in on that, so... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Roos player tap out now. He's only got 18, 17 villagers at this point. And uh, Delhi moving in for quite a bit here. Um, the keeps are falling. Smeagol's running back to his uh, goblin lair. And is there going to be a wanderer in the books? So looking at the income per minute. Nope, not that one. Current resources. Uh, Uravity. Nope, nope. The only person who has stone is Crawford. A Delhi corner wonder could for sure win this game. Especially now that the Roos are basically crippled. That, that's going to do the job. And he's, he's probably trying to rebuild a little bit. But the Roos are basically just toast. They, they, they have a couple of bills left, which are being hunted down by gravity. That was a really good attack, dude. That was so close. That was so close. Delhi might win this. Straight up. They straight up might win it. Looks like a Tower of War Elephant going to come over here. And uh, we'll do a little bit of a drive-by on these villagers. As uh, gravity not going to let the Roos recover. So he's going in for the kill. Sacred Sight. Dude, he was so close. If he, like, there was a moment when he was attacking Uravity's forces here with a big army. If he had pulled that army here, he, I think he wins the game. And Book surrenders. Well played, Book. Well played. You were a champ, dude. Thank you for almost getting me dinner. But uh, alas, my friend, the battle will continue on.
So we're at the two-hour mark on this uh, Royal Rumble. And now Delhi probably goes for a corner wonder, guys. That would be my guess. Smeagol's looking mighty healthy. Smeagol's got trade going. I don't know where. What is he trading with here? I'll have to follow these traders and see where they're going. They're probably going to run past Delhi. Is there a market he's trading with somewhere? Uh, Smeagol, where are you going? Oh, he's trading with the middle. Okay, so Smeagol's trying to get some trade. Oh, he found the neutral dock, guys. We found the neutral dock. Oh, wow. And that's 123 a pop. Smeagol with the cunning tricks and traps. So he's got trade. Delhi looking reasonably strong. Yuravity obviously English. And Yuravity did get some relics from the Fallen Roos Empire. So um, going up to the top here, guys. We do see the monks dropping off the relics. And now, I mean, how is this going to go down? Is there going to be a, uh, a wonder attempt here from Delhi by chance? Delhi only has 2,000 gold, so they're not that rich. Um, there are still plenty of gold nodes on the map, though, so players could could grab those where they can. And it looks like the English are going to be besieged by a very erect, angry Delhi army, actually. What does Yuravati's bank look like? Yuravati just got dragged into a, pretty, a big, ugly fight, but he's got 100,000 food, so he's pretty much caps on food. Um, as far as other resources go, wood is a little bit sparse, and so is gold. So maybe he could lose out and be forced to build just men at arms only and crossbows and things like that, which isn't the worst fate in the world. Books markets are probably still alive, I would wager. He probably had some back here in the Shadow Realm. I don't know. He might have deleted them out of the dreaded spite delete. We'll see. I'm not sure. Book played very I mean, so many players this game put up such good fights. This is really a knockdown drag out battle here. Yep, looks like Delhi's army gets steamrolled by the English, predictable. English usually will steamroll you. Very few can go fisticuffs there. Delhi spent a ton of gold, most likely to get stone. Let's go and take a look here at the uh, at the current resources. So Delhi is sitting at 4,000 stone. So they are slowly accumulating stone, um, most likely through hard purchasing and tithe barns with their relics, because Delhi is sitting on six relics. Yeah, Delhi's got the dreaded six relics here. So they are they are really really doing quite good. Delhi has all those markets too. If only they could could find a market of their own. Delhi could trade with the dock here. See this? This is a very good trade post. But yeah, Yuravity's. Oh my God, Yuravity's going for it. Or is he marching to the south? No way. So Yuravity looked like he was going to take the sacred site, but I think his army was just in transition. It looks like he's going after Smeagol, but like good luck dealing with that. Smeagol is going to be um, very tough to kill. I wouldn't hate Yuravity defending the sacred site, though. Just like coming out here, plopping down a bunch of keeps. Yuravity does not have all his farmers. Did he just delete his eco? So let me take a look here. No, he just kind of shrunk it down a little bit. He still has a lot of farmers working, but many of the farms are, are barren right now. For a second, I thought he was going to go for the Sacred. We had some scholars moving over it, but he's kind of marching down towards Smeagol, but Smeagol's no joke. I mean, Smeagol's got Rebalquins. He's got like 98 men-at-arms right there. Like those men-at-arms will for sure grind through this army, um, which does not have a ton of, uh, you know, anti-armor. It really doesn't. Yeah, Smeagol is probably saving up for a wonder himself, looking at the current resources. No, he's not. Uh, he only has 150 stone, and it does not look like he has any intention of uh, kind of getting more than that. I think the only way we're going to see a wonder is going to be with Delhi. And Delhi going for a corner wonder would be super strong. It'd be super strong. Like down here, and then just like... But like Delhi, if they want to do that, should um, should go for this. But yeah, the sacred side in the middle is also a big variable. Who's going to start entrenching the sacred site? we got a couple monks on their way down. Smeagol's got a dread legion too. He's got good map control, and Smeagol also has trade. He could, he could be the winner, man, which is nuts. I believe Smeagol's won several of our last FFA tournaments. He is learning. He is evolving. Gravity's trebuchet's on the run. His monk's on the run. And uh, sacred play. Someone's going to entrench this. Destroy these fallen keeps. You know, with these rams. Build your own keeps. A 2v1 hold on a sacred site is way easier, right? So, for example, if Smeagol was able to get it, you know, holding Delhi and Gravity back would be, as an English player, is very doable. Very, very doable, especially with this, this Chungus Legion of Men-at-Arms that he's rocking here. Yeah, it's the most likely outcome for this game is 100% a sacred. 100% a sacred victory. It's got to be the case. Over to the west side, we do have a lot of villagers. Looks like there's going to be 18 waiting to build that uh, sweet, sweet wonder. And up on the top, what do we got? Marketplace coming up, so we do see a market being built. I don't know what his intent is with this market. I love how like the Delhi main base has just like not been touched at all since like the Dark Ages. It's just straight up there and your avity just does not kill it. I wonder if they have some sort of a tenuous alliance. I don't know. Smeagol and your are tied for the most FFA tournament wins. Oh really? So this is this is the true duel of fates. I love that they both got English too. So big fight here. Your avity gonna push him back though. He's got a Mangadel and a choke point. Those men at arms are gonna get just absolutely wrecked here. And obviously longbow damage will add up, but 
Who's gonna go for it, man? Who's gonna go for that sacred? Yeah, it's really tricky because you build a wonder and they just grab sacred and then they're just like, delete your wonder. I, if I were Crawford and I built a wonder, I would probably say something along the lines, if they tried to bully me with a sacred site and say, delete your wonder, at this point, after like two and a half hours, I would, I would, um, I would straight up just say no. <laughs> and then they can just decide who's gonna get, who's gonna get the, get the win on the sacred site. They would have to fight over it, right? Yeah, the English going to be running here. Looking at the current banks here, we do see 5,000 stone for Delhi. Crawford's just chilling, dude. He's just gathering resources on the map. It looks like, wait, are they, they're going after Smeagol. I think there's an alliance against Smeagol, guys. Because we see the elephants coming down this way also. So the elephant's going to be uh, pushing into the English Empire here. England repaired its landmarks though. Smeagol obviously knows that the rooster's dead, so he can repair all his landmarks. Uravity trading here. So Uravity getting a trade down the side, which is going to be pretty big. So he did find a market in the base of uh, the Fallen Roost player. But the Delhi fonts are on their way, man. They are on the way. They're both 100% determined not to let the other win and become the new leader. Oh, that's pretty funny. So they're fighting for the crown of the most FFA tournament wins, which I absolutely love. The traders coming here over to the east side of things. We do see a uh, outpost coming up. Trying to cut off the trade, maybe? Look at that, Smeagol so troll. Oh my god. Is he gonna upgrade that to like a cannon tower just to pop these traders in the face? He could. Smeagol's got his villagers up north, gonna be going to grab some wood. Honestly, is wood gonna run out on this map? I don't think so. Like, looking around, we, we have plenty, guys. Smeagol retreating back is the Elephant Legion, the Dumbos of old, scouting. But um, yeah, he, he's, you gotta go for Wonder. You gotta go for Wonder. He's at 5,600, and he's already ready for it. He's entrenched. He's got like all his bills here hanging out. He's got, you know, I don't know if these are cannon in place yet. They're not. But over time, you could do that. Villagers being pulled to the corner of the map, which makes me think we're going to see a wonder being built right now. I think the iron bladder is coming into play. Crawford, I, I love that idea. The fact that Crawford can just build a wonder and just like the other guys can try and bully him, okay, by agreeing to let one of them take the sacred site. But then it's like... Smeagol or Uravity would have to give each other a win, which neither of them want the other person to win. Like, these guys have a special blood feud, you know, with trying to be the most the, the most wins in our uh, tournaments. Look at this. Uravity's archers taking down Smeagol's archers back here. So, yeah, the duel of fates as they, as they trade away here. Uravity coming in, purging Smeagol's uh, landmark here, so he's going to get the landmark as well as the uh, outpost, I would imagine. And these villagers are hustling. I don't know where they're going, though. We'll find out. Maybe they're going for wood? Could be, yeah, they could actually just be looking for wood because wood is completely almost cleaned out up here. There's a couple little patches here and there, but I wonder if they're going for the wonder. Please, for the love of God, I'm hungry. Build the wonder. <laughs> I've been eating since early morning. All right, here comes the landmark. Gravity trying to uproot Smeagol. Sacred site being taken by Gollum. Wow. So he goes for it and he's got a big army looking to protect it. So Gollum's just straight up going for it, dude. He's going for it. I love it. No entrenchments. He's just going to be fighting Gravity's army head to head and just trying to be like, come at me, dude. He, does he have good supply lines? Not the best, not the worst. And we do see the Delhi fonts nearby as well. So the Delhi fonts are probably going to be able to shut it down. Okay, sacred victory. So it'll be uh, two hours and 23 minutes exactly will be the victory. Assuming the sacred site isn't disrupted. So smeagol has got an army here, but I mean, is it really going to be able to do it? I doubt it. Do we see a wonder being built? Uh, it is wonder territory. So we have the 6,000 stone here for Delhi. If I'm Delhi, I might even consider doing the wonder. I might even consider it. Although this army would be kind of hard to push off. It's got 73 men at arms, 39 spearmen. Where's Uravity's army? Uravity is like trundling about. Yeah, he's moving in now. So Uravity is just trying to kill Smeagol's landmarks to keep him from getting back. The Roos were doing a good job containing it, but dude, just such scrappiness. <laughs> Gollum isn't Siren at this point, he's Morgoth, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Look at that, he's going to backstab Uravity's base. Is he going to be defending this? He, he, he doesn't even defend the sacred. He just like moves up into the base for the backstab. He knows Uravity's out of position, which he is. All these mangoes are far away. Uravity might actually delete his army just to rebuild. Smeagol's, the, the wolf has gotten into the chicken coop. Here he comes. Spearmen all over the place. Men at arms are going to start torching buildings. They're going to start ramming. And the sacred distraction Carnifex is here as Delhi moves in to go for it. Now, if I'm Crawford, I'd probably go Wonder. Probably go for the Wonder at this point. Really? 
I would just pull the trigger. It's the obvious play. These guys are fighting. You can t see the, uh, uh, you get the notification. Oh my God, King's Palace is going down. Uravity's so out of position, guys. At this point, I think you gotta delete. You gotta delete all your army and rebuild it at your home base. So King's Palace is down for the count. Oh my God, Smeagol going for the backstab. Wow, did not expect this. The landmark's being decapped by Delhi. Delhi's gotta go wonder right now. If Delhi goes wonder, they're gonna be laughing all the way to the bank. As Smeagol is trying his best to destroy all the landmarks. And he might actually get there, guys. Is this one being repaired? It doesn't look like it. Oh my God, this is tense. Villagers of your are being massacred. You can't base trade with Spiegel. He's in the corner. You just can't. It's like such a tough position to get to. And it looks like your is going to hold this, but not before you take some casualties. And the sacred side is decapped by Delhi. Okay, so Delhi, are they going to do it? It looks like there could be a play here. Are they going to go for the sacred? Oh, it's happening. It's happening, guys. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. The MLGs, the wonder play in the corner. But Delhi needs to park its entire army onto the sacred site and just camp it for five minutes and buy as much time as you possibly can. Villagers are on the way down. Delhi needs to camp the sacred site. They need to camp it because that option is still on the table. And Uravity's power will come back. So Uravity fends him off. He did take a little bit of economic damage. He's down to 69, that's what she said, in terms of uh, eco here. The battering ram's finishing off a couple landmarks, but not quite enough to get the kill on him. And Delhi is preparing for its, uh, its, its last dance here. But honestly, Delhi's base is going to be such an unholy pain in the ass to get to. Although Smeagol can get to it quick. Like this, this needed to be preemptively dealt with by Delhi. The fact that they didn't deal with those walls uh, allows Smeagol pretty easy access here. Okay, Crawford going for the wonder. The great palace of Agra in the corner. He needs to defend the sacred though, because the sacred counterplay is still very much on the table. I would wager Yavity is going to go for it. Um, Smeagol probably will start playing the wonder. Got a lot of spears on the way in. And does he have any religious characters in this army? No, he doesn't. He does not. Um, does he have any religious characters coming? I see spearmen. Do we see anything coming out for, for uh, Uravity up here? I don't think so. It looks like he's going for the wonder. So they're moving very quickly on the wonder. Walls are coming up, so it's going to be another layer of walls. This is the biggest vulnerability. Trebuchet is right here. That is 100% your biggest problem. All right, guys. We actually have a, a wonder timer. So we've tested it in the corner. It's snipable by traps from the top of the hill. If they approach from there, Crawford better have more than one keep to protect the high ground. Yeah, that's good. That's good. They can they can approach right here and, and have plenty of options. But that is a very, very strong wonder position, guys. But now we got 15 minutes. Dude, Delhi um, needs to defend the sacred. Like, 100% needs to defend that sacred site. Because somebody's just going to grab it, and then, you know, then you, you're pretty much screwed. Although, I would play I would play the game of chicken with them. I would just drive at them and just be like, I'm not deleting my wonder. So you guys figure out who's going to win between you two. And then that, that like, yeah, that's crazy. Dude, the back and forth, the absolute back and forth here. So the Delhi army moves in with a lot of elephants to take on one of the armies, which is good. If you can fight away from the base, it's pretty big. But now Smeagol is going to get the sacred site. This is the problem with not camping your army on the, on the, on the landmark. Like he could have maybe defended this or kept it off. Although granted, he probably would have been pushed off by two armies. So now Smeagol gets it. Um, how are they going to play this? I would probably not delete the wonder. At this point, I'd be like, guys, I'm, I'm tired. I'm hungry. You guys figure out who's going to win. I, I would be like, I would be like, Uravity, are you going to let Smeagol pass you in the total number of tournament wins right now? I, I know I might win this with the wonder, but are you really going to let Smeagol pass you and be the number one FFA ranked player in our Discord? Are you going to let that happen? Because... You know, if if he takes down the sacred site, then you know the win goes to Crawford instead, and then you get to maintain the status quo of being you know tied for number one there. Very interesting, guys. I would probably not delete this. I'd just be like, no, guys, you, you have fun with it. That is a good army by Smeagol, though. Delhi coming in and trying to fight for it. Obviously, moving in with a ton of siege equipment, trying their best. Uh, but that is going to be a tough army to uproot. That is a very erect English army, guys. A Crawford is too tired to delete the wonder. I don't blame him. I would be I would be in the same boat right now, dude. My uh, my arthritic tendons are, are hurting just watching this. Yeah, I should probably <laughs> if I had played in this, I'd be in so much pain tomorrow. Oh my god. So once again, the battle continues. Delhi just chilling, and who is gonna get this though, right? Who's are you gonna are you gonna just let Smeagol take the W as your avenue? <laughs> 
Or like you're gonna deny him and give Crawford the win. This is a very precarious situation to be in. Now I would love if Delhi built a navy here and just like crept up with a big fat navy and just started bombarding. That would be just an MLG play. Granted, he probably has no naval upgrades. So um, that's gonna be too much. It looks like he's gonna keep fighting against Yuravity here. And uh, yeah, the sacred site's there. Looks like Smeagol's probably gonna get the win. If, uh, if your Avity decides to let, let him have it, he's going to have it. So your Avity's basically Kingmaker now. He, he gets to choose who wins. He can help stop um, Smeagol's forces and give Crawford the win. Or, uh, you know, or let Smeagol win. We'll see. We will see. So the Delhi army is moving up. And it looks like your Avity's going to be pulling back right now. It's like the battle of the three armies, dude. Yeah, 100%. They, they've, they've assembled here once more in the deep. Who would have thought it would end like this? I mean, uh, the Sacred Victory, very probable. No wonder deletion. So the Great Palace of Agra, it stands firm. A metaphorical victory. As we sit here, and honestly, I'm just going to have some of this nice water here. Stay hydrated, and uh, we are getting ready for the final battle. Hmm. Gravity defending Smeagol's Sacred Capture. He is, kind of. But you can see he got out of the way. He's like, you can go for it if you want. I don't know, though. Are they just going to let Smeagol get it? If I was your Avity, I would probably stop Smeagol or try to. I'd be like, no, you're not going to pass me in tournament wins. Because it's like another subplot. It's another like sub-narrative we have here in this game, right? So Delhi just hanging out. We have the, the dreaded standoff of standoffs here. Your Avity, semi-AFK here. And uh, yeah, the Sacred Timer's just counting down. So uh, we have an update from Ezra in chat. Your Avity gave the option to Crawford in exchange for deleting the Wonder to deal with Chris. I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna. I would. I wouldn't do it. I would just be like, I would. I would test. I would test your Avity's ego. I'd be like, can you really allow yourself to lose to Smeagol? <laughs> I would just play that game. Oh my god. I wish I was in his position. Yeah. Politicking. They're gonna run out of time though. Yeah. Pretty quickly. I mean, the ten minute timer. Did anybody keep track of when the sacred site was captured? I was like too busy cackling at just the absurdity of it, and I did miss that. So. Unfortunately, there's no way to check it. Some weird shit going on over here. Looks like uh, Smeagol just kind of cleaning out some villagers wherever he can. A little bit of trade going down for Yuravity, but not too much. Yuravity's army's okay. He's got a nice force, but Smeagol's just chilling, man. Yuravity values the Brotherhood of the English more than the top position. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Call that bluff all day? I know, this is really interesting. This is really interesting. So, Crawford is just hanging out. And <laughs> Yuravity's coming around? Is he gonna come and stop this? 217? Is that so it was captured at two hours and seventeen minutes? Okay. Honestly, deleting this keep is probably a bit of a mistake, because it creates a choke point where they can run in and you can hold them back easier, but I don't know. If he wants to build a keep of his own, it's certainly not a bad idea. And on the top side we see the English army of gravity moving in. And uh Crawford's just chilling, dude. He's like he's like probably so tired. I and dude. These guys have been playing for like almost four hours straight. Like high micro, high stress. I would imagine they're getting worn out, which is which is the nature of the beast. Did he delete the wonder? No, I don't think so. <laughs> the sacred site is chilling. Yuravity's moving down. He's getting us around. <laughs> the sacred timer is going strong. It's going strong, baby. As is anyone gonna make the attempt? Okay, it looks like Delhi's coming in. Oh, are you saying they they agreed because they want to they want to take him down? Is, is this what's happening? Spiegel wins it even if they push. I don't know. We'll see. They might be able to get the decap here, but they they might have waited too long. Gravity doesn't want uh, Spiegel to take over the the winningest position in our Discord because if Spiegel and Gravity are tied for tournament wins right now. <laughs> this is, this is so funny. That Trebuchet Legion should just dunk on this English army though. Ooh, we see big damage going in here. Yuravity coming in the back. Oh my god, he deleted the wonder. Oh, I didn't see that. He deleted the wonder. Holy shit. This game's never gonna end. Oh my god, why? Not like this. Smeagol making a valiant hold, but he still has to hold for like another four minutes. Yeah, so that's not gonna happen. Oh my god, is this really happening? Oh my god, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting delirious. Okay, well, the Sacred Site's decaptured. <laughs> Smeagol's pushed off. Wow, I can't believe he deleted the wonder. He had to sit there. It was like a bit of a moral quandary. He was like, oh, man, do I do the right thing? 
I'm like 40 seconds behind. All right, sounds good. Yeah, yeah, I'll fast forward. Okay, so the sacred site, it's getting there. And once again, the boy must watch. And immediately, they turn their sights on Uravity here. So the fighting is on as we see Deli moving in. And uh, they're looking to uh, try and finish off Uravity. Smeagol, in the meantime, where is he at? Smeagol down here. Are they going to backstab Uravity and just try and force like a 1v1? Oh my god. We got to take a break so the players can shave and shower. Age of Empires longest match. The longest stream I've solo casted, like full on casting mode, was probably like 8 hours. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. That was pretty brutal. First one on the way across, as well as Manganels. Gravity obviously gonna shut this down, man. I don't uh, I don't see how this game is gonna end. It looks like there's a beginning of an entrenchment, so we do get an out outpost coming up. So if Delhi cripples itself against Gravity by spending all of its gold, Although, you're, they, they do have a lot. I mean, it's 4,000, 700, 800 stones. So the Tithe Barns are getting some stones slowly but surely. This is just going to be a never-ending pain and suffering match. Just pure pain and suffering. We do see Smeagol starting to fortify this a little bit. A very conservative fortification. He's not, like, building keeps and whatnot. But the Sacred Site is the win condition. Um, Uravity and the Deli are just going at each other right now. Just at each other's throats. Someone's missing the birth of their firstborn child today. <laughs> yeah, one of them, like, one of them is having a child and she's like, I must win this game. Yeah, I love it. None of these players you want to lose, man. They all want it. They, they can all taste the victory, you know? This is trench warfare. You guys want to see the casualties? Let's do that. Let's look at the military. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. 2,000 plus for several players. Uravity has killed 4,000, which is insane. That is a lot of uh, little pixels on the screen that have been karate chopped into another dimension. The outpost being set up by Smeagol. On the top side, we do see uh, a cannon tower being built here, which is probably going to pop these villagers. Gravity's certainly under pressure, but it looks like, once again, we see why English are super annoying in FFA. Because even if, like, you, you just, like, the infinite gold is just, and food is just insane. You can just constantly produce armies. Yeah, yeah, this is wild, man. On the south side, where's Smeagol going? Is he going to go for Delhi? I mean, honestly, Delhi is a mountain gremlin, too, so with like entrenchments. The guys, these are cannon towers, some of these. Like a bunch of these have cannons on them. There's no way. I don't know how this game is gonna end. I really don't. I was so excited that I was about to get to, get to go and eat. I was so hyped for that. And now just this. This is what's happening. Two and a half hours into the game, we see villagers battling the stone tower in an absolute stalemate here. Um, Delhi did kind of get smashed there a little bit. Their army isn't super great. Could we see Uravity come in and play the Sacred Site? And just bring in like a Dread Legion of, of villagers with keeps and... I don't think he has the stone for it. I mean, maybe he's got the gold. Let's go ahead and look. Uravity only has 900 gold, guys. He has enough for one keep. Like, in defending sieges against late game English is like impossible. It, like, on a position like this, it'd just be so brutal. So Uravity moving up. Maybe gonna be trying to knock back Smeagol's entrenchments here, but Smeagol does have a keep and a pretty good standing army of his own, including knights. <laughs> So he could easily hold back Gravity's army. Delhi probably wishing, absolutely wishing that they didn't uh, delete that wonder right now. The wonder in the corner. It was there, man. It was there. I definitely would have called the bluff. The legend of Big, Big Cranny. Oh my god, nothing beats the Big Cranny game. Big Cranny was a match we had with like, I don't know what level they were. They were like bronze and silver players, I think. And it was just like, they somehow were the last two in an FFA and it was just the most horrific grinding attrition game. I think the big cranny game was like two hours, right? It was very, very long. Yeah, it was a long time. So 78 longbows pulling back, but basically being swarmed by their hard counter. They're going to be dropping like flies. Uh, we don't see any further entrenchment here. Um, your avidity basically just pouring... Like, I, I don't know what they think they're going to get done. Nothing, nothing is like... These cross-map fights with... Guys, this is literally the worst. If we have two English players just battling across the map from each other, that is going to be the most grinding, miserable, slow fight that you will, like, straight up ever see. Nice palings right there. He lays down a bunch of palings, forces back the horsemen, and those longbows are just super chad. Look at them just fighting off this army here. Even men-at-arms, just volume of fire is volume of fire. Uh, in the meantime, it looks like they're teaming up on Smeagol. I think, they, I think they have an alliance. I'm not sure. If anybody is still in chat from the tournament... Well, if you're one of the fallen players, if you could give us an update. It kind of looks like Delhi's moving down to attack Smeagol, and Smeagol's 
Also being hit by gravity in the middle, but I mean, honestly, with the distance, he's going to be able to fight both of these. 100%. The Big Cranny game was like three hours. Matt Boss AFK'd to make dinner. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a long time ago. Yeah, so his opponent AFK'd and made dinner and came back and it was like still going. That was, that was some brutal shit, man. We have a lot of good memories in this community, man. We have a lot of good times, a lot of funny moments. Looks like the Delhi army is going to be headed off and is going to get wrecked probably by the superior English army. And uh, in the meantime, we do see Uravity pushing up, and it looks as if they are going to 2v1 Smeagol. 100%. Uh, I guarantee Uravity and Chris wouldn't be fighting this hard two hours and 30 minutes into the last remaining opponent. Wasn't the other guy. Yeah, the extra goal is driving them right now. I like that. That's good. And Smeagol's looking like he might get swarmed, though. I mean, he's obviously going to win this little skirmish here, but he's going to be losing infrastructure here as we do see siege equipment coming up and trebuchets, and uh, it looks as if they are going after Gollum. It looks like that's going to be the game plan. That was the deal for deleting the... Okay. Oh! So the deal to delete the wonder, I didn't hear that. Or I missed that that um, that detail. So apparently, guys, the deal was that they 2v1 Smeagol if they delete the wonder. Wow. And Smeagol surrenders! Oh my god, Smeagol surrendered! Knowing he couldn't win the 2v1 versus those two guys. Wow. And then there were two... Crawford versus Uravity. Wow. That was... I did not know that that was part of the deal. Okay, that, that certainly adds some intrigue. They still have to get to the corner, yes. Well, I mean, the English are probably better at holding a position with their infinite gold. Although there are six relics. Well played, Spiegel. Well played, dude. Rest, rest easy tonight, brother. You put up a great fight. You're a scrappy legend as always. Smeagol probably was getting tired too. Two and a half hours in, so he's been playing age for like, what, five hours, give or take, if not more? Wow, he tapped out. I mean, look, guys, Smeagol could have survived a lot longer, a lot longer, but it, it would have been probably eventually been a loss. So he's just kind of saved time for everybody and just tapping out. So I do appreciate that, but yeah, I wouldn't have minded if he fought also. But yeah, it would have been hard to politic your way out of it because the wonder deletion and your Abity is a man of, you know, he's going to, he's not going to, he, usually, I think he, he will follow through with his agreement, so. Smeagol is your MVP. He was a beast. He was an absolute beast this game. All right, guys. And now there were two. Pretty similar gold income on both of them. Um, definitely a little bit better for English. English probably getting their farms back online. And, uh, wow, now it's just basically a one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of trade opportunities. smeagol has got this trade in the corner. If Delhi wants to play the long game, they could delete, uh, ram through these bottom walls and get bottom side trade going. Well, I don't know if they're aware of that, right? I don't know if they're aware of that. So, yeah, just kind of a standoff. Two players chilling out. Uravity's just going to grab the Sacred Site um, and fight. That's what I would do if I were him. I would just grab the Sacred Site and just test my English against Delhi. And just, that would be all we would do. Hmm. Yeah, why would he not take the Sacred? There's literally zero reason. It's a one-on-one. -on -one, you know? Just take the Sacred Site and fight. And let the boy watch. Maybe, maybe he thinks that his opponent won't attack him if he doesn't take the Sacred. Gravity's very low on gold, though. Man, he's very low on gold. And looking at Crawford, Crawford has an okay bank. He's trying to, you know, get back to that wonder, I would assume. But, yeah, the wonder's pretty much a non-factor, considering the sacred site. It's just going to be a battle over the sacred. That Delhi army is pretty serious, guys. Um, for Delhi, you take that stone you have, and you entrench the middle. You know, you can build three, uh, just about build three keeps there. I don't know if he built compound of the defender. I think he did. So he should be able to build keeps for 600 stone to pop. So you just get down there. And is he going for it? It's, it's time. No religious characters here. Uh, do we see any any monks coming out, looking around the base? I don't know why he's not taking that. I guess he's trying to get a bit of a bank. Here he comes. Okay. So they're on their way, guys. They're going to have a royal rumble. And who will be right in the poll? How many of you guys How many of you guys voted for Uravity? And how many of you guys voted for Delhi? Isn't it crazy that like at every, every point, it kind of looks as if um, somebody was going to win this game, right? Uh, Kyrie, your avidity taking sacred with 200 pop fight. Wow. That's pretty Chad. He still has some villagers. He still has some villagers left. Your avidity sitting on 29 eco. So he's keeping a little bit of eco going. Probably just to give him some gold to produce things. And uh, yeah, man. That's going to be wild. The battle. The very. This is like a super climactic ending too. Like it comes down to a battle, not a wonder, right? That's, that's why I like King of the Hill maps too. Because like the sacred can really counter wonder spam very effectively. So, um, I actually, I like King of the Hill as a format for finals. I think it's really good. 
Yeah, sure, Gilles. We're still going, brother. We're still going. Elephants for the win. Sacred's being taken, guys. The duel of fates is on. This base is still alive, which is pretty hilarious. And Delhi is just going to move out. Delhi's got a thick army, too, though. That army is no joke. Gravity, though, basically producing a 200 stack or going to be getting close to it. He's got 182 mil uh, supply military right now. And the one downside of Gravity's army here is he doesn't have the network of Citadel's buff. So he needs to build an outpost here um, to get his attack speed buff, or else he's going to be forfeiting a major strength of his faction. Look at the epic, epic fight. The cinematic battle. It is on. The Delhi Sultanate going to be battling against the English, but a lot of trebuchets in position. Delhi going to be scooting up. Ooh, man, Penta Bombard. That's pretty nasty, too. All right, the fight is on, guys. We'll give you the nice cinematic shot as the two armies collide. A lot of longbows getting in there, and it looks like they did get a keep up or somewhere. I think they're somehow getting the attack speed buff, but they were for a second. No, they didn't. It was just the longbow uh, passive uh, or activated ability there. So Bombard Cannon's doing some big work. The Delhi font's taking the longbows, and honestly, it looks as if Crawford is probably going to be taking this fight. Now, will Uravity be able to get enough reinforcements in to flip the momentum is the question as we continue the cinematic duel of fates here. A lot of longbows in there, but they do one damage against elephants. So you can see the entire longbow army literally takes like 10 years to kill a single, to a single tower war elephant. But the advantage that Uravity has is he has the supply line. So Uravity is closer to his base. So he's going to be able to muster out reinforcements a little bit quicker as most of the Delhi army now is just archers. And uh, this could have been the battle to decide it. That could have been the duel of fates, as you say in chat. And more and more um, Ankin Elster on the way in. And now I actually don't know how to get out of cinematic mode. Shit. <laughs> how the hell do I get out of cinematic mode? Where's the buttons? Guys, what's the hotkey for cinematic mode? I don't know how to escape. Help me. I mean, I could cast the rest of the game this way, but I legit don't know. Because usually they're still... Oh, there it is. Okay. It appeared in the shadows. I thought I was trapped in cinematic mode, but... Yeah, that's that's game. Uh, Delhi's not going to be able to muster an army to stop that. They have a couple elephants coming out, but... Man, Uravity is going to get the W. He is going to get the W. There's absolutely no way. And Delhi taps out, and the Dark Lord Uravity, the Scourge of the North, sweeps down and takes the W in the game. You know, I have the Sacred Side. I could have sworn he did. GG! I get to go eat! It is time! Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. If you guys enjoyed the stream, please do drop a like on the way out. It helps a lot. Thank you guys for your donations tonight and to our new channel member. It means makes a world of difference in my life. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. And uh, man, Gravity gets the W. The politics. The politics end up getting it. Like the politics against Smeagol. It, it did it, man. It did it. The Iron Bladder wins. The rats, the, the, go the goblins at the wall did very well. There were so many moments. Like the Roost player was so close to winning too. If he had just pulled his army a little bit differently, I think the Roost player wins. Holy shit, man. What a game. All right. See you guys next time. Take care of yourselves. You guys are the best. That was super fun. We'll be back tomorrow with something or other. I don't know. Maybe we'll stream tomorrow. Maybe not. We'll see. Try and do something earlier for all of you guys. I always feel bad for the folks in Europe. They always kind of get screwed in the time zones these days. All right, guys. Adios. Dovidenia. Dobronotes. Wicked. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for uh, dropping some links. Your hero as always. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. All right. Take care of yourselves. Cheers.